Thank you for joining us for the Red Bull Airborne event here at the Corona Valley Protected Contest. Top three in the championship tour, but the second time this year we've been able to get the Red Bull Airborne event underway, and it is an incredible lineup. 18 of the best aerialists in the world. We'll do battle out here and we'll get the qualifying round underway shortly, but Ronnie Blakey joined by a man with 25 years in the uh, surf journalism game, uh, an aerialist himself at times, and <laughs> also my big brother, Vaughn. Great to see Good you. Hey, Ronnie. Mate, Good to be here. This is going to be a lot of fun. Obviously, this has been fantastic to see the world's best aerialists get the opportunity to compete on, on this huge platform to go up against some CT surfers and really test themselves at one of the best high-performance locations uh, in the world. Oh, man. I'm so fizzing for this comp because uh, the Airborne, first of all, not only is it the only and best, you know, example of aerial surfing in competition in the world. Best of all, Ron, we're here at a wave that is one of the most legitimate ramps in the world. Karamas, I mean, in heats, CT heats, we've seen some of the biggest airs ever go down out here. And in some of the best clips that have dropped in the last, what, five years, maybe even longer, 10 years. I mean, Andy and Bruce back here back in the day were dropping huge hangers. So, uh, I mean, this is the one that I've been waiting for, and I'm just frothing to see what these guys do out here. Oh, I mentioned that incredible lineup, and we saw some of the competitors getting ready in that first heat of the day. Uh, some of your favourites, Noah Dean. Now, this guy has been stomping some of the biggest airs that we've uh, seen in recent history. Chipper Wilson, uh, regarded as the most technical aerialist uh, in the world today. Jack Freestone, CT surfer, but uh, way back in the day, won an event here, a World Junior title, with just a, a plethora of different aerial variations. Eli Hanneman, the wonder kid from Maui. Mm. Free surfing wise he's probably stomping the biggest airs at the moment. Lee Wilson, local boy, uh, he's unbelievable out here. And we've also got Damayasa, who is a, a local Grom from Legian. He won the trials, and he's going to give these guys a good run for their money. But uh, let's find out more about the Red Bull Airborne event. It is the brain baby of Josh Kerr. Let's see how it all came together. I was 16 when I did my first air show, and then they just got pulled for some reason. And Kurt was just rolling at the time, so it was cool for him to be all hyped and talk about bringing it back, and here we are now, you know, and it's happening. Concept. It was kind of in my mind maybe three to four years ago, thinking, okay, what would be cool? Like, I know myself, without the stepping stone of the air shows that I was being able to do before I got to tour, I would have never have got to the tour. You know, I wouldn't have had that platform of the air shows to be able to make a name for myself, to be able to put myself out to the media, become a free surfer, air guy, and then that pay the bills for it until I could, I refined my surfing enough to get to the tour. It was a natural progression for me. And some guys maybe won't ever make that progression, but I want there to be a platform for these guys that are super talented but that don't have that mindset of being able to get you know, three turns to the beach. They just want to go out there and go big and just do the best stuff that's going down. You know, it's like giving back in a way to this next generation of the stepping stone that they don't have at this point in time. For me, on my side, I really want the surfers to feel like they're a part of this movement, to develop the criteria, to develop the format, be able to use those guys and their, where their heads are at and, you know, help them develop this platform with me. The old air show days were awesome, some of my favourite times of my life, and hopefully I can give those memories to this next generation with this platform we're building here. Yeah, Josh Kerr bringing this thing to life. 35 years of age now, former championship tour competitor, he won an event on the Big Wave Tour and uh, obviously stomped a, a number of large airs along the way. And this is a really proud moment for him. He's still capable of, of getting out there and competing himself, but, uh, you know, the old doggy sitting back this, these days and letting this next generation, as he said, sort of uh, potentially start using this as a stepping stone towards something greater. Yeah, that's right, Ron. Uh, Kersey, back in the days of the original air show series that we had in Australia, he was a full-blown trailblazer, but he was just a grom. And, uh, you know, he has paved, as you said, uh, or shown in, in great ways just what you can do in the air. Check this heat out, though, doggy. Unbelievable. So this is how it's going to work. We've got the qualifying round. Uh, we're going to see two of those. And we're going to see all 18 competitors get out there, but this is the first lineup. And it's a, a leaderboard format. So you're, you're collecting your numbers over the two qualifying rounds. 
And, uh, you know, the, the judges are definitely going to have to be aware of that scale, just keeping it in mind, because unlike the CT, where the scale can adjust from heat to heat, right across the board in this, uh, this first qualifying round, we're going to see each of the groups pitted up against one another. For sure, and we're straight into it. Off the bat, Jack Freestone, a big oop attempt. And uh, I think we'll be seeing a lot of oops out here, dog. This, this wave really lends itself as you, you take off, fly in towards a nice big bowly section. Two of the best oops we've seen actually in heats out here years ago. John John Florence and Julian Wilson. And uh, this was a good attempt. Oh, it's a, got a little stale grab there too. And Freestone, well, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for uh, big airs, but also some technical nuance. But I think, uh, you know, looking at what the judges have got up and against in these rounds, <coughs> excuse me, is uh, it's almost like an episode of Get Smart, dog. It's like control versus chaos, you know? And we're going to see guys who know exactly what sort of air they want to do and what grab they want to make up against other guys who are just going to be throwing out Hail Marys. And, you know, what's going to be more spectacular? What are the judges going to be looking for? Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? And uh, you know what? The, these guys that are getting the opportunity, the, these aerial specialists, so to speak, uh, haven't had a victory just yet. As we say, Eli Hanneman, the Grom from Lahaina, Maui. And he's uh, really kind of making a name for himself as one of the most exciting talents in the world. So great to see him here competing. Freestone up again, just falling short on his first attempt. Nice little whipping reverse there. Not a lot of points in it. Kick out, Jack. Yeah, Eli kicking things off with a, a great big throw into the flats and uh, and then Jack following up with a similar sort of move. I think these sorts of air reverses, uh, like you said, they won't score huge, but they're a good way to, to feel out the ramp, feel out how, what speed you want to hit. There's a bit of onshore out there too, and that can often affect the way that you want to approach the lip because... Uh, the other day, Surf and Changu, for example, a lot of wind coming up the face. I was watching uh, a couple of the air specialists, Lee Wilson, Jake Vincent, who's not in this one, but the boys really hang back on the pocket when the wind's blowing up the face so that they can utilise that ramp as hard as they can. Great line-up of surfers out here at the moment trying to get things started nice and early. Here's Chris Wilson. The man known as Chip. I can't quite stick that one. The competitors well spread over this line-up. Cool thing about Karamas is there is kind of two little peaks that you can uh, attack. No priority in this situation. Uh, Josh's basic rule to uh, the competitors is uh, don't act like a dick or you won't get invited to the after party. So it's gentlemen's rules out here at the moment. <laughs> Can't imagine anyone not getting invited to the after party, the Red Bull. Yeah, that's right. Well, Chris Binns, he, he's like a rash on this planet. He's all <laughs> over it. He's been down there at Cape Fear. He's now back here in Bali to watch things unfold here at Airborne. What do you got for us, Binzi? Yeah, thanks a lot, Ronnie. Down here with uh, the godfather of this whole event, Josh Kerr, mate. Um, run us through what we're looking at right now. Uh, we're looking at, obviously, a pretty fun day for us. We're just starting off with, like, a little bit of a lower tide, but we're going to get the push of the tide. You saw the CT get it yesterday. Today we've got a bit of an onshore wind, so that's going to really help these guys and going to give them a few more sections. And obviously we've got some of the best talent in the world that are brought over, invited to come, and they're all really excited and, um, yeah, it should be fun. Now they've got 45 minutes in each heat, so they should be able to just, like, settle in, calm their nerves and start finding some sections, so it'll be good. And it just seems like a pretty uh, perfect marriage, really. There's been so many iconic aerials done out here. You think back to the days of Andy and Bruce in sipping jet streams, Taj winning Manoeuvre of the Year. Jack Freestone in the water right now, like one of world juniors out here doing nothing but aerials. Just how perfect is it to be here at Karamas with the Red Bull Airborne Series? No, this is like basically, you know, you speak to half the people in the world, and well, most of the best air service in the world, I'll say this is one of the best airwaves on the planet. So this is really the marquee event for us with the Red Bull Airborne Series, and uh, I think we're going to see some crazy stuff go down, so I'm super excited. I think we just saw someone do a little passion pop down off the end just then. Yeah, and Chipper's throwing shabbats as we speak. Um, you were also involved in one of the great heats, probably one of the greatest heats of your career out here as well. Talk us through that one. Yeah, it was very different that day, though. It was like six foot and offshore and pumping barrels. But um, I've had some heats out here for some airs, but... Go on, who'd you beat? Go on, drop it. Yeah, it was a pretty good one. I beat Kelly and John John. I felt pretty good. So come back here and, you know, bring a baby back like this and um, 
see it. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. I just hope everyone else online and on the beach is going to enjoy the show. Epic. All right. Well, we've got some heats coming up. Back up to you guys in the box. Bring Thank it on. you, Benzie. And I want to get back down there in a moment and talk about those trophies. Looking exceptional. Someone's going to win a mandolin by the looks of things. <laughs> Have a look at that. We saw the electric guitar go to Italo Ferreira up there on, on the Gold Coast, the first event of the Red Bull Airborne Series yeah. for 2019. But no, no, almost, no, I almost shoot for third place, I reckon. Look at that trophy. Oh, I reckon second place if you're from Byron Bay, like uh, Noah, you just hit, hit the drum circle <laughs> in the uh, the wreck car park on a Sunday Arvo, just go yeah. absolutely ballistic in your undies. Absolutely. But the, uh, the big gong there for first place, and some serious bucks as well. But it's really the, uh, the honour of overcoming this incredibly stacked field to get the win here. And what Kersey's calling really the, you know, I guess the, the number one sort of venue. He's expecting big things from the surfers. We're going to see all of them perform here this afternoon. Here goes Noah Dean from the Gold Coast. We mentioned how much height and pop this guy's able to generate. Gives us a nice little air reverse to get things started there. Very nice. Love that. Uh, plenty of speed. Hit the section. Got that really good lofty pop. And uh, landed fake. He rode out. Here he goes again. Noah Dean. I, I mean, everyone who saw head noise, head noise knows what this guy's capable of. Probably the biggest oop. I, I can't think of too many others that have been that high and that committed. And uh, opens his account here with a nice one. Definitely uh, the highest air we've seen so far in this heat. And the control there, you can see Jack Freestone looking looking in from out the back. I think when they see the height, the boys will be pretty fired up. Chipper showing what he's famous for. Little shove, and then uh, Jack just staying busy on the inside. Here he goes again. You can see there, Ron, a little bit more, a little bit more energy in Jack trying to get that height going. So these guys can throw air rev willy-nilly. I mean, they're, they've almost killed it. The air rev. I mean, a, a big off the lip full rotor will always be impressive. But you know, hitting the shorey and, and doing those sort of classic little finishing turns, they're just not going to get any sort of inspiration from the judges. No, if you, if you can go big with that move, even, even though we see quite a bit of it, you'll probably score pretty well. And, and because these guys have such a high strike rate with it, don't be surprised in the early stages of this 45-minute heat if you don't see a couple. Here we go. Oh! Well, that was impressive start from Damayasa. Didn't quite stick it. Jack again with that little stale fish shoot. Gets the completion this time. Maybe not as big as the, the first attempt, but it'll be a score on the board. And the numbers are starting to build up for our competitors. Oh as Chipper, who actually had to overcome a bit of a knee injury from the first uh, airborne event up there on the Gold Coast. Seems to be back to his best. Lee Wilson, this guy's had some amazing clips out here at Karamas, just bails out in the cutback. Smart move, that's going to score you nothing out here today. <laughs> he bailed out because he was going to run over his mate, Chip. This is a great thing too, like six guys out in the water at once, just absolutely firing each other up. And a couple of really big airs. I'm loving seeing Chipper just bring that, you know, variety to, to the whole heat, to the whole group. Yeah, you can, you can feel it uh, at each of the, the past stops on their Rebel Airborne uh, series over there in France last year. There's just a different vibe. You know, obviously everyone wants to get that victory, but uh, guys are a lot more encouraging out there in the surf. You know, at the CT level, it's rare to, to hear someone go, mate, that was unbelievable. You're not going to you know, generally give someone that tap on the, the back. But yep. in these, these group heats, it's a little different. Yeah, they've set up a little Red Bull area for the competitors down there, basketball hoops and uh, free, uh, free drinks there. And uh, everyone's getting fired up. But I just love the energy down there. I, I was thinking it's taken all of two comps for these guys to feel like part of the scene. Um, I think that maybe, you know, when these two worlds collided, Doggy, when you have the, the culture of free surfing and guys running around the world chasing clips, doing their best to sort of drop something at the end of the year that's really going to matter, colliding head on with athletes who are just training all the time, surfing heats all the time. And when they first came together, it was a little bit tentative, you know? There was a little bit of a like, well, how do we fit into this? Yeah. And now they're down there, mate, just lounging around under the palm trees, signing autographs. It's it's unreal. Like they've they've really felt like this is actually happening, and the Red Bull stands alone as its own event that they want to be a part of and they want to win. There's the uh, the format for this contest: two rounds, the qualifying round, and then the the final. So 
So the 18 athletes getting two opportunities to get out there in the lineup, log some big numbers. Six athletes per group. And then there is just the, the one leaderboard. And then we take that, that final group, that final group of the six best performing athletes across those two qualifying rounds into the, uh, the winner takes all final. Well, looking at the scores right now uh, and the way that they work, Ron, uh, Noah Dean had a, a pretty nice pretty nice result for that big frontside air rev. So that's the collection of two numbers. 10.23 two, for Jack Freestone has him out in front. Yeah, 7.66 and a, a 2.57 for Freestone. I'm guessing that that probably came for the, uh, the alley-oop. Very, very technical with the stale fish grab. For sure. I mean, you don't see a lot of that. Uh, but all these guys, you know, some of them are, are thinking about how they're going to do with the technique. I know when I was hanging with Mason Ho recently, he's really spending a lot of time in his mind sort of figuring out the body mechanics and how he wants to hit that lip, project, and then what sort of grab he wants to do. And um, it's interesting because, you know, it's coming from everywhere. It's not just coming from surfing and, and snowboarding and skateboarding. It's coming from motocross and all sorts of areas. Here's the local boy from Legion Beach. Damayata. Blarong. That's what his friends call him. 21 years of age and uh, a big opportunity for him here. This would be uh, epic. Another Indonesian surfer uh, on the main stage here at Karamas. We had Kalani Johnson surfing in the women's event. She got knocked in, in the elimination round, but a, a great effort for her on the, the championship tour story side. Rio, Rio Wayada. He's still going in the, the men's event, but uh, great to see Dama Yasa here doing so well as we see the replay of Jack's hoop. Oh, that's unreal. Right up above the lip. Gets the solid grab, release. Oh, that's the first attempt. Okay, so yeah, this one was a, a little bit bigger. I, I was surprised when I was looking at this replay. I thought it might have been his score. But he gave it another go a little bit later and nailed it. So one thing that's uh, interesting, just looking at the 18 surfers that are competing here at Karamas, the, uh, the last stop's champ, Italo Ferreira, is not featuring. And it might have a bit to do with that uh, ankle brace that he's got on. You know, he is in world title contention, so he's got to think about that. But he's going to be coming up against Jack Freestone in their next heat. So this might be a good little opportunity for Jack to get the confidence up, get the strike rate up with those aerials. 32 and a half minutes to go and the championship tour competitor who featured well in France last year in this event is currently sitting uh, ahead of the pack. Yeah, you're right. And uh, let's see if we can uh, have a look at this. The little seven off the limb, gets the tail, whips it up and around. A good little grab from Freestone and yeah. Well, before he became the uh, illustrated man, Jack Freestone, as a grommet here at Karamas, won himself a world junior title with pretty similar moves. I can remember in the semi-finals, I think he did a corrupt flip, he did a stale fish frontside air reverse, and he did a massive slob to get his numbers. He went near perfect, and uh, it, it just, you know, if he can get back to the, that kind of surfing here at Karamas with some reps here, uh, you know, he could do, go very well in this contest, obviously, but also very well in the, the championship tour event. Let's check in once again with our man on the ground, Chris Bins. Thanks a lot, Ronnie. I am next to world-famous aerial surfer, Michelle Borez. <laughs> mate, you rip out here at Kramas. How cool is it watching these guys in action? Oh, it's amazing. You know, they're, they're the best air guys in the world. So to me, just to, to be here and just to watch them is, uh, is great and learning too, yeah. <laughs> You're learning? Mate, you go all right in the sky yourself. Don't, don't be humble. Yeah, yeah, I've done a couple of errors, but you know, like it's not my cup of tea. I'm just that guy that do, do turns and stuff. And, and to see those guys like launching huge airs and, and actually like landing there, you, them, you know, so it's, uh, it's great, yeah. And uh, you got any favorites who are in the event? Who do you like watching out of these boys? Uh, Freestone is in it, yeah. I want to see Freestone do good. Nice, all right, and uh, congrats on your performance earlier in the event. You feeling good here? I feel great, man. Like, I saw the forecast. It's going to be amazing uh, this weekend, so I, I hope they're going to wait for that, you know, so let's, let's, let's wait and get ready for it. Second last year, one better this year? It'll be better, yeah, yeah, for sure. If I can win, that'll be the best thing ever, but I just want to, you know, have fun and get some good barrels and big turns and... You know, that's why I come here. It's, it's pretty much like home, and, and it's always good to be home away from home. Oh, Chipper just going crazy there. 
I remember we went on a trip once with Chipper and uh, you were just baffled by his game. How crazy and technical is the way he serves? Oh yeah, I was so baffled because this guy was doing like huge airs and stomped them at the same time and, and I was just trying to do a, like, a, like a cutback or something, you know? So it was, it was the first time that I saw him like doing those, those kind of, of, of airs, like, you know, when he switched the boards and stuff. And I was, I was amazed, yeah. So we're going to see some Shavits from you in this event? No way, man. <laughs> All right, well, bon chance, and thanks for the chat. Thank you, Binzi, and uh, really smart move, keeping your shirt on next to uh, the Spartan there. Michelle Perez, he is such a weapon at this location, and he's just winning at life form. He's won the Pipe Masters. He's had a few CT wins now. Uh, he's won every event over there in the Triple Crown, and he also has the greatest surf shot that we've seen in, in the history oh, of, of the sport. Uh, Leroy Bellet's photo from Tahiti, and you should go to uh, Rebel's website and check out that, that cool piece about that image. Beautiful backhand barrel at uh, Chopu mm. looking out. You know, it's not an aerial, granted, but it is uh, <laughs> a sensational image. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I, speaking of just, you know, progression and evolution, I mean, Leroy Bellet is just taking it to a whole new realm with the stuff that he's capturing uh, with those right at behinds, the follows. Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, Michelle's just one of those guys too. You, you see him on a, you know, a wave between sort of three to 15 foot and he's just always one of the, one of the guys you just want to see ripping the top off it. A real beefcake. 28 and a half minutes to go. And that, uh, the story of, of that image is called Behind the Shot and it's on the Rebel Surfing's website, so check it out. 28 Fantastic. and a half minutes remaining here. Freestone's still out in front at this stage of the game. And there's uh, a competitor out there that's yet to stick a move, but everyone's oh. strike rate is oh. up, as we see Noah Dean here. Big up attempt. You can see that these guys are, are really capable of launching off just about anything, but you still need a, a certain transition, don't you? Oh, man, when that thing stood up, I thought we were in for something special because uh, he doesn't miss too many opportunities, Noz. Just uh, in two minds, he did throw the big oop up. Just Jack Freestone's like a truffle pig out there at the moment, just sniffing <laughs> out any opportunity, isn't he? Hasn't picked his head up once, he's just been <laughs> he's down just in it. He's caught like 400 waves. Absolute animal. I think, isn't that like one of the advantages that CT guys might have? I, w I wouldn't say definitely, but I mean, they are committed to fitness, whereas, um, you know, sometimes the lifestyle of the air guy is just surf, surf, surf. Yeah. Might, maybe not necessarily getting on the weights. Or doing too much time in the gym. Noah Dean, uh, unsuccessful there. Who we got here? Freestone up again. You're right. Just, uh, just a gluttonous pig out there, just <laughs> picking off waves all over the place. Nice little pop on the end section, little straight air. That's Love the way cool. kind of tweak that tail out. Yep. Here we go, Eli Hanneman. Nice little loop. Combos it up with a little hit off the foam. Not a lot of points in that last turn, but still, you get a, an insight into what this kid's capable of. Well, Hanneman spends a lot of time here in Indonesia, particularly a lot of time here at Karamas. Dharma Yasa throwing a few tail drifts, but uh, probably not a score in there. But yeah, Hanneman has dropped some clips, just particularly from this wave. Ron, where he's doing big corrupt flips, big alley-oops, just really has the joint on a string. And he's just so light. He's one of those guys who, when he comes off the lip, the amount of hang time he gets is just crazy. Yeah, well, uh, Kaipa Guerrero, who's going to be coming in here uh, to talk through some of the next heats. I was chatting with him yesterday. I said, boy, well, Eli's had a, a mad growth spurt. He was a pretty pint-sized kid. He, yeah. he, there wasn't a lot of him, but uh, he reckons his dad is a, a pretty sizey, bulky dude. So uh, this is a kid who's just going to add more power to his surfing as he grows. But already, you know, he, he's surfing at a level that, that can match it with, you know, guys are nearly half his age, uh, twice his age. For sure. I, I, just even in the lead up to this event, I was watching him free surf on really small days and he was just taking the place apart. I mean, it, had a, it had the uh, aura of those free surfs that you saw Gabby Medina having in Europe years ago. You know, when the, uh, he won the, the junior comps before the CT. And you know, I think everyone on the beach was just thinking, this kid's going to win the comp if he gets in it. And, uh, you know, Eli just had that vibe going uh, in the free surfs the other day. So it's really great to see him surfing heats against CT guys right now. That's going to put him in good stead moving forward, regardless of uh, where he wants to take his surf. Definitely. Well, having a look at the 
scores that are on the border at the moment. You can see Damayasa, the Indonesian from Legian here in Bali. He's the only surfer who hasn't yet stuck a move, but there's a few surfers there in a great position. Noah Dean, he's in a, a good spot. He's got the highest number so far. Just needs to back that thing up. Freestone. <laughs> Settle down, Freestone. Oh, he's having a hell time out there. A lot of ways for Jack Freestone, but uh, you know, with no one up at the moment, Vorno, we can kind of just dive into the, the history of aerial surfing a, a bit. You know, it started really coming to the fore with, uh, I guess, the, the evolution of skateboarding and guys starting to get into to vert skating and, and taking to the sky out of swimming pools that were, were dried out. But, um, you know, there was a group of surfers originally who really started to eye what was happening uh, above the lip. Uh, Larry Bertelman, Kevin Reed from Santa Cruz, Davey Smith, Santa Barbara, uh, Matt Keckley of Florida, and, and Martin Potter, of course. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like aerial surfing, if you look at those guys and even where they come from, it's it's just steeped in attitude. It's it's almost like you've got to you've got to have something in you that it wants to let out some, let off some steam or something, you know what I mean? You're getting to the end of the wave or you're hitting a section and you just want to go beyond it. You want to push it into a new realm. And uh, those guys in particular, they all had great imaginations and they were all wanted to do something that hadn't been done before. Uh, very creative and it's never really changed like good air guys and good communities of air guys seem to always come from places where there's a bit more attitude out in the water and I think that those guys you know they, they paved the way for a type of surfer that followed and it followed for generations to come here we go Eli Hanneman got a bit of speed keeps that tail low on, on that occasion it, it's funny you know uh, constantly we're when you're thinking about the, the scoring criteria on the championship tour, uh, it's all about get that tail up high for your airs. But, you know, I guess in a, a revolt, the aerial surfers sometimes go, nah, it's all right, they'll leave the tail down occasionally, as long as you're, you're right up there. Um, but, yeah, with the evolution of, of aerial surfing, it, it was that initial group. And, uh, and then it, it kind of sparked a, a couple of kids from San Clemente, I, I think. Um, it, it kind of came at a time when Martin Potter was spending a bit of time in San Clemente and uh, there was these two teenage Groms who, who were watching him surf and they just picked up the ball from there and ran with it, Matt Archibald and Christian Fletcher. For sure. And I think you could definitely claim that Fletcher was moving really quickly in terms of uh, bringing the skateboarding thing into the air game. Because uh, as far as the early airs went, even though, like in those days, it was almost more like skating was inspired by surfing. The Bertelmans, those sorts of guys. Guys were still street surfing, doing big laybacks and all that sort of stuff. But I think that Fletcher saw that skateboarding and the airs and the technicalities of it was evolving so fast. And, um, yeah, so basically... We were just relaxing <laughs> <crazy. there. laughs> But, yeah, it was just evolving so much faster, and he wanted to make sure that surfing was... That was happening, and probably just on a personal level. You know, he, he might not have been thinking outside of that, but I know that as soon as he started getting reco for being that guy, he knew that the future was coming, and that was how it was going to be for serving. Dama Yasa getting yes. his first completion there. The Balinese boy is on the board, and that was a pretty sick little finish. That was a nice ride. So expecting that he'll drop a reasonable number here, he's going to get himself on that leaderboard. Now you can't pace yourself through these rounds. You've got to go for it. And uh, Dama Yasa really found a, a clean transition to land on there. I'm loving just how well he stuck this. Because he was laid off the lip, he got the grab in solid, he let go, and it was almost like, oh, is he going to lose it? But he did even lay back. And that's pretty key in these events. You don't want to do too much, you know, bobbing around in the whitewash. Yeah. Jack Freestone there, a little stalefish tap there as he made his way through that rotation. Whips it again off the end section. Just under 21 minutes to go. And uh, Larong is about to drop his number. We're waiting on those scores to come through. Jack's probably going to replace his 257. Eli Hanneman there just working his way through a little fin bust reverse. Didn't quite get the finish, but it probably wouldn't have rated too high. Not a lot of height there. You want to get some distance between that lip and your equipment. But yeah, you, you mentioned that a, a certain attitude with the, the aerial surfers, I think it, 
you know, the, the whole way the Christian and Fletcher story unfolded might have been the catalyst for that attitude too because there was a there was sort of a, a little bit of pushback from the, the surfers at the time when, when Fletcher started really featuring, featuring heav- heavily in the, the print media. Yeah. Yeah, there was a, there was a letter from um, a guy who was a top 16 surfer in Surfer Magazine that they ran, sort of calling out calling out that style of surfing as not legit and that they should be backing the boys on tour more and it, it did create a, a cavern between sort of power surfing and traditional on the face surfing and what the guys who were aerialists were going to do but you know one of the cool things about aerial surfers uh, in terms of what we were talking about attitude they just didn't care <laughs> well, and it, it, in the end it I mean, polarised the it. audience too didn't it it because did it, yeah. it suddenly had uh, people who were, who were fans of Fletchers and seeing people go all out above the lip kind of uh, calling out the, the world's best. And, you know, that, that attitude has sort of seemed to exist for a long time. But then you've got to remember, here in this format, you've got CT surfers out there pushing boundaries uh, along with these aerial competitors. So uh, this is fantastic to see. We've got plenty of time on the clock for these competitors. Just over 19 minutes to go in our first group round here at the Red Bull Airborne. Like the uh, Rebel Airborne trials at Kuta Beach went off. We've got the winner of the trials out there at the moment, Damayasa. His friends call him Long, and he is currently uh, sitting out there in fifth position on the leaderboard, 5.46 for that tidy little end section air. These are the most famous ducks on, on the planet. They featured in the broadcast every single day. They don't do a lot of flying, those ducks. Some more flying going on out the front, out the back. So true. They're fun to, uh, to check out every day, those ducks. They make me feel real happy, dog. 16 and a half minutes to go here. And while we're in the break, we had the local boy getting another one on the board, Vaughn. Did well to ride through that turbulent white water there. Yeah, good little fakey float to land that one. And whoa! Oh, wow. Unbelievable. That is going to score well because this is probably the best air we've seen in this heat. Hits the section with speed. Tail high, full rotation almost. Lands right on that puffy whitewash. And rides through the soup as well. That is easily air of this heat so far. And a fully committed, near full rotation from Eli Hanneman. Yeah, that was unbelievable. Eli Hanneman, 16 years of age. What a freakish effort. Getting that grab and stomped it. Just so comfortable when they're out of control, these guys. And Eli reeled that one in. He's now at the top of the leaderboard. 15 and a half minutes to go, Vinzi. What do you got for us? Yeah, all right, down here with uh, Mr. Robert Kelly Slater himself. You know Eli and Varun and uh, Bronson pretty well. What's it like watching these groms go mad out here? Yeah, I've been surfing with those kids every day. Um, mostly kind of barrel waves and laughs, but uh, Eli, he's, he's unbelievable. He's, he's just so good. I mean, we've known that since he was about 12, so... Um, now you're seeing him kind of light the big guys up right now. It's pretty cool. Did you ever go in any of their shows back in the day? Uh, I did. did a couple of them. Yeah, yeah, I did a couple of them over the years. Um, I did one on the Gold Coast and I did one in Sydney. Um, and obviously a lot of expression sessions over the years. But it, I think it's great that they, these guys. I mean, these guys are the specialists at these moves, and and uh, they're the ones pushing the limit. I mean, limits. I think it's great that they they have this platform to do it. You know kind of use the platform we have to show what they got. We can probably get you a beach start if you want to whip the, the 20 out. Sick. I'll take the 20 out for a go. <laughs> yeah, you know what? The, actually, the, the swell just jumped up, 
the tide, you know, as the tide's coming in, it's so tidal here. The swell got bigger and the face got a little cleaner. The wind was kind of into it before and it's kind of more strong. Oh, what, what did it do? It was kind of like a flip alley-oop kind of thing. One of those what ones that? that, it was Jack, freestone. Oh, Jack's crazy out here too. Jack, Jack's so technical, you know. I think people maybe kind of forget how good Jack is in the air. You know, he won that Pro Junior out here that one year and, and uh, just lit it up with all sorts of variations, but he's super good out here. Run us through a bit of your history out here at Karamas. Incredible wave. I don't have a lot. I mean, I've been here on a couple free surf trips and I surfed the contest the other year when Joel won, uh, but really only surfed it on like three separate trips. So not a lot of history here. And uh, you haven't retired the airs yet yourself. You still throw out the odd punt from time to time. The odd punt. There's actually a couple. There's a couple airs that really work good on this. That that guys don't. There's one in particular. Basically, it's like a frontside rodeo. That um, is really good for this wave in particular. It's got a lot of speed, and then it's got sort of a steep. It's got a good chip in with a steep uh, section that goes into kind of a, a, a good landing. And. Um, I'm expecting to see somebody pull one of those things off, especially in the air contest. You're saving it for deeper in the competition? Well, I'll, I'd pull it out anytime I got the section if I could, but I haven't learned how to stick the thing yet. Yeah, I think, well, good luck in the rest of the event. Thanks for the chat. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you, Benzie. And uh, pretty timely time to bring the, the greatest of all time, the goat, into the conversation, Vorno, because, you know, we talked about Christian Fletcher and, and his influence. On, on modern surfing and then Kelly kind of picked up the ball and, and ran with it with a, a group of surfers that uh, he was traveling with at the time the momentum generation and they really started to, to lift that strike rate in heat surfing and and sort of bring it to the championship tour yeah for sure they were they were bringing uh, like you say the, that new school mentality and just making the judges and the tour evolve with that attitude uh, the chasm sort of started to narrow after that. Look at that, a big front side. Oh, crazy melon grab on the outside there, doggy. Sort of like a flip. And um, that's where you've got to grab just inside your, your front heel. And yeah, so th those guys made, made, ev they made the tour evolve. And so you couldn't just be the power guy anymore. You had to start releasing fins and surfing above the lip. And uh, I mean, Kelly, I just remember movies like Momentum 2 and, you know, uh, his opening wave was just a big sort of frontside punt straight into the uh, into the whitewash and it, it had a layback and stuff. But every single time you saw those guys take to the air, that's exactly what you wanted to do yourself when you got out in the water. Yeah, unbelievable. And Kelly, you know, really pushed uh, aerials through different stages of his career early on. And then a little later as well, you can remember the, the big rodeo flip at, at Pipe during the uh, event in huge conditions on a massive board. And he almost stuck it. I think he just shocked himself that he actually suddenly found himself standing on his feet. Oh, yeah. And how's the size of that board? I mean, it's a, a giant pintail gun, pretty much. <laughs> and he got the rotation and apparently sort of inspired by Mike Stewart or, or one of the bodyboarders he was talking to out there a few days earlier. He'd sort of been doing the mechanics in his head. And um, he sort of put it together. And, and he, even just then, hearing him talk to Binzi about the air that he would like to see done out here, I mean, how much thinking do you have to do? Is that normal po people thought processing going nah, on there? Not at all. As we see Freestone, he has just been on fire out here at the moment. Uh, a lot of airs made, but Eli Hanneman owns the best manoeuvre. And he's got a couple of pretty decent numbers. And much like the Big Wave Tour, your, your best number is doubled. So yeah. Eli Hanneman... With a, a score in the seven, point, seven range, he, he uh, actually logs a, a 14.34 there. He wants to get rid of that 3.17 that he's hanging on to at the moment. But here's Freestone again. Yeah, the replay flying off. Just a cute little sort of hoop grab there. And Chip has found a left, and he just harks that tail into probably the most bone-dry section of reef on this whole entire island. Chipper's deck grip, if you have a look at that, it is literally less than a foot from the nose of his surfboard. Hanneman up once again. Oh! oh trying to get rid of that 3.17. And he's just uh, so rubbery, this kid. It's kind of a good time for him to be pushing the limits because, you know, kids, their, their bones and, and their ligaments are just so... Flexi at this point, but that would have been huge. Massive corkscrew off the lip. I was waiting to see one of these from Eli. I 
you know, having uh, watched his clips, I, I know that he can sort of drill them whenever he wants. Just finding the right section, that's all it's going to take. But as you said, Ron, a couple of good scores there for Eli. I'm, uh, I'm loving watching this kid take it for the, uh, the big dogs. Yeah, for sure. Really uh, pushing things out here at the moment. Just over nine minutes to go. Let's hear from another one of our competitors here in the Red Bull Airborne with Chris Binns. Yeah, post-heat interviews are so passe, so we're going to do a pre-heat interview with Aitan Osborne. And, mate, what are you seeing out there so far? Uh, it's gotten a lot bigger since the tide push, and uh, it's a couple good ramps. Uh, Eli did a sick one, and Noah, and uh, damn, finally there's some good ramps going on. You did the big uh, varial in the World Juniors last year. Would we going to see anything like that right now? Uh, got 45 minutes. I think I'm definitely going to try to throw one of them. But uh, I don't know. I haven't really tried one at this way, but probably. And all the boards behind us, everyone's just riding their normal shorties. It's no secrets. Yeah, just riding regular shorty. It's big enough where you don't really need a groveler, so it's regular board. You've been staying here all week. It looks like you're dropping a new clip on Instagram every day. So you're on fire. You feeling confident? Yeah. I've been uh, surfing as much as I can. Oh, Chipper going mad. He just went left on one as well. What do you reckon, throw up some backhand punts on a, on a left? Probably not. <laughs> All right, good luck out there, mate. Thanks. Thank you, Benzi. Eight on is so exciting. Out of Ventura, looking forward to seeing him get out there. But just interesting looking at the numbers up there at, at the moment. Noah Dean having to think about this one. Stands on the tail, just trying to stay close to that steeper part of the wave so he can generate some momentum down the line if he spots a ramp. Didn't really happen for him, though. But uh, interesting, Vaughan, just thinking about what strategy these guys might play in order to get their, their two best numbers. Do you go out there and just try and stick a couple of smaller airs, safer airs, or do you just go out there and, and throw yourself into whatever well, comes your way? Yeah, I, I think you, you can almost see what's going on. Freestone does look like he's, he's playing... Uh, you know, he's throwing down airs that he, he knows he can stick. He looks like he's he is being calculated, whereas I, I'm looking at Chipper and he's just seems to be throwing everything at it. And uh, maybe that's just a little bit to do with uh, the different mentality of, of being a CT guy compared to being a thick. But I guess, like, you know, mostly these guys want to put on a show as well, Ron. Uh, the, the free surfers in particular, uh, and when I say free surfers, the, the airborne guys who have been brought in, selected as the best aerialists in the world, they want to get out of here and do something spectacular and show everyone they're made of. But this guy is just on a hot streak. Clean ads. Beautiful. Front side, air reverse, and uh, finishes with another one. And out the back looks like Lee Wilson. Man, he was so pumped to get the call up wild card for this event. He was surfing Chungu as he does uh, quite a fair bit. Just training on that sandbar, the right that breaks into the left, just air after air. I tell you, he would have won this thing five times with some of the things I saw him make out there over the last couple of weeks. He uh, really wants to make the most of this opportunity. Yeah, well, six minutes uh, remaining here, and Lee finds himself at the bottom of the order. When you look at the points at this stage, his best wave just in the two-point range doubles up as a 4.14. Still hasn't stuck that second move. So if he doesn't make a, uh, a bit of a jump soon, he's going to have to really get it done in that second qualifying round. But going to the recap now, Eli Hanneman out on top. Wow, that was actually sensational. I didn't realise that when we first saw it, but... Noah Dean answering back. Big front side. Air into the flats. Freestone getting pretty freaky with a couple of uh, acute little stale oops. And then this thing wrong. Yeah, this is the air of the heat so far for sure. Just dominating this group because uh, it just gets to a point, it doesn't matter really where you grab it if you go big and Eli. More of a controlling grab rather than that, the technical kind of tricky style fish that we've seen from Jack Freestone or, or the melon there, but big is better. Yeah, uh, I can't believe, looking back at those Eli aerials, just how hard he was hucking himself out there. They're really, really fantastic airs. And uh, making a statement with uh, just under five minutes remaining. Yeah, we've uh, still got to see two-thirds of the field after this this round, but 
Now he's marked himself a, as a potential finalist already, and that is uh, obviously a huge bonus, getting out there in that qualifying round, getting a couple of pretty solid airs on the board. At least one takes the pressure off when you get out there again. Can't wait to see this guy compete. He's another one of those surfers that just has so many different variations above the lip. Yeah, it's going to be really fun to watch. Eric Geiselman. It, oh, it, in the lead up to this, I, I was watching clips of all these guys just sort of getting a feel for sort of what they were going to bring to this event, especially if uh, given the opportunity to really let fly and get creative. And Eric's clips are just blowing my mind. I was, couldn't believe some of the things he was pulling off. He's long been known as, as just a guy who can do it all, but I'm really excited to see him in this next one. I know you've uh, spoken to a bunch of the competitors, so you have a good sort of general feel as to what the, the best aerialists in the world are, are kind of looking at and what they want to execute. What, what's sort of the, the most popular air that was uh, popping up when you, you know were talking what? to the, the, these guys? There does seem to be two schools uh, within what they want to see. I mean, uh, guys like Noah, for example, love really big, huge, clean, straight airs that aren't too tricky. Um, then you've got guys like Matt Miola who really like the spin and the flip. You know, they're bringing, they're, they want to see that sort of thing brought into it. And, and everyone sort of falls into one of those two camps. Um, Eric actually saying that he really loves rotations in airs and other guys saying, well, the, the air that seems to be more popular or the air that's stoking them out the most are really big, straight, controlled airs. And actually, the one thing that everyone did have in common was the more you bone it, the more you tweak your air at the very sort of apex of it and then bring it back in, that is that is what they are all frothing on right now. Well, this is the current leader, Eli Hanneman, trying to get rid of uh, 3.17. Won't do it with that wave. What, what do you like to see, Vaughn? What's your favourite yeah, kind I'm, of air? I'm huge on just tweaked airs. I, like, I, I just love it when a surfer hits the lip, goes as high as you can possibly go, and then just tweaks it out. And I also like to see when guys do that, you know, that their face sort of contorts into like, like they've walked into a, <laughs> a dead animal smell, you know? Like it's, <laughs> it's like you just want to see all that sort of like effort and attitude come out in the aerial. And this is like, there it is. You can kind of see it on Eli's face there, doggy. <laughs> but I mean, that loft and that distance he fell off that air. That, that says a lot. It's a good signs there for Eli. But yeah, anything that's tweaked, inverted, just those sort of those little areas where you're taking it, a, a manoeuvre that's already epic and taking it that little bit further. Oh, I know exactly uh, what you're talking about with those expressions because it, it just seems that you have to get to a certain height to get that look on your face. Mm. You know, uh, all the competitors have looked reasonably comfortable with the, the airs that they've been doing. No one's been at a height yet where they've gone, oh, am I going to commit to sticking this thing? It's been pretty technical stuff. Eli with one air that he really threw himself into, but no one's really found a ramp that sent them so high that they've had to sort of wonder whether they're going to actually attempt to ride it out of it. That's It yeah. will happen. Yeah. I mean, the tide is coming in. We, we've, this time yesterday, it just started pulsing. So, I mean, that's what we're hoping to see this afternoon. This is one of the great ramps. We've, we've said it before. I mean, uh, Bruce Irons got asked years and years ago, like, what's the best ramp in the world? He, he actually said backdoor is the best if you just want to get high. I mean, if you want to see some of the classic Bruce Irons aerials, just check out that end section from backdoor. But over the years, you know, we've seen other places come into play. This is this is one of the best, if you ask me. I just, I just feel like so many clips and so many epic moments have gone down on this end section of reef. Definitely. Well, Eli's on the inside. You know, he only got that one big number. He's got a 3.17 as a backup, but uh, that score in the sevens has him sitting out there uh, at the moment with a healthy score total uh, of 17.51. Remember, your best ride is doubled, as we see. That's uh, Brelong again getting uh, up to his feet, Damayasa. And he had a, a couple of completions, so he got himself in a pretty good spot in the fourth position on the leaderboard. Noah Dean, this one might be after the Hooter. Sweet little 3 0 off the lip there. <laughs> Float the three. And uh, not getting a second opportunity, Noah, but, uh, you know, there's no, no opportunity lost here, really. 
I mean, you can get two scores on one wave even if you need it. Well, things are looking pretty good as we get set for our second group to hit the lineup here. We're going to take a quick break. When we return, we're going to bring in Copa Guerrero for the call. Welcome back to the Red Bull Airborne. It's on and we're climbing and flexing like King Kong. Kaifo <laughs> Guerrero along with Vaughn, and we're gonna be talking you through this action. We're on the second group, Vaughn, and uh, hey, first of all, good, yeah. to good to see you, my friend. Always a good time. We're gonna be calling more Red Bull action here. This is group number two, six surfers in the qualifying round of the Red Bull Airborne. By the end of it, we're going to cut it all down to six surfers mm -hmm. out of 18, where we're going to have our final round in the water today. We have Ian Crane, Aiton Osborne, Matt Miola, Mason Ho, Oliver Kurtz, and Eric Geiselman, the next six surfer group. And uh, thoughts of what you've seen so far, Ron? I mean, uh, Vaughn. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. I'll take that as a compliment. Um, thoughts are pretty good. Very good, actually. Uh, that last heat had some really good ramps. We saw uh, Eli just throwing it, loco style, on the uh, on inside. Completely unrattled by the uh, the class of the other guys in his heat. And, um, yeah, we're off to a flyer, mate. And Red Bull Airborne is on, and this is uh, one of the best ramps in the world. And let's see it. Let's, let's see it. we got liquid launch ramps yeah. at Karama's. Here's our overview of the playing field, and we're gonna set up the heat out in the water uh, with Ian Crane, Aiton Osborne, Mason Ho starting off with a big attempt at a full rotation there. Mason's also joined out in the water with Matt Mayola, Oliver Kurtz, and Eric Geiselman. So a couple of East Coasters, a couple of surfers from the Hawaiian Islands, a couple of Californians to round out this six surfer group one. Very nice, very nice. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really interesting, this format, Kaipo, because even though guys like, you know, Chipper Wilson, who we were really wanting to see flare up in that early round, didn't necessarily find the waves he wanted, but in round two, he can only takes, you know, you can still get through just based on your scores from round two. Let's go over the format. We start off with 18 surfers. Uh, each surfer will have two uh, chances to surf in groups of six. It's a leaderboard type of scenario where we take your top score at the end of your two surfs Top six scorers gonna move on into the final round. Our judging, one through 10 point system. We have three judges, so unlike the uh, championship tour, uh, we don't throw out the high and the low, we keep all the numbers, and your highest score is doubled. So really important to go for it. Matt Miola stomping on the tail, looking for a ramp, and oh. goes for little Gorkin. Right behind him, just Patiently waiting, Aton Osborne, and he just goes for a little choppy kind of <laughs> alley-oop there. Cute. Very cute. Very cute. <laughs> nice. So, alley-oop. Let's talk about alley-oops. They're a counter-rotating air going in your direction. So alley-oop, uh, that which you saw Aton Osborne doing as the alley-oop is actually, he's surfing front side, right? But this is called a backside alley-oop in skateboarding because of that counter rotation. Yeah, I mean, front side, back side, I'll start getting dizzy if we start entering that conversation. I mean, this is, in my book, the alley-oop is the air that a lot of guys uh, who are really, really good at airs, that's the one they're going to if they want maximum height, maximum distance. Think about some of the best airs we've seen over the last couple of years. I mean, Head noise, Noah Dean, that thing was psycho out at North Point, and we also saw Geordie do one out there. Julian Wilson, John John, right here at Karamas. And then this, there it is, that's uh, got the rodeo spin in it as well. So backside, a move that, you know, has existed in other disciplines of board riding, but in surfing, we've always called it the rodeo, because Kelly sort of pulled it out at pipe. He named it after a song by one of his mates. 
that's our experience of the culture of that turn. That's, that's right. why it's called the radio. Yeah. So. And, and that, that mate would have been none other than Jack Johnson, top record recording artist. And uh, let's check in. We got our man in the field, Binzy. Chris Binz is with Eli Hanneman. Yep, I'm not going to say the winner of the last heat, but the guy who's on top of the leaderboard after the first heat, Eli, it looked so fun out there. Yeah, it was super fun, but kind of tricky. But if you find the right wave, it's fun. And you surf out here all the time with your mates Bronson and Varun. This is just like another day surfing for you. Yeah, for sure. Um, surf here a lot whenever I come to Bali. It's like one of my favorite waves in the world. So, yeah, it feels pretty nice to surf a heat. I mean, kind of a heat. <laughs> and the guys in the water, like, are they some of the dudes you've looked up for your whole life? Yeah, for sure. Um, I surfed with a, a lot of them from, at Stab High, too, so it was cool to, like, do a, do a heat in the ocean. <laughs> and uh, talk us through the one massive air you got to put yourself at the top of the pack. Um, yeah, they, I was, I don't there's no priority, but, like, I was kind of just sitting under them because I just caught a wave, and then they all passed it up, so I went on it and then had a pretty good section. And then when I landed, I was super weird. I thought I was going to fall because my head was facing backwards, like, it's facing, like, the wrong way <laughs> and then I couldn't see anything and then I was like oh I'm still on my board and then I stood up and I made it so I was kind of surprised <laughs> epic and have you ever done an interview sitting on an inflatable swan before definitely not <laughs> <laughs> all right so it's a competition unlike no other uh, congrats on your performances so far and good luck going further on thank you all right thank you Chris and yeah Eli I like uh, I thought that was the board he was going to take out in his next yeah thing. the swan one word to describe Eli Hanneman Hawaiian. Yeah, oh, man. see, he brought it already. He's on the top of the leaderboard. We've got lots more surfing to go, though. This is We're just in group two of our overall six group in this qualifying round. Mason Ho, what's Mason got for us? Absolutely nothing. There's no <laughs> liquid ramp right there. Nothing but a, a flat, like, curb cut. Now, I know Mason has a couple of secret weapons in his back pocket Ooh. for this event. I, I don't want to say them out loud oh, because Sam. he... Do you know what they are? No, I want to hear. Oh, oh no, you can't. Well, he's been working on... I pulled it out of you. His version of the Christ there. So I want to see him oh, pull this out. Now, that is something we haven't really seen a lot of. But what? where's that from? Christ there, Christian Hosoy. Good friends with uh, Christian Fletcher. Uh, Christian, just a landmark vert skater in the 80s. Invented the rocket air, the cross rocket, and, of course, the Christ there. Christian Hosoy, that tip of the hat would be incredible it? if we would ha see a Christ there. If you don't know what a Christ there is, it's like, you take your board out, you spread yourself out in the air as if you were crucified, holding the board in one hand, pull it back underneath your feet. That's the Christ there. So we can't, it, hopefully, we'll see what the surfboard. You never know, man. You never know. You, uh, you, you'll have to find that perfect section because you're really going to need some height to pull one of those off. And uh, Eric Gosman there, but... Yep, there's uh, a little bit of swirl, uh, uh, some opportunities. Starting to show Ian Crane, who, uh, again... Got in uh, uh, after, uh, I think, one of our CT competitors pulled out. So a late start for Ian, but stoked to be in this. A guy who has long been throwing it. Big airs, backside and frontside. He's got a few little uh, signature moves as well, Kaipo, that uh, I'd be excited to see. Uh, backside styles, things like that. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Ian get a good one. A couple of guys having to, uh, yeah, pull out due to injury, unfortunately. Uh, well, maybe not injury, but just concerns over injury. Ah. I think uh, Italo, he was uh, a little bit worried about his ankle. And then um, Felipe apparently uh, just pulled out the last second. Just due yeah, to it's not, not an injury, though. No, no, they, so you know. they want to save themselves uh, That's right. for the CT event coming up. One guy who's outstanding on the championship tour, two-time world title winner, Gabe Medina's down with our man in the field, Chris Bins. Yeah, my next guest needs no introduction. Gabriel Medina, how good is this event? Yeah, it's sick. It's sick to watch. I've been watching the first hit, and uh, it's good to have this kind of competition, you know. Uh, I love this kind of surfing, and it's good to appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Does that uh, inspire you to bring more of this to your own attack? Not that you need to need any more inspiration. Of course, yeah. They are, they are the best of the world, you know, so it's good to watch them that close and even learning with them. Uh, yeah, I mean, I wish I was in it, but uh, just scary to get hurt, you know. Uh, 
but uh, someday I'll get him. <laughs> so Italo won the last one and Iago last year. Does that fire you up? You know, maybe one day we'll, we'll get you in France, maybe? Yeah, I've been watching them winning, you know. It's so, so sick. And, uh, yeah, I really want to be a part of this. Uh, someday I'll, I'll try. We're going to hold you to that. All right, mate, we'll let you go, but thanks for coming down and checking out the action. No worries. Keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> An endorsement by Gabe Medina. Ian Crane down the line, little late to the lip, late to the ramp, and goes incomplete on that backside rotator right behind him. Aiton Osborne loads up, springs off the top, and looks like he had that full rotation, Vaughn, but was not able to hang on through the landing. A mm, little bit bumpy there for Aiton, but uh, yeah, Oliver Kurtz out there as well. And then, oh, here's Ian Crane. Yeah, so I think Oliver on the last one. Ian, there it is. Oh, backside style grab. So you, into the reverse. You called it Vaughn. The stale fish grab. That is your trailing hand on your heel edge. That <laughs> would be the stale. You can do a stale front side. You can do a stale back side. Invented by Tony Hawk way back in the 80s at a Swedish skate camp. You know why? Because they had dried fish uh, as a meal there, which was stale fish. I love it. I Let's love take the, a look at some replays. The origin name of Aerials is just so funny and so good sometimes. But that's a really nice pop. Gets the landing, but then this little section here, that's really like one of the areas that's going to bring you undone. If you get stuck in the fold where the, the falling lip and the upcoming water from where it hits the water, anywhere around there, if you're not stomping it clean as, it's going to bounce you. Yeah. And this was pretty cool too. Ian Crane, he actually said to me, man, if I haven't got my backside, backside stale, i got nothing. But I think that's a bit unfair. Whoa, this back, looks pretty interesting. Action. Yeah, looks like uh, Eric Geiselman landing something. We'll get caught up with that. And Aiton Osborne, a little slobby. That was a slob air, but kind of a credit card air in that way, just uh, barely off the lip. Yeah, it's... it's one thing that's cool about the Red Bull Airborne is that style is considered 100% in the criteria. So it's not just about getting the air done, it's about actually owning that air when you when you get up. Have a look at this one now. Eric off the bottom, throws it up. That is full oh. rotation, 360 in you, the air. Look at this. Beautiful. Look at the amplitude. That's what the judges are looking at. Solid grab, gets the board all the way around Vaughn. Yeah, and just pushiest of landings. Rides out of it without even a bobble. Judges are going to love that one, Kaipo. This is a, a really good start here for Air. Vaughn, you've done so much homework. You were telling me about the secret moves that some of these guys make. You've been the man on the scene, and you did some homework. You caught up with uh, Eric Geiselman earlier. Let's take a look at I that. I did. I got in the comp. I'm in. Sight? I'm pumped. I'm pumped. I'm definitely pumped. Man, like, uh, we've just been talking to the boys about sort of like what it... Just, it's the biggest air comp in the world now. And like, it's legitimately felt that way by the guys who are the best aerialists in the world. Do you feel like that? Yeah, especially, yeah, you just said it. And then especially at this event, like Karamas, are you kidding me? Like this is, a, in my opinion, this is one of the most rippable waves in the world. Um, so they made the right call. We got Kersey doing the thing, making all the calls, doing everything behind the scenes. And he got me in, so I'm just, I'm just honored to be a part and doing it. So I'm gonna have fun. and not really even like stress out on all the boys are ripping so hopefully everybody's just sending it and we're all having a blast all right eric geiselman he's got surfing in his dna mom surfs dad surfs dad's a shaper orion surfboards younger brother evan geiselman just had a runner-up finish uh, over in ichinomiya qs 6000 in japan so full surfing family and it's great to see Eric Geiselman out there, can't wait to see what his number is going to be. Remember, the high, highest wave score is going to be doubled. So whatever the math is. Oh, I got, a math, I got a math quiz for you, Vaughn. Hit me. In the Airborne series, a perfect score would be a 20. No, we double the we double the we double the first we double the high one. Oh, 30. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jeez, man. Uh, I was really bad at math, so I'm gonna I got my school. Me, me neither. It was kind of a trick question. Actually, it wasn't a trick question, but. I'm not good. 30 points up for grabs. That would be the top end. Yeah, uh, exactly. When we see these guys, and here's a format. So we can just read through this if we want, or we can just watch and see what Eric does. There's nothing there, so there you go. It consists of two rounds, qualifying, and final round. 18 athletes is what we start out with. We're going to end up with six in that final round. In the qualifying rounds, it's your best air, 
gets doubled and your backup air. But then in the final round is for all the marbles. Whoever does the biggest air gets the biggest score takes away the win here at stop number two of the Red Bull Airborne. Yeah, and it, I guess that what that means is just basically if you have a shock of a first heat, you can still make the final in your second heat, which is great. I love it. And, you know, that top air getting doubled, I think what that is when we look at this format is really to encourage our surfers, to, like on the Big Wave Tour, to go for it. Go yeah. for the biggest possible air, because you get a nine, that's 18 points, you can back that up with like a three, and you're probably gonna make that final round of the top six. Meola, missed time there, can't find the ramp, man, kicking out. It's interesting speaking to the uh, regular footers up against the Goofies at what? this wave. It's mm -hmm. predominantly a ride. I was asking the boys, you know, what's uh, what are the challenges? What are the advantages or the disadvantages about being natural and goofy out here? And uh, I think that the, the common thread was that the goofy footers were tending to lean more towards the Hail Mary style of air where they're going to, like, really hit the section. You'll see a lot of spins. Just a big sharp varial. Oh, oh. It's really not a good landing from Oliver Kurtz. The back leg slapping down on the tail of the board. He's fine, but I mean, yeah, that's one of those things, Kaipo. I mean, you know, like if you land poorly, mm -hmm. it can really go badly as we've seen before. I mean, a lot of injuries tend to happen in surfing from guys trying big airs. But yeah, that, that's like why we skaters, saw. like mm -hmm. I think guys also know when and where to bail a lot better these days than they have in the past. You're right, the art of bailing. Mm. And I like your point with the uh, goofy footers on the backhand, kind of going for it more, and I'm gonna make just the, for surfing, can I do this? I'm gonna yeah, do go. a PSA, a public service announcement. Aerial surfing, you can only do it in the air on the, on the backhand, okay? So this is the deal, and I just wanna bring this to everyone. In the airs, only backhand. There's no such thing as a front side indie. That's like a jackalope. You know what I mean? It doesn't exist. Okay? The indie air invented by the master disaster, Dwayne Peters, in ode to his truck company, Independent Trucks. How cool is that? That is cool, man. And but I guess uh, it's just, it's a pep, because I'm like part skater, you know? Yeah, I can tell. So I, I, I get like a little bit pet peeved on front side indies because, oh. No. Well, nope. shout out to my boy, uh, Gordon Orkinicki, who was uh, the skateboarding editor back when I was doing Waves Magazine in Australia, and he uh, schooled me hard on that when airs were just coming oh, in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Guys get sensitive about it. Yeah, he was not happy if, uh, if we ran any sort of frontside grab indie call. He would just lose it. Cool. And you so know what I else? That, I learned that early, Kaipo. And you know what else? Uh, skateboarding? Just push with your back foot, okay? Because... You push with your front foot. I know, like, a lot of surfers push with their front foot. It's Mongo. Don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm just reporting the news, Vaughn. I don't make the news. I just oh, report the news. Remind me to never go skating with you, man. No, come I'm, on. I am a full-blown Mongo skater. Yeah, yeah. Well, I a lot am. of surfers are. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm a surfer, too. I'm not going to act like I don't surf, but... Huh. All right, 25 minutes down, and it looks like Geiselman with the biggest single air, and he earned himself... I've got. See, we got to do the math. So it was a six-point ride, and they doubled it, and it's a 12. Well, and this is what I like. I like that the leaderboard is what everyone's competing against. They're not just competing against the six guys in the heat. They're competing against the entire field, and that leaderboard stays up. So we can see how people are cruising, where they're finishing off. And right now, Eli is still in the lead, even though he was in Group 1. Yeah. And that will evolve, right, through this. So, so we'll see all... 18, this will be our first view of all 18 surfers as we get through the first three groups. When we return to competition, we'll reshuffle these guys and have them in additional three groups and they'll have a, check, a second chance to surf. And then we'll do all that math. Top six guys is gonna be in that exciting final round where it's for, like I said, all the marbles, just the biggest, baddest air wins. Man, and you know what's cool? Like I'm looking at this list, there's a lot of guys who are fanatical skaters in this list. And I'm looking forward to seeing those guys bring a little bit of that world to these ramps here at Karamas. Uh, Noah Dean, we've already seen. He's a handy skateboarder and uh, Kalani David, obviously. And he's on a, on a tear this year as well. Yeah. Crane looking for the ramp and he's not gonna get it. Now he's just, just going to milk this like a QS, but those are no points right there. 
It's the Red Bull Airborne. Goes a little variable. Uh, not a variable, <laughs> a little, little shove. shove. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, Noah Dean, great skateboarder, like you said. Kalani David, great skateboarder. And, as, and also Finn McGill. Finn McGill as a kid, I've watched him skate a number of times. He used to skate vert. Finn McGill w was putting down McTwist probably at, i am say, 13, 14 years old. He was doing a full 540 McTwist. So uh, maybe he'll be bringing some of that skateboard influence to the Red Bull Airborne. Unreal. And I was watching uh, Mason Ho skateboard the other day, but he was on one of those like tiny little ones. You yeah. know, those little novelty ones. And yeah. he was doing little 360s and hanging five. And <laughs> yeah, that's great. Mason's Maybe a few of those. Maybe a few of those in this event. Yeah. I mean, he's been styling here in Bali. He's had, a, I've seen him on a quad runner, blazing up and down the beach, looking for surf, practicing for the Red Bull Airborne. Probably, in my book, one of the most entertaining surfers in the world, Sunset Beaches, Mason Ho. Oh, easily. And has the full bag of tricks when it comes to airs. I mean, anyone who uh, has watched his clips knows that he's got every grab in his arsenal. He knows how to send it. He knows how to extend. He knows how to tweak. It's just about opportunity. That's all these guys are looking for out here. It was funny, uh, you know, Ronnie and I were talking earlier on, Kaipo, about the way that airs have evolved and, and the way that the guys who have been leading that charge have, have had such an influence over it, you know, from Santa Cruz to uh, San Clemente down to, you know, even places like Narrabeen in, in Australia. And one thing that has been really interesting is where people have waxed their boards. Because I know back ah. in the early, early days, you would wax the entire length of your board. And then it almost just became you waxed where your feet went. Yep. And then, uh, you know, through the 80s, I guess that sort of period, and, and even the early 90s, and Taj Burrow, who was no slouch at aerials, used to wax right up to the nose of his board, even for CT heats. And a few of his contemporaries just laughed at him and said, what are you doing? And he was always like, well, if I don't have wax up here, because this is where I land if I want to go into a reverse. And it started moving everyone's whole game. And I was just saying before, Chipper Wilson, if you look at the grip, on some of these boards, they are so far up towards the nose of the surfboard. Another thing that's interesting is the CT guys seem to have much skinnier, narrower boards than a lot of the free surfers. Ah, that's a great, some great insight on equipment. Whoa. Big alley -oop with the backhand grab there for Eric Geiselman goes incomplete. Behind him, looks like Oliver Kurtz. Nice. Looking, he's gonna have to force this one. Huh. Goes for kind of the, the varial there. Um, so in the 70s, you're waxing you're all the way to the nose for those cheater fives. In modern era, waxing all the way to the nose to spin out of those air reverses because you're going to land and use the nose as the tail. That's right. And then engage those fins and spin all the way around. But now that we're in 2019, what do we want to see? The full rotations. We don't want to see people land the nose in the water. We want to see them come all the way around for those full rotations because that's the level that we're that's getting set. And guys like um, Matt Miola, who's in this heat in the blue, has actually done multiple rotations on that's his right. airs. Yeah, I mean, to get those those double spins in and also those big inverted flips with the rotation. I mean, it seems to me that guys from Maui have just got that down. Do you and know why? The wind, right? Yeah, wind. wind it's a windy swell. island. Windy. Yeah. I mean, there, there was a time, uh, my dad used to go to the beach, and if, if the onshore was up, he'd start punching trees, because he was like, no, we've <laughs> missed it. <laughs> you know, it just he didn't, he didn't enjoy that. But these guys don't mind a little bit of assistance. I'm loving just how much height that air has. Look at that. It almost rides out of it clean. Yeah, amplitude's in the criteria. Here's Oliver Kurtz, Vaughn getting tricky. Yeah, a big burial there, just went to right out. The tail sort of dug in, the fins didn't give him the release or the, uh, the cushion that he wanted. Did well, plenty of pop there. Uh, the feet separate from the board and it just grabs on impact. Oh, 19 minutes remaining. We start with 45 on the clock. You can see some zero by some surfers' names in the graphics. That's because they haven't landed in there yet. No air, no score, Kaipo. That's the name of the game. Yeah. But yeah, just to get back to the boards. And um, my last word on it is just 
every type of craft. Everyone sort of suits something different. If you look at chippers boards, they are almost dead flat. They're super wide in the nose as much as they are in the tail. And then, like, you look at Jack Freestone's board, he almost is riding exactly what he'd ride in a regular heat. Right on. High performance sort of race car. Let's check it out. Oh. You know what? Call your mama. We're at Karama's. We'll be back to holla. This is the Red Bull Airborne. Back with more aerial surfing coming your way. Having a good time in the opening day of stop number two on the Red Bull Airborne Series. Kaipo Guerrero along with Vaughn Blakey here at the beautiful Commune Resort where you can surf Karamas and have a nice Corona and enjoy a Red Bull and dip in the pool. And now we're waiting for to see uh, if these guys are going to bring big up scores for us. We got Eli Hanneman from the first group still on the top of the leaderboard, but we still got so much more aerial surfing to go, Vaughn. Big time. Looking forward to seeing more of it. It's a, a fair bit of chop in the face at the moment. Todd just trying to sort itself out. There have been uh, a few good opportunities. Just looking at that leaderboard, Eli Hanneman, he just absolutely threw it in group one. And now it looks like Eric Gosman. Oh, nice little uh, burial there too. Didn't get the clean right out. But these are the airs that guys are going to go for when they don't really get the section to get major, major air time. Yep. Start getting creative, start bringing something a little more technical into the mix. I like that. Yeah, you got to, you know, maybe not getting the amplitude, but bringing some of the technicality to his aerial surfing. Of course, the burial is a hand assisted shove it if you can follow me with that one so when you grab the rail and you spin the board 180 that's a varial if you just pop it up with no with no hands then that would be a shove it let's see what eric has here oh, oh. <laughs> with a quickness what man he just whipped that thing around so fast that was sick so mason behind him i wonder if he caught that yeah. That, <laughs> so that was a double grab on that, but a really nice rotation, quick rotation on the Gorkin, and we're going to see, a, a, I'm, I think, a big number for Eric dropping. I think so, too. Oliver Kurtz looking for ramp. None to be found, but Eric Geiselman's happy. Just hit the sweet spot on that takeoff. He got such a good amount of lift and was able to just whip it straight into that nice, cushy land, and... It always helps when you ride straight out of it as if you're going to go straight into your next turn. It doesn't matter if the next turn doesn't count for much in this. It's just all to do with making sure you've got the style and the flow, man. That's all you need. And a really nice little fun session here for uh, Eric Goldsman so far. Mason Ho, on the other hand, just can't seem to find an opportunity to show us what he can do. So remember, we're still waiting for the judge's decision on last of Eric Geiselman. We'll take that number and see if it's better than the six that he scored already in his scoreline, which we doubled to a 12. Aiton Osborne going for the burial, has to kick that board away. And Vaughn, you were talking about the art of bailing. Nicely done there, bailing out of that uh, air for Aiton Osborne. Yeah, well, I think once you start feeling like you've lost grip of the board and it starts to flip, you really want it away from you because uh, landing on fins can bring you undone and it's brought undone the best over the years. You've seen, you've seen some nasty fin injuries for sure. Miola, another guy who is just so capable of showing us something wild out here. Here goes Mason. This looks like it has a little bit of a ramp. He just goes back for the cutty. <laughs> no, just no little section for him to find. But uh, yeah, like Miola as well, just struggling to find a little ramp out here. The ramps, punchier the better. And the bigger, the better. Ian Crane, what's he got? Oh, I like that they're going for it. And we did see uh, the score come in for Eric Geiselman. They're going to make me do some math here. Looks like it was a 5.33 for his last. He got this six-point ride for the other air, which we doubled with a 12, for a total of 17. 
0.33 for Eric Geiselman in this group. It puts him on the top, and in the leaderboard, it puts him in second place. Here it is. Wow, he had almost nothing to work with there, and he just absolutely nailed it. This is like, actually, this is more like a, a corrupt flip, to tell you the truth, That's right? That's what it is, yeah. And, right. and uh, so O2, our, our commissioner of the Red Bull Airborne, uh, Josh Kerr, the inventor of that air, the corrupt flip. So Eric Geiselman coming clean, putting the corrupt flip. I'm sure that put a smile on Kersey's face. The, uh, the first time Kersey made the corrupt flip, I actually was sitting on a little pier at Newport Beach in California and filmed it. And I'm pretty sure it went into one of the first movies and uh, it ran as sequences and everyone was tripping. I was, it was tripping. actually about that size. It was almost exactly the same size wave and ran about the same height. So, uh, he's we got, repeating. We got Binzi on the field. Binzi, go catch up with a Kersey because someone just threw a corrupt. All right, we'll get there. We're going to do a quick little walk and talk. We're going to start with a competitor's ping pong table. We've got all the boards behind us. This is Yago going out to uh, see if he can win the title he won in France last year. We've got Chipper Wilson down here making new friends. Good on him. Uh, the rest of the boys are all checking in. This is the check-in registration area. That's a nice Red Bull Airborne jacket. And then if we go a little deeper, we, uh, you know, we got some industry big wigs. We got speaking of big wigs, we got the big rig himself, Jay Davies. He might not fit in that competitor's vest. Uh, plenty of atmosphere. That's a uh, male model turned photographer, bad boy Rai Rai. We've got Woody from Stab filming no contest. We got Josh Kerr right here. Kersey, we just saw. Uh, Eric Gieselman throw a corrupt hey, flip. How good's that? Flip. I know, I was a little bit sidetracked. There was a great moment going down in here with Jay Davis trying to put on a medium singlet. That was <laughs> great entertainment. You know, it's obviously he's got one of the gnarliest rig, muscle built Shrek bodies around. And the medium singlet was not. Present there. company accepted. <laughs> hey, talk to us about the corrupt flip. What is it? It's double grab, alley oop, yeah, kind of tweak thing? Grab. Well, it was meant to be a flip. So it was called the crab flip, but it, it kind of just turned into an alley-oop and that's kind of the easiest way to get the grab. And it actually helps you with your rotation of the alley-oop, like turns your head around, gets the rotation quicker. You saw on that one, he wasn't actually going that quick on that wave and he spun it so quickly just because of that natural movement of like bringing the hands around like that. So life hack, it's actually easier than it looks. It's easier than it looks, but it's still not easy. <laughs> I've been loving, like Crane in this heat has been trying some crazy backside stale fish rotors and that's the kind of stuff that I'm excited. It's so cool. Speaking of crazy, I've seen Eric Gieselman throw a coconut at the guy who dropped in on him out here. <laughs> in a heat or now? He's in a free surf, he's tapped. Yeah, yeah. He's, you know what's so funny? He's one of the most talented, underrated surfers and he's such a momentum surfer. He's so talented, but he gets so nervous. Like his nervous energy before paddling out for his heat before was so funny to be around. And then he, as soon as he landed one decent air in this heat, he's just like, he's landing everything now. He's just such a rhythm surfer and so good to see him actually like throwing some stuff down. He'd be stoked. When you did the original air shows back in the day with their ping pong tables and <laughs> basketball hoops and all sorts of beautiful people in swimming pools watching you? Nah, we got taken to some kind of cold places and stuff like that and a skeleton set, like one tent on the beach. But um, no, nah, this is definitely on another level. Look at this environment we have, it's pretty amazing. Day one's going off, you got to be happy with this. Oh my goodness, it's been thoroughly entertaining. You know, six guys in each heat, 45 minutes, they've got plenty of time to think about what they want to do and find a section, so that's good. Highlights so far? Highlights, obviously Eli doing his thing at 16's really, really cool. And then... Um, kind of like you did back in the day. Yeah, I was 16 when I hit, that's what I was saying before, I was 16 when I started the air shows and it's cool to give the opportunities to guys like that. and. Obviously talent like that, that already have all the tricks in their bag, it's, it's rad to show the world that they have it. So if Eli can do a corrupt flip, we've kind of gone some kind of full circle. How good? <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. good. Okay. Back to you guys. Well, thank you, Binzi, and uh, great, you know, we're talking about creators of airs, and we have Josh Kerr, both as a commissioner, as well as the inventor of that corrupt flip, and uh, award to Chris Binz for 
maybe the longest interview that I've um, seen in, in <laughs> of 2019 for sure. Well, you're definitely not going to see Vinzi doing any airs, mate. I guarantee you that. <laughs> Bronson getting ready for a heat. <laughs> ah, look at Jay, Jay David. There's the yin and yang of this event. Look at him. Jay Davies turning Karamas into Muscle Beach here at the Red Bull Airborne. Yeah, Dave, he's a late start after uh, Felipe Toledo pulling out. Uh, just last second. He's not injured. He'll be back. Don't worry. He's, uh, he won't be missing out on the CT. But uh, Dave, he's coming straight off the plane from a surf trip. Had no boards. Had to get one straight off the rack at Chile. And uh, he's been paddling out now. Like, an hour ago, he wasn't even in this thing. Now he's paddling out against all the, all the very best. Vaughn Blakey, you are everywhere with all the info. Oh, Thank you thanks, so man. much for all the behind Listen. the scenes. Oh, we went for the kickflip. He went for the kickflip hard uh, leverage on a surfboard unless you have, you know, size 27 feet or you're uh, riding like a 10 inch wide surfboard. But he tried to throw that kickflip. Very few kickflips landed in surfing. But let's take a look at the technique here. Brushes the rail for the kicky and doesn't quite get it around. Oh my goodness. Oh, you do not want to see the nose of the board go in and the fins coming back at you. No way. But again, Mason sort of, I think he looked down, saw that happening and, and managed to clear it. I like his intent though. If he was to put one down, um, you know, you're not, it, it would be pretty historical first and, uh, and it would continue to raise the bar for technical aerial surfing. So I hope to see Big more time. from that from Mason Ho. And then we're down to just six minutes and 10 seconds now, Vaughn. It's flown by, but the standout in the second group has been Eric Geiselman by far. Definitely finding rhythm out there. And I think what Eric's doing really well, Kaipo, is that he's just making the most of whatever's in front of him. He's not sort of like waiting to get a big section. He's just surfing whatever pops up. That's what he takes advantage of, and it's working really well for him at the moment. Something I'd like to bring up uh, while we still have some time clicking down on the clock, but first we'll get to this uh, replay. Here's Eric. He's on everything. Oh, that's nice. Just a big, clean, full rotation air. Mm. And uh, done at speed and just rode out of it with speed too. And then this little corrupt lip. So those are the two airs that Eric has done to get that 17.33 total. So you can see that. And back to um, what I wanted to squeeze in. When we talk about aerial surfing, I got Three words. <laughs> Actually, it's going to be six words. You ready? Yeah, go. Martin Potter, Martin Potter, Martin Potter. And um, Pops. Good words. Yeah. Had to do that. Yeah, I loved, um, you know, <laughs> Strange Desires uh, as a kid was a, a real favorite of mine. And uh, Potts' aerials were just these, they're almost just these uh, agitated little, like, fits of anger like he just seemed to hit the lip he always said it was an extension of hitting the lip that's what an aerial was for him and the guys that he respected who did it at the time were kind of bringing bringing it more from a place of power and it's just amazing how many different techniques you can see guys using to get in the air now yeah bigger is always better that's basically the answer though there you go Ethan osborne he can click a big air here we go looking for the ramp Jeez, it's not going to present itself, unfortunately. Forces it at the end, and that's not going to happen for Aiton. That was unfortunate because that surfer out of Ventura uh, has probably one of the best air games in the world currently. Freestone caught so many waves in that first round. I think he caught 200 waves, and I'm, I'm interested to hear what he, he made of it out there. All right, well, let's find out. We're going to watch uh, some of the surfing. We'll catch up with Jack Freestone as he got busy in his uh, Group 1 today at second stop of the Red Bull Airborne Series. Three minutes, 30 seconds counting down. You know what was cool, Kaipo, is um, during the Kelly Slater interview, he was just saying that Jack is so underrated for how technically epic he is in the air. And that whole first heat, he was really having a good time mucking around with different grabs, different twists, different variations. And uh, sitting at the moment in third place on our on our leaderboard, so only behind Eli and Eric. And both those two guys were 
managing to just sort of like get probably just a slightly bigger wave, a, a better opportunity to get a little more height and throw it with a little more speed. But Jack is looking deadly as he has done in the previous Red Bull. Well, let's hear from Jack. Oh, good. Oh, no, we're not going to hear from Jack. Oh, bummer. All right, two minutes and 45 <laughs> it's just you seconds. And me, bro. No, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. We got a lot of airs to talk about. And uh, we got <laughs> the conversation between Evan Geiselman, who's currently in the lead in this gr group number two, as well as Mason Ho, talking about some airs. You can see the lightheartedness in the Red Bull Airborne series. A lot of camaraderie, guys having a good time, but guys also pushing the limits of aerial surfing. These guys really respect each other a lot. They spend a lot of time on surf trips together. They push each other heavily. It's competitive, but it's in almost like a, an inspirationally competitive way. It's not quite so tense, you know, when they're, but, but you should see them when someone drops a, a really banger clip. Everyone wants to top it. Well, that's what reminds me of the spirit of, in this Red Bull Airborne of skateboarding, because skateboarding does have that community. You want your friend to land that trick. You're rooting for him. And that's what I'm feeling from our surfers, is that they want their peers to smash something big, something high, something boned out, something corked out. Ian Crane going for the Indy rotation there. Difficult grab, rotating. Mason Ho, let's see what he's got. Has to come around this section, looks for the ramp, pops it in the air, and uh, no landing for him. Yeah, you're so right, man. I mean, like, when anything big goes down in skateboarding, you see the whole park start banging boards oh. all over the skate. Like, the noise and the, just the froth that everyone has, because everyone knows what you want, what the effort, the time. Like, when you've got something that you're just trying to nail and you get there, it just sets off the entire place. I mean, I've been to some uh, skate comps and just had nothing but just the best time ever with that camaraderie in mind and the team atmosphere. This is what this is bringing to surfing. And That's I think right. that the Red Bull Airborne, if we can see a few ramps and a couple of big hangers go down, you wait till you hear the crowd on the beach. It will be huge. There we go for Aiton Osborne. Finally, he's gonna get a decent number uh, for that front side semi-full rotation. He's gonna do better than the uh, you know, 1.86 that he has. So that's gonna to add to the score bank for the surf rod adventurer, Aiton Osborne. We're under a minute remaining, Vaughn. We're down to just 20 seconds. Eric Geiselman has been the standout in the second group of surfers at Red Bull Airborne Bali. Ian Crane, nothing doing there. It goes fast with six guys in the water, doesn't it? Doesn't it? It's just so many waves being ridden. But it is, uh, you know, for the guys who have only scored a zero, it's not the end of the world. They'll get a second bite in that final round. Two good airs is all it's going to take to make the final. Geiselman throwing that one away, but he can know that he's going to come to shore with a couple of good numbers from his performance, his opening performance here at Red Bull Airborne Bali. I loved what Kersey was saying about, you know, Geisman finding rhythm. I mean, how much can you relate to that? Sometimes you're on and you're on, and sometimes you're off and you just cannot get it going. Take a look at the bottom of the screen right here where we have our results. Clear standout, Eric Geisman, really the only guy with some keepers in this group number two. We're going to be back. More action here from Bali. This is the Red Bull Airborne. When we come back, we're going to have Double Blakey to talk you through it. Loving having your company here for the Red Bull Airborne event. The qualifying round's underway, and we're getting our look at the last group. What a lineup it is. Yago Dora already has a Red Bull Airborne victory in the bag from France last season. Jay Davies getting the late call up. The Australian definitely has some big moves. Also out in the lineup, Reef Hazelwood. This guy's been stopping some of the biggest airs that we've seen in the past couple of months. Oh. And uh, that was Kalani David. Also got Bronson Matey out there, Lakey Peak Grummet, who's now living here in Bali with Rizal Tanjung. And Yago, wow, straight into it. The McTwist, the move that he stomped earlier this year. Not quite the uh, the inverted uh, effort that we've seen in the past, but love that move. Oh. As we see, Jay Davies. Oh. 
Not mucking around here. Oh, that singlet nearly tore off him as he did that move. <laughs> Looks like the Hulk. Oh, the surf is pulsing in this heat. The boy's going at it. Reef Hazelwood there just throwing it up for either a Gorkin or a Rodeo or one of those big inverted backside twist aerials. And now looks like Bronson. Oh, the technique of these crew is just phenomenal. It's amazing, Ron, like airs used to look really sticky, like, you know, like landing them. Sometimes it would just halt all your speed because it took everything just to focus on negotiating that landing. The guys are just riding out it with speed more and more. Yeah, love watching this guy too. Uh, unbelievable, Kalani David, the only surfer in this draw who is a bona fide pro skater yeah. uh, as well. And he's collected some pretty huge results over the years, surfing on some of the biggest skate tours there is. He had a third place finish in a bowl event once behind Pedro Barros, who is just one of the great mm. bowl skaters that the, the, the sport has ever seen, and Bucky Lasek, and he was just a grom at the time. So this guy is legit, and I just love any opportunity to see this guy surfing in uh, heat, whether it's here in the Rebel Air, Airborne Series or in a qualifying series event because, man, he had some major health complications. His story's incredible. Oh, I know, yeah. He went bananas at the Vulcan Pie Pro at the start of the year and everyone just loves seeing him at his best. And having him in these... Like, having it, Kalani in these events, the Red Bull Airborne, just is so sick because everyone knows what he's capable of on the skatey and he can really bring and translate those moves to aerial surfing as good, if not better, than anyone. Yeah, loved getting those uh, insights from Kaipo, who grew up skating uh, a lot. And uh, man, Kaipo's got the, the credentials. He, he hides them underneath his pants. His knees are shot to pieces. So, <laughs> you know, to, to have that guy in here uh, yeah. giving us the, the history of some of these moves is unreal. Yeah. Have a look at any um, any uh, surfer slash skater from the 70s too. Their hands have just basically had every piece of fingerprint worn off them by doing those Larry Bertelman slides down the gutters back in the day. Busy start to the heat. A couple of moves stomped already, Jay Davies put a three up. That doubles up into that six. Love the way that they uh, reward those big major turns. Your best ride will be doubled. And the leaderboard still looking good for the Super Grom. Eli Hanneman, who's right up there on top. I think and his collection of points turned out at uh, 17.51. And Eric Gosman just behind him, 17.33. They're the clear front runners at the moment. Oh, big time. And Eli's aired, like, clearly the best we've seen so far today. And I really loved it, Ron, because we've seen lots of different variations, a few different grabs, some good technical stuff. But Eli's air so far had the best mix of being the biggest, the most committed, and the most inverted. So that's why he's on top of the leaderboard. No doubt. Let's hear from uh, the man that's jumped in the second spot now on the leaderboard. He's with Chris Benz. Yeah, up down here next to Eric Geiselman, and you just made Kersey cry. You did a corrupt flip, and he, he teared up. <laughs> I had to pay homage to him. Kersey's the man, and uh, he got me in here, so I'm grateful, honoured, and stoked I'm talking to you, Benzie. Mate, we've spent a lot of time right here. We're on a through how psyched you are to be surfing Karamis with a uh, some kind of jersey on. Yeah, it's, it's weird just to be in a jersey. All this, like, you know, cameras everywhere. I'm not fully used to it, so I try to just block it all out, have fun, and... Um, it's just sick, like, we're here with all the, pretty much the raddest people, you know? Like, all the boys are just stoked. Like, even the heat, it wasn't pressure. We're all, like, sitting there talking about massages and whatever. No, nothing about surfing. <laughs> when was the last time you surfed in a comp? Um, I, I, uh, France, actually. I did this in France, um, and it was, it was sick. Like, this is cool that this platform's even around right now. So, I think, I've, I think it's amazing, and Red Bull and the WSL, like, thumbs up, two thumbs up to you guys, so... We're, we're stoked to be here, and I'm stoked to be a part. For and sure. you just got a little bit excited because the wind's picked up even more, huh? Yeah, it's going with the right. So I guess you just got to, like, manufacture waves. Like, I was literally, it felt like the chops were bigger than the waves in that one. So, I, like, my whole goal was I was just trying to play the whole checkerboard and, like, find a little, like, glassy low road. I was searching for one-footers pretty much. So, um, but, yeah, I, I guess it worked out. And, it, yeah, it was just, like, hard to get it going, but I got a, a couple going, and um, I'm stoked. I think if you get a result here, you more or less guarantee yourself a spot for France, so you know what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Just jump around, try to land it. Epic. All right, thanks, mate. Appreciate it, Benzie. You're the man. Thanks, you guys. <laughs>
Good on you, Vinzi. And, uh, well, Eric is one guy who's in the draw that might actually be able to use use some of the trophies that are on offer. The guy is a musical whiz, plays the drums, <laughs> rips on a guitar. Oh, really? As, yeah, we see the nice little lean grab there from Finn McGill. Yeah, but the, the wheelie, it gets shot down a lot sometimes, Ron, but I, I don't mind it when it's got a cool grab, a, a, a nice lean and also uh, a bit of height. A made air for me is something worth celebrating. Yeah, so, well, yeah I mean, most And of for us. these guys too. I, I think just getting a score on the board gives you something to build on here. Uh, this is really nice. And you can see the board, the fins on here. It's a little bit shorter, a little bit wider. Throws it up. I mean, it's, it's more like an ollie, isn't it? This love one. it. Oh, he puts a little tweak on it as well. I love that. Yeah, Finn's got a, a real uh, skate background as well. And his sister Dax surfs a, a bowl pretty well too. So, And then this. Oh, my goodness. Cleanest oop, Kalani David. There's nothing better than when the nose of the board is just pointing straight down and you just ride into the transition. Look at this rotation in the air. Butter seen him do that out of the out of a bowl in a, a skate park before so you know he's really bringing that that approach to the line up here at Karamas as you said just silky in transition riding out of that turn but this is uh this is a big one Yago you'd expect the the way you know he's been frequently stomping big airs that he's going to get something solid done here I expect that he's going to turn in some pretty good numbers in this last group. And I've seen him not scared to go the left if it pops up. There's, there's been the odd little swell that sort of like uh, stays open on the lefts. And Yago uh, will head that way and throw a big full road if he gets the chance. He's been out here every day for weeks, Ronnie. I saw him, uh, you know, really early, even uh, releasing a few clips on Instagram. And uh, he just seems to love this place. Uh, all the surfs that he come here do. But you know the guys who are just out there every single time it's breaking. He, he was surfing a lot with uh, Bronson, who he's out of, in this heat against him, and Eli as well, and uh, throwing plenty of tail. Representing Florinopolis, Brazil, Iago Dora had that really uh, interesting kind of path to the championship tour and really established himself as kind of Brazil's premier free surfer and Big really time. definitely uh, you know blue minds with just that that casual kind of aerial approach just something sort of silky smooth about the way he launches it looked like for a second he might just head off into that world of uh, just being the traveling guy who can do the biggest airs and uh of course, you know, once we saw him in the CT and uh, just mow through that field of world champions, he basically uh, showed us that he was definitely oh. going to be a guy challenging for world titles. So you know, a lot of those varials and some shove -its, attempts at big spins already today. But I think uh, height is going to win out. <laughs> you know, the, the technical aerials on those smaller rides they'll get you a, they'll fetch you some points you'll get a little bit of cred from the judges but it's the big ones that have been scoring well so far Eli Hanneman and uh, Eric Gosselman they've stomped a couple of absolute monsters you know it's funny too as we see uh, this looks like Bronson taking off he's going to uh, sit on the tail build up the speed here it comes no he just uh, goes over the back one thing I love about the air guys, and if this is a, a thing you'll see in skating too, if they aren't happy with the air, they'll never oh. look to the tower and say, give it to me. There nah. they go. They are just... No, nah, you won't see a fist pump on nah. a, an average air out here. No one's milking it for the score. No chance. No one's trying to fool the judges here. The one person that never has to fool the judges because she's that good is Stephanie Gilmore. She's with Chris Benz. Take it away, Benzie. Yeah, hey guys, I'm down here with the star of the electric acid surfboard test herself, Stephanie Gilmore. How good is this? It's really fun. I um, I really enjoy watching these guys go crazy and I don't know, it's sort of scary because every single time someone takes off, you're like, oh my gosh, their ankles, their knees. It's, it's terrifying, but they all just go for it. It's amazing. I've never seen so many surfers still at the contest on a, what's technically a lay day. Well, yeah, we're all, I mean, we're all sort of staying in this area and there's not much else going on. So <laughs> this is world-class entertainment right here. Stay tuned. And uh, any favourites that you've seen so far? 
Obviously, Jack Freestone's your hometown boy. Yeah, Jack's so good at airs. Um, I love watching Jay Davies surf. He's such a unit and... <laughs> In and out of the water. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then, yeah, Eli Hanneman, he's been really good in the free surf. So, I mean, all of them, they're all really, really great. Finn McGill um, and the local boys too. They all, they all surf so well and it's, you kind of just hope there's a big ramp. But me, I have, this is me with my air talk, right? Like I have no idea. I don't even know what kind of grabs it. Talk us through this one from Bronson. Okay. Here he goes, uh, the section. Oh, whoa, he just went for a front side, four rotation, didn't grab. It was a small wave, but it was really nice and clean. Rode out of it. And here we go, someone in their back end. Oh, that's Reef. Reef has actually been so exciting lately. I've loved watching Reef in the events. Um, he went for, I didn't know, what do you call that? I'm, I'm, we're going to go with a rodeo on that one. Yeah, how's Reef's not a Grom anymore? I remember him being like 14 and now he's going mad in every, seemingly the CT and these event, airborne events. Yeah, it's really great. He, he just seems really focused. Like he's got his goals set out and he he's just so determined to make it happen for himself. And I love to see uh, young athletes with you know that frame of mind and, and, uh, and then to see him come out in something like an air show and and still be so determined you know he's not just here to have fun he really wants to to win the cash and and put on a show which is is really cool tell us a little bit about karamis it's such an incredible wave it really is and it's perfect for this kind of event you know i was actually thinking the other day that this may be the closest that you'll ever get to a, a wave pool but in the ocean natural conditions because it's it's close to shore, it breaks in the same place every time, and you've got like the pool and the, the bar, and you know, there's DJs on the sand here, and it's kind of like, um, yeah, it's like if you're at Waco or Surf Ranch or something, and uh, but yeah, we're right here in, in Bali in the ocean, so I love it. It's a great All right, well, thanks for the chat and uh, enjoy the action. Thanks so much. Thanks. You on you, Benzie. <laughs> Steph, uh, watching really closely. In fact, the, the whole area down there uh, at Commune, the athlete zone, the Rebel Athlete Zone, and also just the, the Commune restaurant area is completely packed at the moment with the world's best surfers and uh, a lot of fans just so keen to watch this thing play out. I, I think that everyone's aware that you're going to witness something pretty spectacular watching this unfold. Oh, man, it's... Definitely the best of both worlds. So a few years ago, Ron, as we were talking about before, it did feel like the best airs in the world were going down in CT heats. As we see uh, Wade Carmichael there, a bloke who's uh, watching keenly. I've been watching him throw a few around, a few big airs. But then, you know, in the last few years, we have seen some of the most incredible aerial manoeuvres ever go down in clips. And so bringing these two worlds together, it just feels like it had to happen again. And I love the fact that we get to see Miola and Noah Dean and Kalani David and all these guys in the same environment as the CT guys and saying, all right, well, this is what we do and this is how we do it. And if you want to step up and if you think you can match it, then let's let's all do it and take this whole thing to the next level. kersey has been the, the mediator. Hasn't he? Between the two. Because there's been friction at times because... Everyone watches the clips and you're watching guys who are putting down big aerials and it's like unbelievable stuff. And I think, um, you know, that there's a place for that. But also people start to go, you know, anyone can put together a good clip over a period of months. And this has been the great thing for me. This is the big test. Seeing if these guys can turn up in a 45 minute window and stick a couple of those moves. And well, the, the answer's clear. Yes, they can. Eric Goselman, he, he's up on top. We've got a 16 year old Grom uh, at the moment leading the pack. Yeah, Re reliving the path set by Josh Kerr all those years ago when he first was 16 winning air shows when they very first came out. And, the, and you know, we, the reason why we've got air shows again, oh, nice little uh, varial there from Yago. As we said, the reason why we've got them again is because we almost didn't need them towards the end of the original air show run. All those guys who were doing the best airs eventually qualified. But now we do want to see the best in the world be pushed by the best in the world at this actual discipline. It's epic, mate. It's so sick. And I love that you're watching these guys, the air guys and the culture that they come from, feeling comfortable under the WSL umbrella 
and feeling like, yeah, this is somewhere we belong and we're going to showcase what we're made of. And I, I think just with what we saw on the Gold Coast, it, it's lifting the level of the CT guys. They, they don't, you know, they're in the contest. Felipe Toledo, uh, probably the, the best air at that, that stop. Um, Reef Hazelwood gave it such a good nudge. Uh, it was really 50-50 yep. if, if Reef won or, or Italo. Italo got the nod from the judges. But, um, yeah, Reef's airs, uh, and we should probably just focus on him for a moment, uh, have basically just pulled him out of obscurity, put him into a CT event, and given him this uh, fantastic opportunity because he won the trials with airs that were, you know, kind of getting close to sort of 10 feet above the lip. And uh, interestingly enough, he didn't really rely on those airs to get his heat wins early on at stop one on the championship tour. Isn't that classic? I, I actually trip out on things like this now because I remember being a grommet and the, the saying was, one good wave at Pipeline and you can make a career on that. And now, like with Reef, I remember two aerials he did at maybe Rocky Point Lefts last wine season, and it just launched him. He All of a sudden, he was just a guy that everyone was talking about based on these two huge aerials. And this is why we need to be able to showcase what these guys can do up alongside the CT guys. Finn McGill's already had a couple of good completions. Still hasn't found that, that ultimate ramp, though. You know, he's shown us a little preview of what he's capable of but he's looking for something big now here goes Bronson, this kid's got a bright future, might go on to become Indonesia's best I'm really looking forward to this next chat because as far as I can tell at a wave like this in these conditions you're going to have guys absolutely sending it, throwing it out there with big Hail Marys or guys who are going to get the perfect section, line up exactly what they want to do and do a huge controlled air. How do you separate that, dog? How, how do you separate that when you're judging? I can't, mate, but I know someone who can, and he's with Chris Binns. Yeah, cheers, Vaughan. Uh, we've left the madness of the uh, poolside Red Bull Athlete Zone and the inflatable swimming pools and the real swimming pools and that sort of bizzo. We're now in the Wurrung, which is a great place to get married. And we see Finn McGill going for the shove it. I'm down here with the head judge, Shane Beshan. And, uh, mate, <laughs> how good's the action? And how are you separating all of these various aerials? Um, it's been really cool. Uh, to separate all the airs, we've really, like, had a big meeting with Pertamo and Luli and Josh Kerr and just kind of, like, set kind of standards of, like, height, inversion, technical grabs, and... Uh, clean landings. It, it looks like you're using the whole scale. Like, guys are doing pretty good airs and getting threes, which, you know, maybe if you did that in a CT heat, you'd go a little bit higher. Um, Hang on, we got Jay, the big unit, flying down the line right now. He's got my leg rope on right now. And he's out of there. He owes me a set of fins as well. Yeah, tell us just about using the whole scale. Yeah, so, I mean... Um, we're keeping like the standard air reverse pretty low and anything with a more technical grab or, or height or inversion or cork, like let's see, reef right here. Um, Jack Freestone almost made like a alley-oop grab and he landed backwards, like something like that would have been a huge. Eric Crane almost made uh, a backside stale fish. That Ian Gosselman or Eric Crane? Eric Crane. Did I say Ian Crane. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Ian, Ian Crane. I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, Ian Crane almost made a, a really sick backside stale. So it's really just like height and just radicalness and torque. Like right now, Eli has the best score and he just had like the most kind of cork on his air. He's going really fast, had a solid section and just kind of went off access, pulled his head and had a really clean landing. Eric Geiselman had a, a really nice air. Jack Freestone had a, like a stale fish tap that was pretty good. And yeah, we're just holding the upper scale for really incredible moves. All right, here goes Kalani David. Nice tail whip with zero points. He's out of there. Um, did Kersey have a word with you? Because Eric got a pretty decent score for doing the corrupt flip. Was Kersey like, hey, that's my move. That's worth an extra bonus point or two? Um, not really. Kersey was kind of playing his move down a bit so <laughs> we all liked Eric Geiselman's move because it's like really just technically inverted and clean 
Here goes Finn again. I just love he's standing on the tail, blowing off so many sections just to take to the sky. Pretty flat alley-oop lands it, basically standing on those and then in fact doesn't land it. He's out of there. Yeah, that's the cool thing about this, judging these, like we don't score the falls at all. So <laughs> it's it's makes or nothing. And uh, yeah, you know, we're just holding the scale for really sick moves, you know, on the higher end. So we're just keeping it tight and making sure we compare each air and Anytime there's an error that we see that's made, we try to compare it to what we've already scored to make sure we're in line with, you know, what's best, what like the best maneuvers have been done so far. And is it, is it the whole wave? Like if you combo, combo it up and do sort of an alley oop and then a big air or something, are you going to get more points or is it the best single air? I'm not sure about that. Potentially, if it's two good airs, it, it could be a bit more. So, or it might be scored as two different airs. Pritamo? get two scores one for each of the airs so they just you get you could get two scores off the one wave so you could win a heat on the strength of one wave correct yeah that's insane all right we're going to uh, swing back to the action right now and leave the judges in peace for a while thanks a lot good on you Benzi. yeah that's another aerialist from the san clemente area we mentioned matt archibald we mentioned christian fletcher Shane Beshin competed on the championship tour for a long time. Had a perfect heat, the, the most perfect heat of all time, oh, three tens. I remember it. But uh, he always had a very progressive approach, didn't he, Vaughn? Oh, I couldn't have a better head judge. I, I, when I was a grommet, Shane Beshin was leading that whole push uh, of the next generation after the Fletchers and the Archies. And I reckon his style in the air as well, he was really on top of making sure that airs progressed beautifully you know he, he punched it high and he punched it hard above the lid and he was also about the grabs nice little varial there by my yago but yeah, yeah I, like san clemente and santa cruz i mean how much oh. how important are those two towns for the evolution of aerial surf unbelievable mix? after the the aerial surfer kind of came to the fore it was sort of really those two regions that kind of produced the most incredible aerial surfers there was flea there was barney uh, rest in peace uh, there was a, a yeah. big group of guys there from uh, northern california and uh you know i just think that it, it sparked a, a different breed of surfer all over the world big time and, and I've, I've seen you know uh throughout the three events of the red bull airborne series you know like people talk about aerial surfers having this sort of creativity and this imagination and and you can almost pinpoint that to the effect of the santa cruz guys in particular because i mean christian was bringing a lot of skate like a, all the santa san clemente boys brought a lot of uh, skate moves and attitude to their surfing but then a little bit up north there's a little bit of crazy sprinkled in the mix as well and uh, mate, it just it really sort of started to come alive with a lot of color and and uh, a lot of fun too. That was the other thing. There was a lot of fun going on up there. So, uh, and then of course, you know, everyone takes the lead from there and then it almost just explodes in all these other different little arms of what aerial surfing was. A guy like Ozzy Wright comes along, obviously inspired by both those two towns and the surfers from within them. Lost movies, of course, stuff like that. And next thing you know, it's just generations of air guys popping up everywhere. And now we're getting to see them on the world stage here at Karamas. 18 and a half minutes to go. Big scores starting to drop. We're going to take a quick break. A special guest joining us in just a moment. You're watching Rebel Airborne, and at the moment we've got a 16-year-old on top of the leaderboard, Eli Hanneman, the Grom from Maui, on fire, Ronnie Blakey with Vaughn Blakey, and now we're also joined by former championship tour surfer, former big wave tour event winner, <laughs> and a former air show series champion, Josh Kerr. Kersey, great to have your company, mate, and uh, great to see your baby coming to life here at yeah, Karamas. Absolutely, what a dream place for it. It's been really fun to watch i was just in there with the vibe of the boys just it's just epic to be around it's just like the perfect location the waves are fun you got this perfect like auditorium almost effect with this pool and what a great place to come and the one ugly one of the best airwaves in the world i can imagine that uh when you were deciding on locations for the red bull airborne series you had your map with all the events on the world tour schedule and the first tack went straight into Bali, straight into Karamas, <laughs> because this is the place where we're seeing some of the biggest airs laid down, but I, I think some of the more progressive aerials as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the ramp itself, when you get that right one that slings you from deep, obviously today we've got a lot of wind that we're dealing with, they're shutting down some sections and that, so only the odd cleaner one kind of pops up for the boys, but um, when you get that big bowl, like, it, you can go sky high and try whatever you want and generally get a a pretty good transition to land back into as well and you've seen like maneuvers of the year one over the years at this wave and um some of the best in the events that have been done on the wsl as well mate i, I wanted to uh, ask you when you were uh pitching this idea and it was actually coming together and, and you were going to the surfers because you, you we, we do have a little bit of a division we've got sort of this cultural understanding of what a free surfer is and all those air guys and they sometimes reject the notion of, of pulling on a singlet and it's taken two comps and everyone like when you walk around out there right now everyone's just buzzing to be here and not just that i think they feel like they should be here yeah because uh can you tell us the difference between the first one? <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> yes oh of my god blocking the ducks Oh, mate. Is that Kuiper? Strider oh, Wozolewski and Kuiper <laughs> hurting ducks. It's like hurting cats for these two. Oh, oh my was it like that? goodness. Was it like that for you, trying to get the boys together for the first one? It was a hey. bit like this, actually. It still is at times hurting ducks. Yeah. I'm like, oh, at the time, I'm like, boys, you got to, you know, you're staying at Chungu, we've got to go up in the morning, get over, we've got a chance to run, and they're yeah. like, oh, what is the real chance? I'm like, I don't know, boys, you just got to be here. Yeah. <laughs> I know what these two are up to. They're just out of screen. I bet you they got a little fire going. And they are just prepping dinner. <laughs> it's on. <laughs> That's great. But back to your point, Vaughn, like, honestly, it did take a little bit of talking with the boys and, have, like, to get them together and get them to understand, like, I'm like, that what I did the most was, like, I want you guys to be as involved as I am in this whole process because, really, this is your platform to show your surfing to show the world like you guys speak and really own this niche within the surf industry right and really they have this crazy following of youth in that little platform and the wsl has this huge platform that goes global and for them to be able to be able to bring their talent to bring it to this platform and do it that was the big thing and telling them on that i was just going to say i remember watching the very first one and everyone was looking a little bit like is this my area? Where's my zone? Like, totally. where should I be? And now, I'm not joking, they're out there lounging around, leaving their boards. <laughs> and going, Is that Steph's board? Get that out of the rack. I'll put mine here instead. You know? like, it's taken no time. And I, I no. really love that because I think that says that these guys are ready to turn up and really showcase what they're made of. I think this is obviously the event they were all really excited to come to. And I was getting hit up from people all over the globe all the time. The Karamas event, can I get in the Karamas event? Oh, yeah. I bet. So to pick the, the right to, um, you know crew to come and be a part of the, the show is, um, was definitely stressful in a way. Oh, there's another oop for Kalani. Oh, that's a make. On a, it seemed like he made it on like a different wave behind the wave he actually launched on. Yeah. It, it definitely down there there's more a lot more wind than i was hoping to get up today the last few afternoons it hasn't been this much wind the swells there the shape of the waves are really good except for the wind is shutting down some of the section the section so they've got to find the right one that has like a a little bit cleaner face on it there that it's not getting pushed down by the wind too much so some of the guys have had good opportunities and some haven't or some i feel like most of the guys have had a decent opportunity if you know, they probably look back and go, oh, I could have done that on that section. But that's the cool thing. I gave them 45 minutes. It's only one round. They're going to get another round to finish it up. Definitely. Well, uh, Vaughn, oh, I think you uh, put it perfectly. You know, some of these guys have been reluctant to pull the jersey on. Uh, Jay Davies is never going to be able to get his jersey off. <laughs> <laughs> These little singlets. I was down there for the moment. I swear he put on the small and he like, it looked like a brazier. <laughs> like he couldn't he get is it. He's like, I, I don't know. Like he's like Shrek just about to explode out of the thing. Oh, it's mate, so he funny. is a hulk of a human. But it, it is uh, interesting that y you said that you, now you've got people reaching out to you. And I guess the, the big wave tour is kind of like that. It, it, for a long time, it was there was a lot of committed big wave riders. And once the... the there was a bit of money going into that tour and some real focus on getting those uh, events happening at, at great locations. Suddenly people were kind of lining up to get themselves in those events. And the same thing's happening here. For, so it was really easy to fill Felipe's spot when he withdrew and unreal, Jay Davies. Yeah, what a great candidate to fill the spot, right? <laughs> yeah. He's been doing some of the biggest airs for over so many years and uh, really excited to give him this opportunity at a wave, especially like Kramas, that's where he's done some of his biggest airs over the years as well. At any one time, you can probably actually put together a field for a Rebel Airborne event in Bali. This is just such a popular spot 
for, totally. for free surfers and aerial surfers to visit. Yeah, absolutely. There's always people on hand. Like Ian Crane, Ian Crane actually happened to be here when um, Italo pulled out due to his ankle. So I was like, oh, Ian's been one of the most technical aerialists, especially goofy footers on his back end. You saw all those stale fish and stuff he was trying. And he has them on lock generally. I know it was a little tricky out there today, but he almost put down a couple of really sick ones. And um, it's, you know, it's so good to watch. And this guy, Kalani, being one of my favorites, one of my favorite ever crossover athletes of skate and surf. I think the most legitimate there's ever been in this era yet so far that can go to Jew Tour in skating and then come and yeah. win WSL Airborns and yeah, win QSs are, are or, or Pipe Pros. Are you surprised, mate, that CT guys have won the first two? And, and what, what are you expecting and how are you expecting to see this change uh is it going to be that the the free surfers who aren't on tour are going to step up and, and do more stuff or will the judging evolve to sort of like no i think be you know more nuanced the guys you know obviously we want to really encourage creative surfing and all that and then a lot of the guys you see them they're trying a lot they just haven't quite put that one move down yet but once they do that's once they get that confidence you know all these guys you've got to think like chipper and no one, they've never surfed with a in the last probably five, ten years with a beach commentary talking while they're going across the wave and all that kind of stuff with knowing there's eyeballs on them like it is. The, they get to live in this kind of fairy world of just like just one filmer. They're in this tropical paradise just with surfing with probably no one out, finding where no one is to just try and do their best yeah. airs and stuff like, and fill their video sections out. So this is very foreign to them. So they will find their feet and, and stuff and they will be able to bring those moves that we're hoping to see that we do see in their video sections. And I feel like you know, they got another chance out here, and I, I feel like this is going to be the place they're going to do it. Heavily stacked field. Let's bring up the leaderboard. So far, we've got our final group out there in the lineup. A lot of big names. But at the moment, we've got a 16-year-old out in front, Josh. Uh, any surprises here? Eli Hanneman uh, really has laid down the, the single most quality turn that we've seen today. Yeah, you know, I wasn't so surprised with Eli because I know his strike rate is just so high, and he's full of confidence, like... He's, he did really well in a bunch of other events with his air moves, so I feel like him coming here, I, w I was, I almost like penciled him into the final. <laughs> I'm, yeah. not, I'm actually not that surprised to see him on the the, um, the top of the leaderboard. I'm really stoked for Eric though, because he's over the years battled confidence issues in events and stuff like that. And, and for him to get such a great start in this event, I'm really stoked for him. And, um, yeah, obviously rounding out the field, seeing Chipper in there and uh, the local um, uh, Blairong in there from his um, the trials winner that we had at Padma about four or five days ago. That was really cool. He won the trials in like the last minute or two, stole it away from another Padma boy. It was all Padma boy final and they were all just like cheering on each other. It was really fun to see. Yeah, the Legion Grom. Great to have him in the mix and at the moment holding on to one of those positions to qualify for that final, but we get the feeling there's going to be some movement. That was certainly the case on the Gold Coast. The last group uh, gave a, the leaderboard a huge shuffle yeah, before you the know, uh, final was decided. Here goes Finn. And the, it's, you know, with this format, we have to keep the scale of airs the same for the next round, right? So there has been like some low scores because there is the opportunity we might get to surf in some cleaner conditions, big, bigger ramps where you see the guys really be able to send it off a proper lip line section that Karamas that we really came here to see. So um, once that starts happening and, and put them in the water in those conditions, I think we're going to see the leaderboard shuffle a lot, actually. Vaughn, you were talking to uh, some of the competitors about what is they wanted to kind of uh, try and attempt and what really turns them on. But I just wanted to get your thoughts, Josh. What, what air at the moment are you looking at as like the one that you think would win this event? I don't know if it's just, I'm just so into style and um, just old school, I guess, like the big straight, like saying like, there's got things like the Noah are doing like really boned out, like slob grab, just pointing the back leg out. That's like, I get so excited to see when I see him do a good one in a video part. I know they're not easy and that that for me, I, I know if you bone it out that much and you bring it, the, bring it back with control against your flow of motion, that kind of control is better than any full rotation that you just throw and go with the motion to me all day long. That feels like the buzzword amongst all the competitors at the moment, doesn't it, Vaughn? Bone. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is. And it's not just the buzzword amongst the competitors. It's actually just the buzzword in aerial surfing. If, if you talk to any guy at the peak of that performance, 
that's what they're doing. That's right. what they wanted to do. They want to do exactly what Josh said. They want to go against the flow of their motion and bring it back and land smooth and continue with speed. Totally. And, and that's just, it's so sensational looking. It, just, <laughs> it goes against stuff. That's what kind of makes it so awesome to look at. Yeah, I feel like that's the pinnacle. And then obviously just seeing all these technical grabs like that Ian Crane's putting down and just these different, different like you just don't see them in common. When do you see like a backside stale fish full rotation done? Like it's so cool to be able to just see even attempts of that going down in a singlet. Yeah, there, there is a, a bit of an education process happening too with just the, the judging, getting someone like Shane Beshin in, uh, working really closely with uh, Pratamo Adrent, who's the, the head judge on the, the championship tour. It just seems that those kind of collaborations are only going to, you know, help progress that brand of surfing too. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously we'd, we want to really just encourage these guys to just, we've seen a lot of just attempts of just really weird stuff. Miola trying like the corrupt grab, backside rotation really off axis and weird he missed the grab a little bit but that i love just seeing that kind of stuff go down it's so cool just under five minutes to go and reef hazelwood there having a little bit more trouble on the back end than he's had uh, with his strike rate on the forehand of late but he's one guy that you know it just seems to be part of his natural flight to push the tail of his board out mm. in his airs. It's not something that you hear him talk about, boning his airs out. He, he just naturally does that every time he launches one of those big lofty frontside airs. He's yeah. one of those guys who can actually do it without the grab too. He, mm. he can fully... Shifty in shift the sky. It, yeah, he, and he knows it's... You're right, it does seem natural. It doesn't seem like something he's thinking about. He just does it every time he t takes flight. Yeah, <laughs> that's just so cool. If I wish I could have had that in my surfing. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was definitely something that, that got spoken about on the Gold Coast. It was a hard final to decide, wasn't it? Because it, it was, was so close. Reef had a, a straight air, had that little kick on the tail and into low, had a, a really inverted air reverse. Yeah, um, very different. And it's funny, like, when you watch the the two angles of the replay while watching those two airs, on one angle, you're, like, 100% Reef. The other angle, you're like, oh, it's definitely Italo. <laughs> yeah. And it's just funny, just... They were just so, they were, you know, so different, but the amount of difficulty was very similar, you know. You know what's cool, though? Uh, Kaipo made the point before, at a skate park, when someone makes something sick, everyone's banging their boards, and, and you know, there's this, there's this desire of everyone in the field to see the best air win. Right. It's, it's not about the guy and how competitive it is. It's like, who nailed it and yeah. who gets it? And when you've got a call with that marginal, everyone's kind of stoked regardless yeah 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 like the, everyone especially in these fields knows how to reward good airs well reef had the best week of his life so uh, i don't think he <laughs> minded but no. here we go yago trying to finish one off here but yeah i think you're right you know in surfing especially when you're watching a championship tour heat if someone lands something good there's board banging going on out the back but mm. generally it's a fist going <laughs> into the nose of the board and that fist doesn't stop until the board's in two pieces yeah and but, I, I will yeah, admit, it is cool. whenever I saw Ronnie do an air when we were kids, I, he paddled back out, you know, just looking at me and I'd go, he goes, you see that? And I'd just say, nah. nah. No <laughs> Never. Chance. Older brother, eh? Just no, not a chance. <laughs> well, I have to apologise uh, publicly on air for uh, putting a screwdriver into the bottom of your board when I came home and the board rack was empty True with story. my board. My brand new yeah. custom was out in the lineup, and, and there's nothing worse than watching someone surf your brand new board when you're a kid better than you can <laughs> uh, but yeah sorry about that Vaughn. <laughs> your board was a piece of crap though let's be honest <laughs> but uh mate it's been a, a lot of fun having you in here Kersey, because you know you were definitely been uh, at the forefront you're still there how come you're not competing in these things <laughs> you know like my theory with this like i'm just giving this to the guys that never had it you know like this is all for the guys that never had that platform I was like lucky enough to have that stepping stone, that platform from like 16 to 20 to make a name for myself, be able to go on and show my um, what I have to the world on the air show circuit and then stepping stone to the tour and these guys never had it. Well, this is the recap, Josh. Take us through it. Jay Davies had that nice little air reverse at the start. Yeah, and then we got here, oh, the Kalani. I really like that oop. It was almost like a straight up and straight down, almost skate style, which we know he definitely has. Finn has some of the most weirdest, progressive, awesome airs ever. And I love that. Yeah, that was really that was cool. was sick. He fully did tweak yeah. in the reverse motion. Yeah. When the everyone talks about tail high, tail high, but I don't mind the tail going low on something like that and kind of pushing it out. Yeah, we've kind of evolved past that, haven't we? Yeah. We've seen so many huge airs. 
executed with the tail low and it's almost a, a stylish kind of way to execute was, a, a big air these days. If you do a big, if he projected like a proper air with that much like control and gave it a tweak, that would have been a huge score yeah. for sure. That's kind of exactly what we're looking for, that kind of stuff. And I know you, I don't know if he's been trying much, but he's got the most craziest variations of varials and sex changes and all sorts of difference. I love, yeah, I, I really love what he brought to that. That was really solid and committed. He knew what he was doing. Um, yeah. Well, here we go. We've got Kalani on the beach. Yeah. Um, 40 seconds to go. Kalani's on the beach. He's feeling pretty good about himself, Chris. Yeah, let's have a chat now. Why? This is only 40 seconds to go. Doesn't matter, mate. You were ripping. Oh, thanks. Hey, that was the first I've made since I've been here. <laughs> and, uh, mate, you've been coming to Karamas for years. I remember you as a 16-year-old in World Juniors here. Actually, that was the only time I came here. Yeah, so you've still been coming here for years. Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> oh, we'll say that. Tell us about the ramp out there. Uh, it's really hard to find, but once you find it, the wind, like the little corner bowl, is pretty sick. Have you found the uh, skate ball out the back of Commune as well? I, I heard about it, and I know if I go, I'm going to go full bore, so I'm going to wait till I finish this, and then I'll go there because... Last time I kind of rolled my ankle before the contest, so I kind of want to calm down on that. <laughs> so last year in France you made the final and you booked your ticket to do all of these. How much are you loving coming to the Gold Coast and now out here to Bali? Oh, it's crazy. I'm like, oh, I'm on the CT without being on the CT. It's perfect. It's, it's good. It's way better. <laughs> all right, mate. Well, we love seeing you in action. Good luck with the rest of the event. Thank you, Benzie. You're the man. <laughs> Good on you, Binzi and Kalani David. Great alley-oop to get the, uh, the W in that last group. But uh, remember, it's a, a leaderboard with the whole field involved. Kalani moves up into third position. So a solid performance from the Hawaiian, Josh Kerr. Thanks for joining us. And, uh, mate, we'll be getting you uh, back into the broadcast, I'm sure, at some stage when we get the next qualifying round underway. But stay with us. After the break, we're going to have a quick recap of what's unfolded here at Red Bull Airborne. Staying with us for the Rebel Airborne post show, Ronnie Blakey with Vaughn Blakey, and we've also kept Josh Kerr in here with the uh, with the highlights of what has been a pretty exceptional way to kick things off here at Rebel Airborne. We've got a 16 year old Gromit on top of the leaderboard, fellas. Uh, who'd have thunk it? <laughs> I would have thunk it actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Just with because, um, yeah, I watched a lot of surfing of Eli uh, leading up to the start of even just the uh, the pro event. <clears throat> Excuse me, like and um, yeah, take take time, but uh, yeah, I was just blown away by the level of surfing he was doing on waves that really were subpar. This is way before the event, and I just thought he's going to be dangerous, especially if if there's a little bit less swell than we're hoping for, and he proved that he was just you know up to the task. He's only a little bit taller than you, Josh. There's uh, <laughs> there's not much of him, but uh, he, he is definitely starting to strengthen his surfing. The airs have always been there, but now he's kind of executing them with that that power isn't he? Like almost exploding out of those sections. Yeah, he's a little guy, but he's pretty muscly, you know, for a little fella. He must be training for sure. And it obviously shows in his arm um, surfing with all that power and stuff like that. That leaderboard's looking pretty exceptional, though. Uh, not just for Eli, but for Eric Geiselman, who, uh, as you mentioned, hasn't had a lot of com uh, competitive confidence. And he's bagged a couple of good numbers there. And also Kalani David getting himself into that third position. So there's some work to do for people at the bottom end. But I think it's time that we dive in to some of the, uh, the best areas that we've seen today because there was a, a lot and Jack Freestone started off pretty early Vaughan just uh, so many ways ridden in his group he was dead set hunting out there and he found plenty too lots of opportunities and lots of variation in what he was doing this was uh, I think his opening ride heaps of lift and a fair bit of distance travelled there. He was fanging it, Kersey. Yeah, he just landed on a pretty hard open face too. There wasn't much cushion there for that one. 
But he definitely caught the most waves and probably had the highest strike rate out of anyone today. Probably the most waves of anyone in the world today. Funny <laughs> enough, he'd never landed a stalefish alley-oop until that heat. Oh, no fair. way. Yeah. Well, that's he, exactly what we want to see. But uh, yeah. this man, Eric Geiselman, big frontside reverse there. Yeah, that was... And that was a full rotation. Yeah, that was really nice. Pretty flat spin, just but it's such a nice kicker. That was sick. And yeah. just got the pop. That's what I like too, you know. It was flat. But he yeah. got uh, that right up in the air. And then this one, hey? Yeah, Memories, right. Kirby. <laughs> oh, he's welling up. The dams are going to break. Josh, uh, <laughs> emotional. Seeing that corrupt flip unfold. But, uh, yeah, Eric Osman really has the best two scores on the board. Yeah. Eli Hanneman's got the lead, but he needs to replace a 3-1-7. Kalani David, 6-1-7. Yeah. Really uh, skate-inspired alley-oop. Straight out of the, the bowl. Straight up, straight down. That was just really sweet. And it, again, just the tail lift there. I mean, at one point, his tail of his board has to be eight foot above the, the lift. Even though the wind was a hindrance at times, right there is when it helps. <laughs> Here's our number one today. 16-year-old Eli Hanneman from Maui launching. Yeah. Love how much board he showed us there. Yeah, he was, that was pretty corked and tail high. Came out of it pretty clean as well. That was nice. And hang time and a little bit of just stink nose as well. I really like that. I, in, I reckon it's got to be there if, you, if, you, if you're feeling it. Oh, man, he's a confident little fella. And in, in like, fast motion, that was really quick, that air. That yep. was what really gave him the edge. It was just, like, in real mo real time, it was just, like, zing. And it was just tail high, quick, perfect execution. Still got another qualifying round to go, though. And, and that means that, that surfers can actually turn in their two best numbers in that final qualifying round. And, right. Josh, just with the shift up in, in changing people's order in these groups... What kind of effect do you think that has, if any? Um, I think it has an effect more for the guys that are maybe going into the first heat and they might not have a score under their belt and they're like the first heat of the day, that kind of like not really falling in. That's when I feel like you feel like a little bit of pressure. I think a lot of them are pretty comfortable in the, who they're surfing with and stuff like that. I don't think that's much of an issue. In that first uh, group, people are just going to have to get Jack Freestone off waves. He was just so busy. He <laughs> took the lion's share in that last one. But this is going to be another fun group to, to see. In, in that field, I think we've got some surfers that, that go higher than just about anyone else. Yeah, we've got some creative ones and some very um, lofty ones. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and this is our, uh, our final group. Yago Dora, he's had a, a Red Bull Web airborne victory before yep. and uh, it just feels like he's got a lot more to give doesn't it? I'd love to see Lee Wilson also find one of those deep little wedgie ramps that I've free surfed out here with him so many times he just sits on the inside and gets this big old air section he, talk about loft he knows how to loft them. <laughs> a lot of fun today boys, Josh thanks for joining us, Vorno we'll be chatting again I'm sure, maybe as early as tomorrow but stick around because right after the post show Corona and Parlay will be hosting an ocean panel. Stay tuned to Facebook Live to hear from Steph Gilmore, Greg Long, and other surfers and artists who will be talking about ways to drive change through creati creativity and innovation. It all starts at 6 p.m. here in Bali. This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League. We're about to take flight here at the Red Bull Airborne, part of the Corona Bali Protected event. 
and the world's best aerialists, along with some of the championship tour competitors taking part in this stacked field, 18 surfers. We already had the opening qualifying round, some big airs laid down and sitting on top of the leaderboard at the moment is a 16-year-old Super Grom from Maui, Eli Hanneman. Unbelievable stuff from him. Eric Geiselman currently sitting in second position. And we're excited to see what this second qualifying round does because big airs are going to have to be stomped by some guys that fell short in that opening qualifying round in order to make that six-man final and get into that winner-takes-all position. Ray Blakey with his big bro, a journalist in the surfing game, a man that loves to take to the air himself. Borno, <laughs> how are you? I'm good, dog, and I'm absolutely pumped for this because I think uh, the other day when we first round, sorry, when we ran the first round, you know, conditions were a little tricky. Uh, they really did play into Eli's favour. It was small. There was lots of little pockets. He threw probably the biggest off-axis cork air reverse we've seen so far. But I think today with a little more swell and a few more cleaner ramps, the big guys might just show up and blow up. Well, this 18-man field has been having a lot of fun. In fact, after the first qualifying round, you might have thought that the event finished that day because they went straight into party mode. They had a good time here. They're not <laughs> wasting their opportunities to really get stuck into uh, everything that Bali has to offer. But uh, that was a couple right. of days ago now, so they're, they're well and truly tuned up. There's been some fun little sessions going down, yeah. and I have seen guys really pushing it in those free surfing sessions in anticipation of this second qualifying round and potentially a final today. Not just that, I mean it's it's having an effect on everyone. If you've been down around the comp and watching this lineup over the past couple of days, uh, especially since we ran round one, uh, everyone is throwing heat out there. I saw Ricardo Christie do a crazy frontside finner yesterday that was you know, definitely ramped up on what he'd seen go down in the air show and uh, he's no slouch by the way, Ricardo, but it's not about him today. There are a few CT guys in this field. Will they step up or will we see the more established, you know, free surfing air guys actually claim one for that side of the fence? It's going to be a ripper. Exactly. Yeah, Yago Dora taking out the first event over there in France last year. Italo Ferreira getting the win at stop one on the Gold Coast. And at the moment, it is a 16-year-old Super Grom leading the pack of experienced aerialists and championship tour surfers out there. Let's learn a little bit more about this event and its creator, Josh Kerr. I was 16 when I did my first air show and then they just got pulled for some reason. And Kerr was just rolling at the time, so it was cool for him to be all hyped and talk about bringing it back and here we are now. You know, and it's happening. Concept. It was kind of in my mind maybe three to four years ago, thinking, okay, what would be cool? Like, I know myself, without the stepping stone of the air shows that I was being able to do before I got to tour, I would have never got to the tour. You know, I wouldn't have had that platform of the air shows to be able to make a name for myself, to be able to put myself out to the media, become a free surfer, air guy, and then that pay the bills for it until I could, I refined my surfing enough to get to the tour. It was a natural progression for me. And some guys maybe won't ever make that progression, but I want there to be a platform for these guys that are super talented but that don't have that mindset of being able to get you know, three turns to the beach. They just want to go out there and go big and just do the best stuff that's going down. You know, it's like giving back in a way to this next generation of the stepping stones that they don't have at this point in time. For me, on my side, I really want the surfers to feel like they're a part of this movement, to develop the criteria, to develop the format, be able to use those guys and their, where their heads are at and, you know, help them develop this platform with me. The old air show days were awesome, some of my favourite times of my life, and hopefully I can give those memories to this next generation with this platform we're building here. There and back is coming up soon. A documentary piece on Josh Kerr will be airing on Rebel Surfing YouTube and also on Apple TV. But Kerr's he's so much credibility when it comes to aerial surfing, but he's really done it all. A number of years on the championship tour, four top 10 finishes, cracked a couple of finals, including the Pipe Masters, had an event win on the Big Wave Tour. He's invented his own moves and uh, yeah, he's just, he, as I said, he's got all the credibility. 100%, and I don't think there's a surfer alive who uh, loved to see Josh Kerr go from the air shows onto the sea more than Joel Parkinson. 
because uh, yeah, Parko really has Kersey to thank for uh, taking out Kelly Slater in that epic world title race back in 2012, Doggy. But you're so right. I mean, Kersey, when he was a grommet, he sort of did bust through a little later, and it was the air shows that allowed him to showcase what he was capable of. It was just really, uh, what, the strawberry on the Sunday? You know, he had everything. And uh, I was just watching that footage then of him packing it at chokes. And, you know, there was this sort of misconception that air guys were really one-trick ponies for, for a long, long time. And you used to hear things like, oh, you know, I hate the way that they just waste a wave and get to the end and then they try on air and if they fall off, well, the whole wave's done. Well, that's just not the case at all. Garbage. These guys now, they... they Rubbish. They will throw first section hangers that will leave you dead set gasping for air. And I think that that is something that they have brought to the CT, even if it's only an influence. Because if you see John John, Felipe, and all those guys take off at the top of J-Bay and throw a huge oop, that's just not something you saw done in the past. That's where aerial surfing really has evolved to over the last few years. Definitely. And a lot of these guys are exceptional big wave surfers too. My old uh, commentary sparring partner, Ross Williams, made that pick up. He, he thought that, uh, that the aerial surfing really helped these guys in their big wave approach, uh, just reading the subtleties of transitions and actually taking flight, disconnecting with the wave when you're taking a big drop. And, yeah, great you observation. Know, Noah Dean, like the stuff we've seen him do at Backdoor and Pipe over the past couple of seasons has been exceptional. And Josh, as we mentioned, has won a big wave tour event. A lot of the guys in this 18-man field have massive cajones. <laughs> and aren't uh, afraid to throw themselves into some big waves. But let's get set for this first heat of the morning. What a lineup we have here. This is our first group. And loving seeing Ian Crane and Jay Davies get the call up. Both those guys were hanging around in Bali, just absolutely lapping up the good times. And uh, we had a couple of withdrawals in Italo Ferreira and Felipe Toledo. And so these boys stepped up. Jack Freestone won a world junior title here at Karamas with big airs. Also in this heat. We've got Mason Ho, everyone's favourite, and Kalani David, and the uh, the local boy from Ligian Beach, Brulong, Damayasa, who took out the uh, the trials, and uh, they were heavily stacked. There was a, a lot of the Padma boys, which is a, a group of surfers over there near Legian, who went all out and traded blows over there on the, the beaches. But it is a, a big feather in his cap to make the grade here. He's already up on the leaderboard in a pretty good position. So he's got a couple of keeper scores, but right now it's all about banking a couple of monsters and ensuring your place in the top six because that's how you're going to get yourself into the final. And then it's not a, a two-wave contest or a two-air contest. It is all about who can nail the biggest trick. And I've got a feeling with the conditions we got on offer here today, Vaughn, it's going to be a monster. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's, I'm loving the uh, momentum too. The Indonesian surfers are carrying right across this entire event. You know, good to see Rio get a, uh, a win in against who? Kelly Slater the other day? No, it was... Uh, no, I'm not sure. It, it was good to see him take out an event anyway. Kelly won his first heat, actually, from memory. But looking at this right now, um, what an epic morning. Have a look at these conditions. A bit early. To be honest, it is a bit early. Yeah, yeah. A very quick call this morning. Yeah, you know, no I caught doubt. us off guard a little bit. I was bit. in bed five minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. It's a run down in time. Vaughn's actually uh, on his headset back in his room at the moment, <laughs> calling the action. But uh, it's actually caught one of our competitors off guard too. Kalani David not here just yet, but I'm sure he'll make his entry. He won't need a lot of time. And in fact, he's actually sitting pretty sweet up there on the leaderboard at this stage of the game, sitting in third position, Kalani. So really, just with one more big air, he could get it done. But here's the format. Okay, we're into the second qualifying round. We're going to see all 18 surfers again. And even if you logged a, a good number in the first qualifying round, you can replace it with something better now. Yeah, you can actually replace all your numbers on one wave if you manage to, uh, you know, stomp a couple of good ones, uh, which I love. I love this format. I think it, it really allows a lot of freedom. And uh, it just means you're never, qu you're never stressing. You've got until your very last wave to, uh, to get through. And so that's always a good thing. Here's Kalani, look. Oh, he looks like he's in a real rush to get out there too. Uh, <laughs> like we said, he won't need a lot of time and he'll be feeling kind of relaxed about the fact that he does have a reasonable score in the bag at the moment. Keep in mind that the, uh, the scoring format for this event is really similar to the Big Wave Tour in that your best 
ride or your best air is doubled. That's right. And I like that. Yeah, me too. I just think it, it encourages you to just go huge straight off the bat. You want to get a score in. You can lock yourself into the final on your first wave or your last wave, as we just said. Flanny's absolutely chilling. Look, I, I don't know if he's... Uh, no one else has even caught a wave yet, so he's he's got no... These guys are pretty pretty chilled out, Rob. They are. Very relaxed dudes. No reason to rush. Yeah, 42 minutes on the clock. Nothing on the board just yet. Kalani slowly making his way down to the keyhole. Priority not a factor in their teats. It's gentlemen's rules. There's a, a quote from Kersey, which is kind of becoming famous amongst the guys, and it is basically, you know, don't be a dick or you won't get invited to the after party out in the lineup. And I reckon it's a pretty cool rule. These guys are really supportive of one another. And at different stages, we've seen surfers, and it could happen here at Karamas because the wave is a little longer than you think, and there is kind of two sections. But we've seen surfers drop in and actually create the dream ramp for the guy that they've dropped in on. So, yeah, I think you know, it can work in your favour sometimes. Yeah, and, yeah, there is the rule is there. I mean, at the judge's discretion, they can rule an interference if they want to. But, I mean, as you said, Ron, sometimes it works. And these guys are all about supporting each other. They want to see the biggest air possible. And we're off. Relong loading up into the reverse. Oh, Great way to start bummer. the morning. Beautiful. Straight from the banana pancake, straight into a frontside air reverse on that first section. As we see Mason. He had a frustrating heat, didn't he, the other day, Mason? Oh, yeah. just could not find a wave, uh, a zero score for that. Yep. Well, let's have a, uh, we'll get a look at the leaderboard in a moment, but there is a few surfers that didn't get a make in that first qualifying round. And they're going to have a, a, quite a bit of chasing to do. And that, that's just putting a little bit more pressure on yourself to stick a couple here. I, I think... It's probably going to be unlike this, these guys to, to restrain themselves and get a couple of numbers up. But we did see it. It felt like we did see a little bit of that, a little bit of that strategy coming into play. And I think mostly it was from our championship tour competitor, Jack Freestone, who's up at the moment. Yeah, Jack just seemed to be stick going for airs that he kind of felt he could really stick, even though he was very technical. It feels like he's got a lot more height to give. Well, here's Mason. Loading up, looking down the line, seeing if there's a ramp on offer. It's going to really work in your favour today if, if you have that exploding aerial out of the pocket because without that uh, onshore breeze and these waves shutting down a little bit, you might get limited air sections down the line. Definitely. I mean, I think the thing that blew my mind about Jack Freestone the other day was just how many waves he caught. When I was asking you uh, about the difference between the air guys and the CT guys were on. I said, you know, when we were talking about it, what's the advantage? And I think you said, it's just the, how busy the CT guys will stay in the lineup. They'll be all over everything. Jay Davies there, the Hulk, throws up a big frontside finner and uh, doesn't ride out of that one. Yeah, still hasn't been able to get out of that jersey from the first qualifying round. Whoa. As you see, Ian Crane launching. Ian's one of my favourite aerialists. He's definitely one of those guys that pushes the tail of that board out. Always seems to be having uh, the best time in any group of people. He always looks like he's having more fun than any anyone. Well, I'm loving these backside stales he's going for, dog. They're just, uh, they're just sick. And the stale fish, it just never doesn't look good. It's one of those airs that, you know, basically as long as they've got a bit of height going, it's always going to look stylish. And style is in the criteria here today, which I'm really stoked about because when we go through some of the better ways from uh, the other, other day and as we see things progress today, we'll really be able to point out what the future of aerial surfing looks like and style has a lot to do with it. Loving that. 38 and a half minutes to go. And it is uh, Damiasa, the local boy, Rolong. He's the only one with a, a make at the moment. I was loving how smooth the ride out on that was. You know, rode fakie for quite a while and then spun it around without it losing any speed. And I mean, if you've surfed around where Dam is from, you're going to know that those front side air revs come in really handy because there can be some gutless waves and there can be some punchy waves depending on what the tide's doing on the west coast there on the beaches. And look at that, heaps of loft. I love the distance travel. Distance, it? yep. Loving that. Three-man panel breaking this air down. And the, the, the panel is headed up by 
a great aerialist and a former world number two in Shane Beshin. And he'd be paying close attention to uh, just the difficulty of that manoeuvre, just how well he, he rode out of that one fakie, spun it around as we see Crano again trying to launch. Can't find the transition. Let's check in with the creator down there with uh, Chris Benz. It's Josh Kerr. Yeah, morning, Ronnie. Thanks, guys. Down here with Kersey. It's like a throwback to the air show days of old. We had a competitor turn up late. <laughs> yeah, I was actually pretty happy with having a five out of six um, strike rate this morning at 6.35 <laughs> start, which is kind of going against all um, everyone's rules with airs. <laughs> but, um, you know, we're given a good opportunity this morning with some three-foot sets, and they're really hitting the reef good. And, I mean, the wind isn't on, like... It's very, very light, so when they get a section, I don't think it's going to be any problem at all. It's pretty dreamy, actually, out there, other than it being too early in the morning. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've seen guys like James Caddo walk straight out of Club A at Scarborough and sign in for his heat at 6 in the morning. Mate, tell us about the conditions we've got this morning. Yeah, yeah, we've got, like, some plenty of opportunity out there. We've got 45-minute heats again, so they're going to have heaps of time, and there's plenty of little deep ones, like the little, you know, barely button high that kind of get, they get that really good curvature to the wave that lets you fly, and then a few sets that all also have some big sections. We saw heaps of waves in the like half hour leading up to the um, event starting. So I'm not worried. I think we've got plenty of opportunity. And I think the good thing right now, we've got some clouds on the horizon that's kind of blocking the, the sun because that the sun can get pretty gnarly in the morning when it rises, like right where you're looking, like down the line. So I'm glad that's not the case this morning. And uh, tell us about the wind. It's non-existent at the moment. Is it going to come on shore later and sort of help the boys a little bit more? Uh, I can't predict anything, but the last couple of mornings there's been this like really nice little fluff coming up around like 7.30, 8 o'clock. So I think maybe in this next heat they might see a little bit of that and that will help a lot as well. Um, but we've got to take advantage of the tide because I think the high tide's around 9.30. So um, the case with Karamas, it just seems to shut down right after the high. So we'll see how we go. So when you were competing at Salt Creek and Bondi and whatever back in the day, could you ever imagine an air show at three foot perfect karamas like this? No, definitely not. This is kind of pretty dreamy. That was the whole point of the dream is to be able to bring it to WSL, biggest platform, and also have the best waves on offer. And uh, have you, who've been some of your standouts so far? Um, I've been mean, obviously Eli, a little younger on, just reminiscent of my old days when 16 hitting the air shows. And then also Kalani, his alley oop was awesome. And Jack Freestone, I love how tech he was going with all his um, grabs and stuff like that. A couple almost from Ian Crane, also of those backside stale fish reverses that I'm really excited to see one go down. Maybe we'll throw it back. There's a really good set coming. All right, back up to you guys in the box. Thank you, Benzie. Yeah, and I just want to let Josh know that he's got a bit of uh, milk froth on his top lip from this morning <laughs> cappuccino there. He's coffee susu. <laughs> How's that more stuck? He's the eternal Grom, Josh. He had to put a bit of facial hair on just to remind us all that he's actually into his 30s now. It's funny. He is sitting there like a dad on the uh, side of the soccer field watching all his kids oh, run yeah. around. Screaming at his kids. <laughs> <laughs> Do something. Here we go. 35 minutes to go. And Kalani David is well and truly awake. Almost spinning out of a nice little air burst. Is that an exploding air out of the pocket of the wave? Freestone loading up something big. Big oop. Oh. Clean rotation into layback. Limbo's his way out of that one. Oh, this will be cool. And now the sets are starting to pour in. Ian Crane from San Clemente, California, loading up. Big grab. Gets a little tangled up with the equipment. Can't quite stick it. But the photo what was there. Yep, nailed the shot. And Brelong now loading up. Has some speed. Gets the alley of his own. Just lands a little awkwardly on the roof there. Can't bring it down. But a nice little flurry of waves, Vaughan. And, uh, well, Jack Freestone just so determined to hang on to that one. Four sections, four completely different airs. Uh, a couple of oops, actually. But Freestone really getting that rotation around. What's going to be interesting is in snowboarding, if your hand touches that snow, I mean, you really get punished for it. And I think the Jack, you know, being the aficionado of aerial surfing that he is, I think he'd probably be a little dark on himself that he didn't just clean this one out. That uh, was still a incredible. sensational air. Unbelievable. So much rotation. Really whips it out of the uh, takeoff. Watch this. He gets uh, a lot of distance. Beautiful technique. Loses the back foot just for a second. Look at this. He's landed it so nicely and just comes down there and... That is unbelievable. <laughs> oh How's the knees going? Oh, 
just knees, my yeah. knees would have just blown off. He came out of the air and just straight into a yoga class on the beach. But I just can't help but wonder in the back of his mind if he wouldn't be just a little bit disappointed with that landing. Ian throwing it upside down. Yeah, they really, really want to see you stick those landings clean. They want to see you stomp it. Bolts. And uh, he just, on that occasion, uh, had quite a bit of recovery time. You mentioned that back foot just slipping off a little bit uh, just before he, he landed. And I think it just threw him somewhat. He did so well to hang on to it. I mean, there's the, the core strength and that, that train, training as a championship to a competitor coming into play. But uh, it was higher than some of the oops that we saw him stomp in the first qualifying round. Didn't have the stale fish grab. As we see Ian Crane again, just go for that similar grab on the, uh, the back end. But, yeah, yeah, definitely one of the highest airs we've seen in the event so far. The Airborne's really pushing these guys, especially in the final round, to go as huge as they can. This is the last chance to get into that final Big money up for grabs, props, bragging rights, the whole thing. And, you know, it's going to be cool to see what sort of variety these guys bring to their air game as well because they're all capable of, you know, I think Jack yesterday would definitely win the award for just throwing out as many different tricks as he could. Landing clean is important to these guys. Just ask pro surfer, pro skater, Kalani David. I mean, the goal at anyways, surfing is always trying to make it, like, clean. Like, you know, like skating, it, guys will keep redoing it and redoing it until they get it perfect. So I, I took that from skating and I, I, I really like when I ride out clean and do it everything clean. So, I mean, it's cool when you're like about to fall, like the full page are like, oh, he's gonna fall and then he sticks it. Like that's something different. But when you land all sloppy and it's, it's not the same. I feel like riding out clean and the judges really, really like take note of that. Cause it's a lot harder to like, be perfect the whole time and then every time you land your knees are like totunk you know so when you land perfectly the judges are like oh what he made that clean i feel like that's key yeah and that's uh, something that the judges have really been picking up on not just here in rebel airborne mm. it feels that's the case too with the championship tour event so i think it's the reason we keep seeing italo ferreira uh, felipe toledo they're, they're scoring so well because they stomp their airs cleaner than anyone they stomp it with authority, and, uh, you know, it's undeniable. Kalani's out there at the moment. Love having this guy in the mix. He did so well in France when he got the late call up, cracked the, uh, the final, and uh, looking to do the same here. Well positioned at the moment. In fourth spot on the leaderboard, and in this group sitting in second place. Mate, oh, you couldn't be more right. And I think what's important to mention here, Ronnie, is that the surfers in these airborns don't want the score if they do a you know, iffy landing. They're not there going, come on, that was actually pretty sick. They're there going, oh, that was rank. Shut me down. Here we go. Here is Kalani David loading up. There's the big alley-oop. Finds that transition. That's been his go-to move so far in the event. Uh, it's just, working beautifully. I think uh, some sections just uh, call for a certain type of aerial. And I think a couple of times now, Kalani's just found himself on waves that don't have oncoming sections. And the alley's a good option. Great option. And uh, I think yesterday we really saw the skate influence, the bowl influence coming out because Kalani really just understood exactly where to take off, where he wanted his nose and board facing as he came into the landing. And that is straight down so that he can continue with speed and no break in line. You can see there, just not even a wobble. Straight into the cutback. And that's what they want to see. But yeah, I mean, these guys, they do not want to be judged highly for an air that has uh, a dodgy landing, Rob. And I think you'd see most of them blow up if someone did get a good score for uh, something that wasn't 100%, as they say, stomped with authority. And I love that. I love that look. I love the energy that comes from someone who's really put it down. And Jack Freestone, he's chasing a 6.3 in order to get himself to the top of the leaderboard. Wow. Laying it all on the line. So going for something different now. He's got his, he's got some keeper scores. He's had a number of mates, Jack, and he's starting to push it, looking for something huge. I loved hearing Kelly Slater talk about Jack Freestone the other day. Uh, he, he was saying, you know, like, this guy is so technical in the air, and it's underrated. It's underrated how good he is, but 
Mm. You know, I think back to the Kai Neville movies, um, Plaster in particular, where Jack really just announced himself in that movie with just huge, huge aerials and just incredible makes. And I mean, he was a dual junior world champ, right? But that was, funnily enough, in the free surfing realm where his star really started to explode. Insane backside, uh, sorry, not backside air, but an insane oop there with the big grab, heel side rail, and um, nice to see them get off axis and inverted too. I think Especially we're going to see a lot of that today as Kalani David, who turned up late, but just seems to be finding more ways than anybody out there at the moment. Drifts that tail across the lip. More of a, a fin bus move rather than an air. But he's just warming to it. I feel like sometimes you, you go out there and, you know, the wave's actually not giving you the opportunity to launch something. And if you're desperate, if you're forcing it, it just won't come together. So riding a couple of waves and just doing a bit of your more traditional kind of surfing can really work in your favour and you can warm to that big, big aerial. Definitely. I think you're right. There's a, there's a lot of sort of pushing it today. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of end section bowls or anything like that. We're really just trying to stay in the pocket and use that steep part of the face to get the ramp to find the projection. But it was really funny. Um, uh, just the other day down at Bells Beach, we were talking with uh, Oki and Kelly Slater about aerials. And Kelly brought up Oki's famous air. It was an air that actually changed everything. As we see Dama Yasa here, Already with one pretty nice air reverse in the bag. There it is, Ron. He's just uh, going to stick to the surfing, hope for a section. But yeah, there was a film called Beyond Blazing Boards, and in it, Oki just hucks this giant air. Uh, I think in an in expression session. So, uh, you know, one of the first air shows, really. But back then, as we see Craney going for the burial. And so uh, this air was just heard around the world, you know. It was something that was crazy, and... Kelly being just a grommet at the time and having seen the movie said to uh, Matt Keckley, like, Did, were you there? Did you see that aerial? And Matt Keckley goes, I was actually in that expression session and I paddled in. And then Oki got on the mic and he said, everyone paddled in, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Because it was just so futuristic and unseen. It was right, right back in the days when, you know, the boards were thick and heavy and flat. And Oki just being the power monger that he is, is... Plenty David, another big oop attempt. But that's really where air started, you know. Big power moves out of the pocket, born out of frustration, hitting the lift too hard and actually feeling that release and, and discovering a whole new sensation in surfing. Here we go. Here's a replay of Kalani's last attempt. Got plenty of height, good release off the section, timed it well, just saw his board kind of flicker in that... That manoeuvre has sort of got away from him a little bit as a result. Wasn't able to get it back around and get in control for the landing. Prolong Damayasa up at the moment. He stopped the best air this morning, you'd probably say. Or the cleanest uh, landing. Jack Freestone potentially would have had the, the best number and a number that would go towards his position on the leaderboard, but he just had a, a, a grubby landing. It looks like uh, the judges have seen that, Ron, because... Freestone, uh, that aerial was huge, but he's not at the top of the leaderboard. Eli Hanneman's still up there. So here's the first one from Blarong. And, mate, if you go down around the beaches of Seminyak, you will see all the local boys, the rippers, just lighting it up with those things. Mason's just doing a bit of shadow boxing. <laughs> yeah, Rabbit one. Bartholomew style on the outside there. A little one-two to the lip. Just hanging for a section, though. Launch off, still sitting out there with no points as Kalani David forces a reverse out of the pocket there. Yeah, it's fun just looking back on the, the evolution of aerial surfing, like you said, uh, Mark Ocalupo in that heat. Kalani just shaking it out. Oh, we got a bit of a jellyfish on the, the wrist there or something. But, um, yeah, when someone launches a big air now, the other competitors don't paddle in. They no. paddle into a wave and try and go even bigger. It's, these guys have all stomped monster airs. They've all put together incredible clips. Kalani successful on this air, but I doubt it's going to go into his top two. No, he's definitely backed a couple of oops that will 
put him in good stead to make this final. One the other morning, or one the other afternoon, and one this morning. And the oop really is the air that a lot of these guys are saying is the go-to if you want maximum height, maximum huck. I think the biggest airs we've seen in Karamas over the years have been alley-oops. I don't think the biggest airs that we've seen in general have oh, been alley-oops. It's yep. just um, it, when you've got all that speed and uh, you can find a, a nice shoulder to launch into the wind off, you, you're going to get like good forward projection and it, it makes it easy to find a, a nice transition to land on. You get a long time to look at where you're coming down. It makes the most sense physically with technique. I think you're, as you're coming off the lip, your face is already looking at the tail of the board. It gives you so much time to figure out where your landing's going to be. As we see Kalani on the inside, throwing up a big air to Fakie. I mean, I just still am so blown away by that oop that uh, Noah Dean did in head noise. And so, oh, we see a crazy backside air there. He's got, a, he's got a move in mind, he Ian does. Crane. He wants to get this thing nailed. You can see it in his mind. He's, uh, he's, he's got the backside stale just on lock. He, it's his turn. He's approaching it like a skater too, isn't he? He's taken off on every wave, attempting that same air. And, uh, I mean, it'll be awesome if he can get it done because he'll feel pretty good about it. But at the same time, just keeping your options open when you're hammering down the line with a bit of speed is important too. Great angle there just to show, you know, how much projection there is out of the lip, how far these guys travel through the sky, and, and that gave us a great view of just how high the tail uh, of Ian's board was. But there's the uh, leaderboard. So I think uh, Kalani David might have replaced just his second number with a 3.73 earlier on because he did jump up to the, uh, the top of the, the group. Sitting in that third position, 16.07. If he wants to get to the top of the leaderboard, the, the whole group ahead of all 18 surfers, mm. or the other 17 out there in the draw, mm. and that's a 5.18 as we see Yago Dora warming up. Mm. Yeah, right. See Mason Ho out there, still smiling, even though uh, yet to lock an air into his scores. I mean, there's guys we just want to see fire up. Mason is one of them. <laughs> Uh, Chipper Wilson, I think he did really well the other afternoon, considering the uh, lack of opportunity he had. I'm really looking forward to seeing him hit the water again. There he is there, talking to uh, Aton and Matt Miola, another guy. Well, all three of those guys, so much to give. And just found it a little tricky the other afternoon. And those two guys on the right there, Chipper Wilson, Matt Miola, just freakish variation in their aerials just unbelievable they're, as far as grabs go there's no part of their surfboard that they can't reach for and while they're doing those grabs more often than not they're, they're fully inverted Miola loves the flips there's our current leader here at Rebel Airborne after the first qualifying round Eli Hanneman putting the wall paint on well, I think it's fair to sh say that, you know, the Maui boys are just, they're taking spins and flips into the next realm. I mean, they're doing for rotation and height. What, you know, the Santa Cruz and the San Clemente guys got, did for aerial surfing in the first place. You know, they, they really are on the forefront of uh, getting into sort of eight-foot surfers. Blair Ong here, he's got plenty of speed. These are the little inside reef curveballs that Kersey was talking about. No section, unfortunately. But yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, with the size of the waves they get and the wind coming up the face and just how hard they go. Uh, Miola, Leia, Hanneman, we're going to see some incredible stuff. And we could be heading into half-pipe territory, really. Bring it on. Well, Red Bull Airborne, it connects two worlds of surfing from Punk Rock, Eclectic Free Surfer to the Championship Tour. And at the moment, we've got a 16-year-old kid who... He's obviously a great aerialist, but it just feels like Eli Hanneman's going to get be competing on the championship tour soon uh, as well. But he is out in front with a, a fully inverted frontside air reverse. Really threw himself into it in that first qualifying round, and he just has the benefit of that big number locked in. So he'll be feeling freed up now. He's still just trying to improve on a 3.17 with his second score to ensure a place in the in the top six and get himself into the final. Uh, nothing's guaranteed, but it, it just really feels like Eli is going to have a shot at a Red Bull Airborne title here at, at Karamas. That's huge. And 
one thing we do see with uh, all prodigious talent is that they do start locking results in early on and uh, a big air show win will say a lot. It'll be a beautiful little jumping board. It puts him on the map in a way that, you know, dropping clips and all that sort of thing just won't do on a global scale. And especially outside of the WSL. So this is a huge opportunity for Eli. The quality of the air guys he's up against, CT and from the free surfing realm is monster. It doesn't get bigger than this. I mean, how would you go? When I was 16, I literally couldn't even look at pro surf in the eye because I was that terrified of them. They were just gods to me. Oh, for sure. Maybe taking him on. Yeah, it's huge though, but he just has a steely nerve and definitely looks focused at the moment on a big finish. 17 minutes remaining here at Red Bull Airborne. This is the second qualifying round. Group one in the water. Solomon Buggy from Karamas, we're here for Red Bull Airborne. We've got the second qualifying round underway with Group 1 out in the lineup. And what an incredible lineup it is. Uh, Ronnie Blakey with my brother Vaughan, and we're also joined by uh, another brother, Julian Wilson. Morning, boys. Great yeah, to see you, mate. See. Fantastic Always. to have you in here because, uh, as everyone knows, Julian is great at ears, but also has a, a big skate background. So, uh, Jules, it's fun to see these guys taking. That, that way of thinking out into the lineup now, especially with the variations of the grabs, it's been a lot of fun to watch. 100%. It's skate park conditions out there this morning. The wind's not there, but the lip's a lot more predictable when it's like this. So Crane, I think, is really trying to like throw something different at it this morning so far that I've been watching, but it's, uh, it's going to be a good morning for the boys. Here we go, Mason Ho looking to get his first score on the oh board. My and goodness. he sticks it. That was monster. What an air. That was big. He's been searching for this one for a long time, Vorno. Oh, we have been waiting for this guy to ignite. And check this out. Square off the bottom. Look at the front foot just drifting up the nose. A huge rope into the fakey. And it's as smooth as, look at the technique, he gets down low, swivels it around, almost a little cheetah five as he rides out of it. I'm loving that. Oh, a bit of tap dancing on the way out. But so uh, much personality, but like, my, that was unreal. That's one of the biggest airs we've seen so far. Jules, he had nothing after that first qualifying round, so really the pressure was on to stick something in order to get himself to the top of the leaderboard. Is this going to get him up into the top six? That's my favourite air so far, for sure. I love the way that he came around into the bowl, squared it up off the bottom, and then obviously projected him straight up. Oh, what and about this bloke? Yeah. Animal. Jay Davies can't ride out of that one. But, yeah, it was yeah. Uh, in, an exceptional air and might rival Eli Hanneman for the best air of the event. Just so high, but he was inverted, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, he's talking about it to his mates now. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, the only thing better than landing a good air is telling everyone how good it was. <laughs> hey, Mason, you got eight cameras on it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> he's, got, he's got the visor up, though, Jules. Uh, you know, is that a factor here at Karamas? We don't talk about it often, but in the mornings, kind of glary. I think the way that he approached the lip here was almost part strategy to avoid the glare. If he if he was racing down the line at a, a shallower bottom turn into a, an air there, I'm sure the glare would be much harder to deal with. But here, he just so did that so well. And that's what's really cool about this wave is you get those bit wider ones. They horseshoe back at you, and if you square it up off the bottom, you can like really send it on the bowl there. And he just did that so well. The yeah. body positioning, the way he was able to sort of go vertically off the bottom, project off the lip, and then twist his body from under the board to back over it for the landing. That that's outrageous. Like the and also just the bottom turn leading into it. So many airs you don't see come. Oh, there it is! He's got it. Oh, oh wow. how good is that? How good is that going to feel? Because that, to me, was the full-on skate mode, though. He, he's been attempting this the whole time he's been out there. Hasn't thought about another air. Take us through it, Jules. It's so technical. It's, um, I mean, I think there's only, maybe, I think I've seen Jack Freestone go for a couple of those, but he's the only, I think Crane's the only guy I've seen complete that air. So it's, um, Whoa. Oh, the boys are starting to light up now. Yeah. The sun is out. And they're really starting to stick these big airs. Freestone with a monster reverse out of the pocket. Clean rotation, but we're expecting a solid number for this man. Nice big stalefish grab. 
That's really clean grab too, wasn't it? Definitely the most technical air so far, and one of the one of the most technical airs in the game. That was insane. So we're expecting a solid number. 593 is what Mason Ho was rewarded. So double that up and he moves way up the leaderboard. Maybe didn't get a, a lot of credit though just because he didn't complete much of the rotation in the sky. Here's Freestone's effort. And that's uh, really a trademark move for, for Jack. And it's a good one to have on lock, isn't it, Jules, at a place like Karamas where sometimes you don't find an oncoming ramp. Absolutely. I think... Um the more he goes to that, the more deadly he's going to be. And um, he's got it on lock, so I think he's warming up for his heat right now. <laughs> yeah, and that's <laughs> going to be an exceptional heat to watch unfold on the championship tour. Jack's going up against Italo. Italo won this contest on the Gold Coast and pulled himself out of the event, just uh, nursing a bit of an ankle injury. But I did get the feeling that that's going to give Jack a great opportunity to get his strike rate up in order for that exchange. He certainly landed more airs than anyone already. He has some special memories out here and he's thrown a lot of variation at this wave with his airs. And I think if he backs himself, it'll be a really good heat. So 10 and a half minutes to go, Vaughan, and big numbers starting to roll through. I was just thinking about the momentum uh, within these air shows, you know, the, the airborne especially. You've got the best guys in the world at doing airs all in a group out there. When someone stops one, like we saw Mace do, Jules, there's a lot of fire under everyone out there. Do you just feel that energy start to lift? Oh, yeah. Kalani at, David there almost pulling a huge hoop. Look at the way everyone's lifted, like Jack on the next wave and Crane. That was like, was that three waves all back to back? It was yep. just like... And that's the way a lot of the free surfs go at waves like this. It's like someone clicks one and then next wave, the guy just does whatever they can to to land it. Here we go again. Uh, nice. Oh, beautiful. Thought he was going to get the big rebound there happening for us, it. but didn't quite happen. This for Mason one looks Hope. really good right here. He's got to get going. Jay Davies. Had a, a three-point ride from that first qualifying heat. He's not going to get much out of this one. Went for a triple kick flip. <laughs> Didn't quite bring it down. Um, how does still, this... still waiting for Krano's number to drop. And I think the, the panel are probably having a really good look at that one. He didn't lock, log any scores in that first qualifying round. He's keeping busy out here at the moment, Vaughn. Launching again. Nice, nice. clean air. Love that. Nice little indie. Very tidy work. And he's still looking for more on the inside. And here's a guy who, as far as his strike rate was going for this event, was having a shocker. And he's just showing in a small amount of time how, how good he is. I think those two airs are going to lock him straight into the top six. No problem. 100%. Oh, that backside in is so clean. And you'll hear this a lot. I mean, all the surfers in this event love a nice, big, clean, straight air. Yeah, it's backside, I guess, melon grab, new grab. So good. I love how he was so committed to going to his hardest air first. And as soon as he locked that one in, he's like, oh, I've got backside straight air on lock. I'll do that in the next wave and, and build the house and get myself up there into the top six. But he's, um, yes, yeah, on the back end too, he's doing so well. Strategy-wise, it's interesting just seeing where these guys are at. I mean, Ian obviously serves a, a lot of QS events and has starting to collect some serious results, but he just had a all or nothing attitude in the to get that first big number. I mean, he's been attempting it ever since he pulled the jersey on for the first qualifying round. So he, he got that and the backup's gonna be solid too. And he's already jumped up into the, the top six here. Quite a bit of movement happening here on the leaderboard, not just in this group as Mason takes flight. He's desperate to find a, another make. I love how consistent it is for the boys. They can just wave after wave. Comes in pulses here at Karamas, doesn't it? And uh, it started off a little quiet, but really start to, uh, to come in with some real consistency now. And as a result, we're getting uh, a lot of solid ramps. We're seeing some good airs made. What's, uh, what's your favorite air at the moment? Jules, what do you what do you love to see more than anything? Uh, I love <clears throat> I love height, a lot of height. It almost doesn't really matter what variation comes into it. If you use a lot of height and use the transition really well, that's I get super excited watching that stuff. A wave like this is 
one of the best ways in the world for that kind of stuff. He goes for a long. Can't quite uh, keep control of that one. And it looks like Freestone and Ian up at the moment, splitting the peak. Both unsuccessful on that occasion. There's a flurry of action in the middle yeah. there. I mean, we've talked about Karamas a lot as uh, being one of the ultimate ramps in the whole world. Julian, you've had like some of the best clips ever out here, man. I just, how good is it in terms of like lining up that end bowl and just absolutely throwing it? Yeah, well, I think the beauty of this wave is when you watch these guys, they want, if you get that chip shot from deep, it slingshots you into the one of the greatest air sections you can find. Um, but also what's really, what's re really cool about this wave is you may get fed into that section, but how you commit to landing it is half the battle. I mean, everybody can send it up, but committing to bringing it down on such, it's a pretty powerful wave and a really steep transition. And almost if you're too late to land and the wave's broken, you're, you've committed yourself to something that can end up pretty terrible. Um, <laughs> so I think knowing what it takes to land something super, you know, high or really lofty out here, um, the guys kind of really respect that, you know, when something is stomped and, and understanding just it is a pretty technical wave when you when you break it down, even though you do get a lot of ramps. Let's give credit to uh, some of the great aerialists that are, have kind of led the way and, and also influenced you uh, above the lip. Who are, who are your early influences and who are you looking at now to get motivation to, to go to that, that kind of height? Um, early, the guys that inspired me are early. Um, Love watching Bruce not always make his airs, but send him as high higher than anyone just about, especially over at HTs, and um, really enjoyed watching that. Um, that was kind of the, the generation that was really influencing me when I was starting to do some airs. Um, yeah, I'd have to say Bruce was at, at the top of the list. And, um, and now, I guess all the guys that are competing in this event, it's so cool to have them um, kind of come in and intertwine with us and, you know, lighten things up and express, you know, just what the potential of some of these waves are. And um, we don't always get the opportunity when we're competing, but I think these guys are going <coughs> to inspire us to, you know, open up a bit and go pretty big. I think Noah Dean is and off watching his last clip and the alley he did at North Point and how technical he is and how good he is at skateboarding. I think he's, oh, that was pretty cool. Um, I think he's at the forefront of aerial surfing and, and creating, you know, I think he's the kind of guy that could come out with something that nobody's seen before. And I think when you have a surfer like that and you think, it, the unexpected is going to happen. It's like it really is a huge draw card, and I get really excited to follow uh, someone like that. I think um, I'm excited to see what Noah can do out here this morning, and I'll enjoy watching. And for um, sure, he's definitely at the top top of the game. I think at the moment, it feels like he is uh, warming towards maybe the biggest big spin that we've ever seen. Uh, it, it just feels like he's got the move. Done. He's landing on tricky transitions now, and if he finds a really big section, it feels like we could see him do something huge. But the Gorkin flip, I don't right. see it too often. Aaron Cormican came up with this move probably 20 years ago now, and uh, we've seen it in competition a couple of times. How good was that landing? A little so tailbone sick. off the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's sick. starting to flare up, Ian Crane. In fact, so much so that he's moved to the top of the leaderboard, not just the top of this group. So he gave us the stale fish reverse and threw a straight air our way and now the, the Gorkin flip for a 5-2-3 and he is out in front he's so he's jumped Eli Hanneman. From the bottom of the leaderboard to the very top in one heat. That's what the Airborne series allows you to do and we've just seen it happen and Ian Zero to hero. Everyone yesterday was freaking out. Even though we had no makes, everyone in the competitors area was just so stoked on those backside stale reverses uh, the big straight air, of course, just an awesome one to watch. And now a Gorkin flip. He's a big lump of a human, but throwing himself around like that too, Ian Crane. He's probably uh, about the same height as Jay Davies. Not too many people are as thick, but it just goes to show you how agile some of these guys have become. 
And Noah Dean is a huge, huge guy as well. It's, it says, like, you know, I, I don't know, in, in days gone by, maybe being a little lighter was, was good for Ayers, as we see Freestone, a big clean oop from him, staying in the mix here. It, it feels like Jack, though, has attempted that alley -oop a number of times now, and it's just Ian Crane's versatility that's got him to the top of the leaderboard. You know, he's throwing three really solid airs, uh, all very different at us, and as a result, he is the current leader here at Red Bull Airborne. I think, I think this morning, with the wind being super light, almost not even there at all, it really lends to technical airs, um, because, you know, there's not really the unpredictability of the wind hitting your board. I think someone like Chipper, Noah, I think Noah could do a finger flip or something, you know, that you know, it's never been done. Uh, just with the wind being so light and the sections being so nice and the swell not being too big, this is pretty ideal. Like, it's really user-friendly and I think uh, the technical airs will shine uh, this morning and Crane's sort of proving that so far. Well, Mason Ho, he needed that number. He was looking for a backup to go with his previous ride. He's really hoping that it's enough to lock him into a, a top six finish. That's what everyone's chasing in this second qualifying round. You want to get yourself into the final six, and then you can go out there in the final, and it's just going to be that one big air that wins the money. And everyone's starting to make their way in. Julian, always awesome to have you in here for a chat, and especially when we've got Rebel Airborne unfolding, mate. Best of luck in the, uh, the event. How are you feeling? Can't wait. I'm excited. I really enjoy watching these guys surf. Enjoy talking to you boys in the booth. And you guys <laughs> are doing a great job. Car Joycey. Yeah, Have right a great day. <laughs> awesome, mate. Thank you very much. Well, stay with us. It was Ian Crane absolutely dominating that second qualifying heat. And when we return, we'll bring in Kaipo Guerrero for a chat. You're watching Rebel Airborne here at Karamas, and things are lighting right up. at Karamas 4, the Red Bull Airborne. We've already gone through group number four, group number five on the way. Kaipo Guerrero along with my good friends, Vaughn Blakey and special guest star, Matt Bemrose, Bemi. So good to have you, mate. Yeah, boys, how exciting is this? I mean, woke up this morning, Kersey said last night to the boys, we're looking like we're gonna run about 6.30 in the morning and they're just like, what? 6.30? What is airless <laughs> guys? Don't wake up before nine o'clock in the morning. That, uh, gentlemen's hours for the Airborne guys, but they motivated early this morning. And uh, you can talk us through what happened in group number four that we kicked off the morning with Vaughn. Well, I mean, Ian Crane went absolutely loony. Yesterday could not stick anything, but uh, all the signs were there. And the talk, as we see Noah Dean just tuck into a little pit on the inside. He'll get a big fat duck egg for that. <laughs> Didn't get the memo at all, right? But um, everyone was just could see it coming with uh, Ian Crane yesterday. They were loving the stale reverse, and he, he finally nailed it this morning, and he, then he backed it up with a Gorkin flip. Then he did a nice big straight air as well. And, uh, man, it, it was just like game on, and he went from zero to hero. He was coming dead last on the leaderboard, and uh, then he went straight up. And this is Eli Hanneman, who in the first round nailed... Uh, well, the best air of the day and was lead on top of the leaderboard and he's straight back into it here, Bemi, with a, a beautiful little oop straight onto the backside, fakey float nearly, and rides out of it without even a kink. I mean, this guy here is so consistent. His completion rate in the air is so high. He's out there with all the older boys and they're turning around after every wave, looking back, just going, are you kidding me? Full Prodigy out of Lahaina, Maui, Eli Hanneman, and on the scratch here, this is going to be Eric Geiselman looking for a ramp and goes rampless. Hey, boys, let's remind everyone, if you're just joining, about the format here. This is the qualifying round. We have 18 surfers going out in two times in two different groups. Out of that 18, we cut it down to six for the final round. How do we get there? We have scores. Your top wave score doubled 
And then you have the backup score. We have a leaderboard format. So out of all 18 surfers, the top six with the top numbers moving on into that final round. Once we get to that final round, it's going to be for all the marbles. Biggest air, highest score, most technical air, biggest number wins. And as we look to our judges, we got three judges. So every number counts from our expert panel led by Shane Beshin. How sick is that? And I love that when we get to the final, it's just about the one big air, the big monster. Every single person here wants to nail something special to grab that cash, get the bragging rights. This is unreal. I mean, today, this is the last chance. The, the final round is your last chance to get in there. And you can do it, Kaipo. We just saw Ian Crane, as I said, go from dead last, no makes. And same with Mason Ho. He went from uh, zero yesterday straight up into that top six at the moment, or is he just outside it? One, two, three, four, five, six. I think he might be scratching in. But he's going to uh, he's going to do well to hold on to that because there's a few rounds to go and some talent coming. And as we look to our judging criteria, completion, commitment, and degree of difficulty, innovation and progression, style is going to be a big factor, guys. We want to see those airs boned out as well as amplitude. How high you get is going to grow the number from our expert panel. We saw Shane Beshin talk to all the boys yesterday, and they had a lot of questions. He was able to uh, clarify that. You know, is a small technical air going to score higher than a big straight air? He wants to see some amplitude. Finn McGill looking into some of the glare and uh, just comes up too late. Reef Hazelwood. Whoa, goes for the big straighty. <clears throat> I mean, looking at this on your back end as being a goofy footer, it looks really hard for those guys, but like you said before, Ian Crane really made it happen as we see Geiselman up and running. I mean, he's so fun to watch. He's just his attitude <laughs> on the beach is fun. And look, he's having so much fun out there. And that's what I love about this Airborne series, what uh, Josh Curls brought to this tour. And he's bringing all these guys to three events this year. It, it's brought that real fun element. Uh, and when the guys, you know, they're down the event here every day. And then after the event goes, they really send it as well. Like they're sending it in the ocean. They're sending it at night. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. As soon as uh, Kersey said the call's at 6.30, they went, all right, we'll set your alarms for 3 o'clock in the morning because <laughs> that's what time we're going to go to bed. <laughs> Another look at Geiselman. <laughs> Tries the alley-oop, gang, and uh, that's not going to be a big number for Geiselman. From New Smyrna, comes, comes from a great surfing family. Greg, dad, shapes Orion surfboards. L younger brother Evan just took out a second place at a QS event over in Chiba, the Chiba Open, and mom Gina rips as well. Oh, wait a minute, we got our infield reporter, Binzies, with uh, Ian Crane, who's on top of the leaderboard right now. Damn straight down here with Mason Ho's hero, Ian Crane himself, and you were just saying you've, uh, you've never led anything in your life. How exciting is this? Yeah, I'm in the lead somehow. It's weird. I don't know how to feel. <laughs> Mate, run us through your approach there because you just looked like you had your eyes on that one maneuver and you went for it again and again and again. How satisfying is it when you finally stick it? Fuck, I like, kind of stuck it. Like, I don't know. I landed. I was like, fuck, at least I landed something. But like, I kind of thought like, it was almost like lame a little bit because I want to do like a real big one. But I guess it's kind of sick and then... Hopefully I make the final and can do a bigger one. <laughs> well, it's going to take uh, a lot of incredible surfing to knock you from the final. So what do you do from here? I don't know. Just sit and wait and hope fucking everyone falls and I make the final. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, good luck with that. Yeah, yeah. It'll be good. Uh, I absolutely <laughs> love that. An <laughs> honest interview. I hope everyone <laughs> falls so I can make the final. Yeah, you know guys think that, right? You, I mean, on any level, come on. I mean, you're a coach. Athletes, what do you think? Like, is it cool? Yeah, it's... I, I, I didn't hear that question because I was just thinking about that interview. That was <laughs> absolutely all-time laughing. And Binzi, I'll tell you what, talk about being hungover. I've never seen him not hungover. True. Has he, has he seen him on tape that he's, <laughs> he's all white and kind of, his eyes are always glistening bright red? This is <laughs> normal look. So but, what, I, what I was saying is I thought it was funny that Ian – I'm not funny. I thought it was really refreshing that he said, hey, I hope those guys all fall, fall so that I make the final. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a deep down. These guys are as competitive as anyone else. They want this big time. And I mean, and in waves like this, is there a better platform for it? Not at all. I love the honesty, fun. But these guys also do have the skate mentality of when someone sticks something huge, they'll start banging their boards and making noise and splashing water and getting everyone juiced on it. Because really, the Airborne is about the biggest 
most progressive, most stylish air you can do. And every one of these guys appreciates it. And I mean, I've said it before, but I just want to like say it again because none of these guys want the score for an air that they don't rate. None of them want to be holding up yeah. a trophy going, well, it's, that air was rank. Yeah. It stunk. Yeah. It's, it's all about peer approval. As we look to the leaderboard, you can see the red cut line. Oh. Mason Ho in sixth place, just barely going to make the uh, final round if the numbers stay the same. But these gentlemen in the water have something to say about that. Geiselman. He was sensational the other day. I could not believe that a guy of his size was able to just whip these really hyper speed rotations uh, a little corrupt flip, right? Yeah. Hypo, and a little ode to our, our contest director, Josh Kerr. And he was doing it on waves that were, you know, just over knee high and really getting projections. So uh, we're loving Eric in this format. He's still in that top six on the leaderboard as well. And yesterday I was speaking to him, he's actually doing with an injury. He's got cartilage floating in his knee. He's got on his shoulder. He tried to air the other day and it, it split one of his uh, muscles in his arm. So this is Geiselman? Yeah, Geiselman. Wow. He's, he's actually sending it, and he's doing it right now with a bung knee. Hey, you know why? Because Eric Geiselman is an excellent skateboarder as well, and with skateboarding comes collateral damage. Oh, and there's the judges. They're the judges that just come down the beach. Those are, those are my <laughs> friends, Benny. I know every single one of those ducks. I got to, to meet them the other day. Yeah. They're a great group of fowl, and um, they just... <laughs> <laughs> they're up for a good time. I'm surprised that they're up this early in the morning because, you know, they like to crack on through the evening. Yeah, don't talk to Bemi about the wildlife in Bali, Kaipo. I don't know if you heard, but he was up at the monkey forest the other day and a monkey just went absolutely skits and beat him on the head. You're not supposed to look him in the eye, Bemi. Well, I figured that out a bit late. And uh, this one was looking at me and I was like, oh, what's he looking at? And he turned and just attacked and got jumped from about 10 feet away, landed on my back and then came up on the top of my head and then all of a sudden I felt his jaws over the top of my, of my skull and went, oh, this is hectic. He thought and I was trying were... to shake him and he was making these noises and I was going, he's going to bite down here. Yeah. It's all over. He didn't break skin, I hope. Well, I did, he didn't, but I've been frothing it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> the froth song That's always with, there. The froth song with Bemi and, the, and one of the frothiest surfers that we know, one of the most entertaining surfers in the entire world, is down in the Red Bull area with Binzi. Yeah, cheers, boys. As uh, hilarious as Bemi's monkey story is, we'd rather talk to Mason Ho. How are you, mate? How fun is it out there this morning? It's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Run us through what just happened in that heat. You're sitting sixth. That's kind of sketchy for the final. Super sketchy. I'm blown. If I'm sixth, I ain't getting to the final. Um, I think it's like one of the funnest days right now. So like these next two heats, the boys are going to be blasting some fun airs. I'm, I'm stoked I got the land one. And uh, talk to us about Karamas. You put in a fair bit of time in Indonesia. You love this joint. Yeah, I mean, I do love Indonesia. And um, I do, I did love Karamas a lot. Or <laughs> When I was younger, I used to surf out here like every single day. But just for the last couple of years, I haven't really made it up this way too much. I always go past here or a little come up short. But um, yeah, no, it's been fun. I was all excited when I heard, or when I had a chance to surf it. I was like, what? I get to go out there with like maybe a few people and surf it again. And yeah, the wave's better than I, I kind of like forgot how good it was. Happy to be back. And uh, you're out here on a trip with Mick and Vaughn Blakey, who's in the booth. What have you been up to? Just shooting for Rip Curl? Yeah, Vaughn. Um, and Mick, if you're watching. Uh, <laughs> he missed you at Cape Fear. <clears throat> oh yeah, Cape Fear. Oh, I blew it. I should have, yeah, I wanted to be over there too, but I was kind of all excited, posted up over here, having a good time. So I just hung out and then, um, what else? Oh yeah, Mick's been telling me to get down here and practice some airs, so, you know, I didn't, and it almost showed I didn't do an air during the whole event, but I finally landed one. There you go, and what were you and Mick up to? Shooting for Ripco? Yeah, we were just shooting like a search. I mean, I don't know what I'm allowed to say, but I'll tell you guys everything. We're shooting a search segment, and it's probably gonna be one of the best ones ever. We were like, thought we were in the 80s, just going all the 80s search spots, and we scored all of them as good as they get. There you go. And you just declared Ian Crane your hero. Who else in this event do you love? Oh, I mean, I love every guy in here. Like, I could just look left or right. Like, there's Lee Wilson right there. He's one of my heroes. Noah Dean's out in the water over there. Chippa Wilson's right behind me. Matt Mule. It's like all my heroes. It's literally all. You could look anywhere and it's heroes. Just like Mate Woody right here. It's just everyone. But I just... 
Damn, Bob. Well, well, you're everyone's hero too, mate, so we love having you here. Let's see you in all of them, mate. Hey? Yes, Vince, invite me. <laughs> you're invited. All right, back up to you guys. All right, so Vinzy with the official call on Mason yeah, Hope. I love, I, I, you know what, Vaughn, not only do I love Mason Ho's surfing and his airs, I love every once in a while during the interview when he just like gives the down the barrel blue steel look at the crew. He's one of a kind, mate. And uh, well, he's he's not one of a kind. He's from a family of, of just originals. And this guy is dead set, keeping the bloodline so pure for the love of surfing. Uncle D, Uncle Mike, Coco. The, to me, this is a family that just lives and breathes pure surfing. And having had the opportunity to hang out with Mace a lot over the last few years, everything about the way that that guy surfs has a connection to the past and the future and the moment. He's living in three different dimensions at once. <laughs> so I'm not joking. And I really think that comes from his dad. I think, uh, you know, Mike was just one of those guys who knew how to surf with so much personality. And watching Mason take that lineage and bring it forward and project it into the future as well just fills my heart with joy man i love hanging with him i love surfing with him he does it with nothing but happiness in his soul it's the best one of the most entertaining surfers in the world this heat in the water has uh, has gone a little slow but looks but like we've got some lines coming through here kites what do we got who do we got remember it's gentlemen rules on the priority so these guys hopefully taking turns. Oliver Kurtz. Yeah, this guy is epic. I saw uh, some clips of him doing bomb drops off this jetty over in the States somewhere. And, uh, you know, it had a big cage around it. He was, uh, I think he was breaking more than a few laws getting out there. And he was just <laughs> stomping these great big uh, acid drops down onto these breaking waves, which has become kind of a fun little novelty yep. for guys to try out. I love the acid drop. But yep. you know what? The acid drop goes back to we had some skate history conversation the in the air only can be done on the backhand yep. only on a backside wall your trailing hand on your toe edge invented by Dwayne Peters for his uh, truck company truck sponsor independent at the time Dwayne Peters also invented the acid drop as well wow. so we tied oh, wow. that all together Let's first see. guy to do an acid drop yeah yeah Roll straight into the bowl the culture of naming tricks is something that I'm really into. I yeah. love it. I love it. I love it how they form in yep. skate and snow and I love it how they've also formed in surfing. We've got our own version and, and cultural attachment to the way that tricks get named. You know, I mean the, the obvious one is probably uh, the corrupt flip. We've seen that named yep. after Josh Kerr and we've also seen things like the rodeo uh, and the Gorkin. So three guys who have a name, a trick named after them that probably have something similar in skate and snow. But these are ours. These are the guys who brought it to us. And so I love the way that we're able to sort of claim that as well. And speaking of trips, tricks, I think you caught up with Eric Geiselman with a conversation. Oh, about my head, would you? Tricks. <laughs> <laughs> let's, hear what, what, let's hear what Eric had to say. <laughs> it's cool, though, because this wave, you can literally like go to any trick in the book, and it's possible on this wave. So that's what's cool. I think you're going to see a lot of like just crazy elevated off access rotations, full rotations, bigger straight airs, proper. Everything is just going to be proper, you know? And the everybody in the vents banger. Like everybody is a there's no there's no like cookie cutter heat. Yeah. You know what I mean? So All right, and there he is <laughs> on the white jersey flexing in his cut sleeve uh, jersey here at the Red Bull Airport. Hey, uh, thanks for lending me your head buffer for that interview. <laughs> <as well. laughs> How shiny was that thing? <laughs> Hey, speaking of tricks, uh, I was hanging with Finn McGill last night, and he was showing me a trippy trick he's been working on. Oh, and what is it? Of oh, he, he said he's going to try it this heat, actually. So let's see if he gets the opportunity. Um, uh, it's basically an alley-oop. He goes up, and he switches in the air stance and flips it around, and he almost made it. And he, I grabbed his phone and went to show Noah. He goes, no, 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 don't show Noah. I said, why? He goes, well, he's going to steal it from me. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so that would be like a body varial alley-oop. Yeah. Just to make a long name yeah. out of a, yeah. out of a and, short And trick. I said, what do you want to call it? And he goes, well, he almost died by in the hazelnut when he's at the age of five. And he goes, I'm going to call it the hazelnut. I like it. I was like, oh, okay. Own it. Yeah. Make your own names. Yep. Just don't do a frontside indie. No. Never. No, that'll never That's happen. It's impossible, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Unless you took off switch. Oh, no, it wouldn't nah, happen. it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I have my skater friends who are kind of been stoked on 
just correcting that. It's just little pet peeves. If you're gonna take, if you're gonna bite state names, you might as well acknowledge it. I love real. Chris Cote always tries to spark that up on social media too. He loves it. Doesn't he, he loves it. Yeah, but he goes with the degrees and stuff. Which, yeah. Like whatever on the degrees. I don't think you can measure the degrees. I like just to say full rotation, double rotation, revert out. We're Eli right. Hanelman. What's he got? Bango. Bingo. And that was a full rotation. Wow. That right was on command. Epic. Oh, he hit that. It was just cushy landing right out into the flats. He goes, Noah Dean. What's he got? He's just looking for a section. Choppy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little Ollie to fakey. But I think the other day, uh, round one, Finn McGill actually dropped probably the coolest air of that first day. He did a little lean grab to tailbone and it was so quick that we kind of missed it and uh it wasn't until later on that we were talking about it in the Cadiz area everyone was losing it yeah over that really nice little variation and we'll get to see it again in some highlights packages and whatnot but that's the kind of thing that we want to see but let's have a look at this Bemi, what about this? How much does he just line up that section? I mean, Eli Henneman does him in his sleep. He, he's so consistent now. That's what I said before. The guy's completion rate in the air is, is absolutely outstanding. And, I mean, before this event started, people were going, well, he could take this out from the big boys. Oh, the just because of his strike rate. The prodigy. Here he is. Eli Hanneman and just puts it down. Now, that's a full rotation. I'm not going to give it a number, but I'm going to call that a clean, stomped, Full rotation, Benny. One thing that the aerial guys always say, you've got to let go before you land of the rail. Yep. You've got to let go. And you, if you notice there, right before he landed, it was a smidgen. He just let go. So I wonder if those judges did notice that because that is key. Speaking that's, to Yago and those style. guys, they said you have to that's let go. Style. Yeah, and skateboarding is the opposite. You don't want to do early grabs. In surfing, you don't want to do basically late grabs or, or just like grip the board all the way into the flats because, you know, that's going to... Yeah. Decrease the degree of difficulty yep. and the style factor on there, kind of landing, you know, three point tripod, not as high as just stomping it, standing upright, and uh, riding through. And the front side air rev, uh, even a full rotor, it's a very, very common air. It's, uh, it's something that a lot of the guys in this event aren't really looking to all as an air that's going to win. They're not seeing it as that, but I mean, you can't deny just how cushy that was. Yeah. Had the height, had the speed, had the distance, had the landing. It's ticking a lot of boxes, but I'll be amazed if we see an air rev. So the leaderboard's changed, guy. Eli Hanneman's gone to the top of the leaderboard. Ian Crane's dropped to the bottom. Mason Ho, you can see the red cut line, still hanging on for a hope to... I want to see Mason in, in the final round. We'll see. He's he's in it right now, but we got a lot of surfing to do. Here's Geiselman. Got a ramp. Big front side air rotator. Little cushy landing. Is that a make, Bemi? It will, I, I say it's a make. He rode out in front of the foam there. I mean, I know the CT judges on a, on a CT, they're very critical on that, but I mean, Beshin and those guys upstairs, they're, they're going to say that's a make. I mean, Vorno? I think they might, but just knowing the air guys, anything that they don't feel like they've stomped really hard, like any sort of bobble in the whitewash, they, they, all, they almost throw it away. They don't care for it. Right, let's take a look in slow-mo because you can see the amplitude, the grab, the release, beautiful. Has to like stomp on the tail there, but I, I'm gonna go with a make on this one. It's just definitely because a make. He had control. 100% it's a make, no doubt about that. My call on it is that uh, if those guys were judging themselves, they wouldn't care for that. Yeah, they'd want a little more in the flats. You think, That's but. right. But I think that also that, you know, you've got to get a couple of scores if you want to get through these rounds. So we saw Mason Ho at the tail end of his last round in the group there. He actually just took off on an insider and did a nice little air reverse just to get his backup score in place to make that top six. Because without it, he wouldn't be in the top leader group at the moment. So there's a little bit of QS thinking going on here. Well, you still got to, I mean, it's still a competition. At the end of the day, we can be as cool as we wanted to all, you know, to all the rest of the bros and stuff, but there's only going to be six of the 18 bros making it to the final. The other thing is, Noah Dean, if uh, we look at him, he's sitting on an eight-point ride. He, he only needs a pretty average air to get himself up in that top section, so we really want to see him find a, a big bowl on the inside as well. Well, Noah Dean, he's not 
he's not just going to be one of those guys to drop a little score just to get through. He's going to go big or nothing. Yeah. There's no, like, just get a score just to get through. That's What's the interesting thing you can tell us about Noah Dean? You guys are from the same company. I mean, Noah is an absolute animal. He just, he goes, <laughs> what he's going for there. He, look, you see, he's looking on his face just there. He's bummed. He's absolutely bummed. But, I mean, Noah is one of those guys, he's just going to go as hard as you can every single time. I mean, and this morning, rocking up, he's on the back of my scooter, he goes, he goes, if I told my skate guys, or my skate mates, that we were going to have a skate comp at 6.30 in the morning, they would laugh their head off. He goes, <laughs> <laughs> no one, no one skates before 10 o'clock in the morning. No, no. And he, he goes, someone's going to break their legs doing this stuff. But yep. except it's CT guys and the, the, the guys that compete, they can do it all day long because they're used to this. Yeah, I think when, uh, when the first heat paddled out, Josh Kerr was down there and we did an interview with him and he went and then they had five out of the six guys turn up and he was like, five out of six air guys at six in the morning? I'm, that's a win. <laughs> <laughs> There's our judges. Three on the panel. Everyone counts. Let's Shane Beshin leading as our expert analyst and an aerial pioneer. But Shane Beshin got that influence as an aerial pioneer from my man Martin Potter. I just want to shout out to Potts as we take a look here. McGill, Nada, maybe another chance at a ramp, and he's just going to do a little vogue for us. Finnegan, Thunders, looking enthused. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> well, we heard Julian talk about a finger flip earlier on. Streak that we might see come out later on. <laughs> Yeah, Finn was just rattled, didn't get an opportunity then. You know, he really wanted it, uh, but he didn't get it. He'll get it the next time. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's Red Bull Airborne. Stick around for more. We are live from the bottom of the earth. This is Red Bull Cape Fear. I mean, this is as rugged and rough as surf breaks go. Check out yeah. the Tazzy, you know? Cape Fear, yeah. full of haunted houses there. <laughs> what a great Red Bull event, Danny. Incredible. I absolutely love that thing. And one of our riders was in it, Marty Paradisus. I mean, imagine that was your home break. Ship turns. Growing up, having shippies is your home break. And you know, you're just going to be an animal when you go up. Every one of those Tazzy guys, those local guys, they're all as crazy as it comes. Vaughn, you must have a little Tazzy in you because you're a little wild as yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Not, I don't, but um, I really admire those guys down there, mate. They are absolute lunatics in the best possible way. Uh, as we see Reef flying along the inside, throws the big hat. Epic year, Reef, but I just love that comp too because those guys, uh, for the same reasons that getting the air guys here amongst the CT, having those guys surfing against the best big wave surfers, the best out there, and showing what they can do up against them is incredible. And I also was loving that Nathan Florence took it out because, man, you know, it must be tough sometimes having a big brother just whose shadow you live in. Ronnie, <laughs> Ronnie knows what it's like. Ronnie knows. <laughs> but Nathan Florence, though, he's been coming on. He's had a great couple of seasons on the North Shore. He's been doing these strike missions. Nathan Florence is showing that he's got as much talent as his brother, John John. And I'm, I'm joking about that, of course, because Nathan is a surfer in his own right who we have just been seeing at Pipeline for the last few years, sending it. And his big wave game is just in another realm. And I noticed the other day, I was watching a heat out here with John John in it and watching Nathan on my phone. So both guys, different oceans, wow. winning heats, and it was just incredible. It was like a Florence yeah. sandwich. It was <laughs> amazing. And we were all in the middle of it. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it was ben, just incredible. Benny, though, but Nate's well been working on his air game, too. If you look at social media, he's not kind of calling out his brother and the rest of the aerialists working on not just big waves, but he's got a little air game as well. He's got it all. He, he, like you're saying, he's got it all. He's, there's nothing he can't do. Like, you think about Chopu, that wave you got at Chopu? I mean, oh, that was one of the best rides because, ever. And like you're saying, his air game, it, it, it's up to scratch, that's for sure. Eli. Oh. What did he do just oh. then? Into the pit. What oh. did he do just then? Eli Hanneman, the prodigy. We saw the coming of the prodigy, and it continues. The light's getting brighter, guys. But <laughs> man, oh, man. He got compressed on that landing, and instead of uh, getting ditched, he just fell into the pit. This is going to be a big number, I feel. What I noticed then, what, he didn't smile after it. I'm jumping for joy. Oh. In the barrel. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's why he didn't smile. He broke both his legs. <laughs> Let's see it from up above. Big air reverse stomps it, finds a little bubble, and comes out of that. Yeah. It was around a, was the shower. It was an amazing make. I think the air's actually a little mistimed. He kind of, like, comes off. Oh, no, he's got the, the, the takeoff down. But the board's just sort of flip-flopping all over the place. Look he loses kid. his back foot. Oh. oh, I cannot stand seeing that. How? Imagine you. You'd be your Westpac helicopter. Come get me. <laughs> well, <laughs> Demi, you know how babies are real flexible? Babies are yeah, real yeah, flexible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's still got some young bones and yeah. cartilage, looks like, because he was able to flex out of that one. Green bones. Green bones. I mean, the whole air, it was a, it was a bit flippy-floppy. <laughs> but the landing and that he was able to ride out of it is... Pretty amazing. What? Can yeah. we get a smaller singlet? Yeah. <laughs> Jay Davies almost ripped his in half trying it on. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us, Red Bull Airborne. And this is heating up right here. Eli Hanneman is already on the top of the leaderboard. And uh, he may be adding to his numbers here in the qualifying round. What a talent. Yeah, this guy is has not disappointed on a single wave he's caught, I feel. Every opportunity, he's made the most of it. He's uh, he's done some corked, inverted air reverses. He's done some uh, really lovely full rotation air revs. And he doesn't need much to get going, does he, Bemi? He's no. it's just a just a lump, just a a whiff of a smith of a swell, and he's all over it. Hey, let's check in with uh, uh, one of our female aerialists, someone with a great air game of her own. Chris Moore's down with Chris Bins. Absolutely, and Chris and more furiously taking notes down here. Is this inspiring you? Oh, it's super inspiring. Um, it's just really cool to be down here. I know a lot of the guys, and so i um, just here to support. Um, in the second heat, Reef, Reef is staying with us, so um, I'm hoping he gets one before the heat ends. <laughs> and does seeing all this progression sort of encourage you to bring that a lot more to your own surfing game? Oh, definitely. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's great to watch the guys and see what they're doing. I mean, they're the forefront, um, you know, leading the way and paving the path. So um, this wave is so progressive and so much fun. So it's really cool for me to just watch and see how their timing is out there. And uh, is there anything in particular that you're taking away from it, like the sections that the guys are looking for or how they stick their landings? Yeah, I think I'm the most impressed by just, like, the resilience. You know, it's just like fall, fall, fall. Okay, then make one, you know? So it's just... Um, Keeping that positive attitude and, of course, just um, just the commitment. Tell us a little bit about Karamas the Wave. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah Karamas, is, it's been such a, a sweet event to add to our tour. Um, like I said, it's super progressive, really fun, and um, the conditions have been nice and surprisingly really fun, even though the forecast have been like, it's going to be small, and then surprisingly with the tide, there's like a good push every morning, so, yeah. And your tip for the wind, Reef? I hope he does well. I'm, there's a there's a, a good amount of guys that I know and I'm cheering for, so it'll be fun to see how it all pans out. All right. Good luck yourself in the rest of the event. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Binzi and Chris Amore and I share the same uh, home break, and she's very humble. She actually has an incredible air game. Every free surf, she's able to throw down uh, some air reverses. I can't wait to see her bring that out in a jersey. Noah Dean, live action here. He's got the speed. Winds it up. Goes for the big straight. Oh, just... Gets a bit sticky with the fins on that landing and maybe just mistimed the takeoff as well a bit there, Bemi. Yeah, he mistimed that one. He was coming around that section just hoping it would stand up for him. Gets a lot of speed here. He knows he wants to go as big as possible, but uh, mistimed it just a little bit. That lip hit the board and just a bit. He had, oh. the, he had the grab. The wipeout is, uh, is pretty full on. It 
Anytime you see the back foot come off and the front foot extend and the entire leg go flat on the board, that just makes you feel nervous because uh, that's ex pretty much how Mick Fanning tore his hamstring off the bone, right? Yep. You lose that back foot and all that pressure and weight of your whole body starts to press down into the tail. Let's have a look at this. The well, takeoff wasn't too bad. He didn't quite get the pop I think he was hoping for. He was solid in the air, but then you can see there. Thankfully, he was on the tailbone already and not on the front foot. So that's probably what saved the hamstring on that occasion. Finn Miguel, nada. Finn has been looking for that liquid launch ramp and nobody's sharing it with him because he's just been, you know, skating flatland right now. Can't find that little hook. Um, I saw a little frustration from Miguel. You know he wants to do good in here. He's got a great air game. He's a great skateboarder as well. And really, oh no. This is Oliver Kurtz on the left. Nothing doing there and, either. And he's a world champ, right, Finn? Yep, world junior champ. So he's had success in the jersey. And that's Reef looking left again. Yeah, now, the, goofy, the goofy foot is going to look left all day long. I know Yago Dora next heat, he'll be looking left. It's, it's so hard for them not to, right? <laughs> oh, By the way, that's Louis left at Karamas. We want to get the correct vocabulary. Dean. Oh. Oh. Owie. Ouch. Hey, as a team manager, <laughs> Demi, I see, I see you grit your teeth when you see uh, one of your prized possessions go down like that. Finn McGill. Get a wrap, Finn. Yeah, yeah, that was not it. <laughs> Finger flip. <laughs> Playing the lolly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these guys, they're sending it so hard, and, and with with the big aerials, there, there does come a lot of big injuries. I mean, Noah last year was on a heater, came to France, and um, busted his ankle pretty bad and was out of the water for around about six months, so... Just only came back around about just before the Vulcan Flight Pro this year, actually. So yeah, Finn, you're talking about? Ah, uh, no, no, Noah, Dean? Noah, Noah. So, and both of those guys are great, good skateboarders too. And so that's a little hazardous, but you can't keep these boys off either board. board Here shove. we go. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, nearly Look. makes it. <laughs> shove a ten. Shove it. He, you can almost project it when Noah's on a slightly smaller wave, and he knows he's not going to get the height. He, he doesn't mind throwing in the shove it. Yep. And, and it's a cool trick. Done done with speed. It's it's one of those ones that, you know, only a handful of guys have really got a handle on. This is the one from before. Just sort of copping a bit too much lip on the body as he was coming up. The rotation there, but missed his board. The ability to bail is incredible. That's something that's overlooked because these guys are able to get out of bad situations and away from their boards most times. Normal, normal mortar like myself, Demi. <laughs> yeah. I'd have a broken board and a few skeg cuts. Just Ooh. coming down going, where is this board? And it's always under me or yeah. under you, you know. Here goes uh, Oliver Kurtz. Big backside varial attempt, I think. Losing the board early in the piece and out the back. Eric just snapping off the top. He's just going for a surf. Uh, talking about busted boards, the, the big oop, that monstrous oop that we saw well, here goes Eli, Ooh, throwing it out into the face of the wave. No landing there, a rare miss. But the big oop from Head Noise, you know, the one that finishes off yes. uh, Noah Dean's yeah. clip from last yeah. year, one of the best surf clips ever made. He actually buckled his board landing that thing. So his board just creased and yeah. he was just riding it, riding it in all wobbly, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, he broke it. It's lucky, lucky it did crease because you could have broken your ankles and that thing, like the board flexed under it, but there's about eight eight creases in that thing. And I think with this wave too, like it's almost made for the alley oop, the way it, it steepens up and it slows up right that. And the boy's trying to do that air reverse, like I, it's going against the flow, really. You're, yeah. you're forcing it into an area that it doesn't necessarily want to be. And everyone has said, Kaipo, that the oop is probably the air that is likely to win this one. So when we talk about an alley-oop, we're talking about a counter-rotation going down the line. That would be the alley-oop there. Even though these guys are going front side, the alley-oop that they're performing in terminology would be a backside alley-oop. So bringing out the skateboard dictionary for you boys. But it's an alley-oop nonetheless. And uh, Chris Stropel, Alan Gelfin, one of those dudes were the first guys to do it. And Eli Hanneman, our leaderboard 
Prodigy, just top of the ranks, is just having fun right now as we're down to just five minutes and 15 seconds. I don't want this group to end, Bemi. This has been an entertaining six surfers in the water. Oh, it is. It's, it's, it's one of those things you watch all day long. And, and like Carissa said, her come, she's come down to watch this and see the progression of surfing and where she can apply that to her game because surfing is heading that way. You know, a lot of the guys in their heats now, they're bringing these big, gnarly airs to their to their like equation in surfing. Kurtz <laughs> has to kick that one away. No, you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. <laughs> I think a few years ago, you could, you could have argued, oh, let's have a look at this recap first. <laughs> this kid on a mad flare at the moment. I only seen him fall the last couple of rides, but a nice oop there from Eli Hanneman. He's been at the top of the leaderboard for the majority of the airborne here at Paramus. Beautiful full rotation front sider, and that was a, uh, you know, a good standard air, but done with all the confidence in the world. This thing was crazy. Crazy. I mean, if you had a crystal ball right now, you'd know where this kid is headed. There's future world titles for him. He's doing this at the age of 17, I believe. I mean, the kid's just a, a phenomenal surfer. And he's one of those guys with the X Factor that you see in a generation. Matt Miola coming up next. He's uh, one of the surfers who's done the most rotations in the air documented. We'll see if the Maui boy can spin to win here at the Red Bull Airborne. He's going to be met up against... Who else is he going to be met up against? He'll be met up against Yago Dora, Chippa Wilson, Aiton Osborne, Lee... Wilson and Bronson Mady. Last group coming up. You're not going to want to go anywhere because uh, the action is as hot as the black sand in Karamas right now. <laughs> and it does get hot. <laughs> the the midday run isn't that heavy. And the, oh, I don't know how those ducks do it. You fly along that sand faster than you running away from that monkey that was attacking you the other day. <laughs> oh, it is so hot. You saying bolt down to the front. I mean, black sand anywhere. It's hectic, but... Um, yeah. So that was a really good call. What? It, it's going to be as hot as the black sand. Oh, oh, you've been waiting for that puppy, haven't you? No, it just pops up in my head. It's the weirdest <laughs> thing. I just, like, it's it's part of a disease. It's almost like disease, you know, <laughs> Bemi? These weird terms. I say, And sometimes I keep them in my head. Sometimes I say them. You know, um, some, I Ima should Imagine what's bouncing around in there that yeah. we have. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> There's a lot of room in there, but it bounces back <laughs> off the walls like a rocket ball all over inside the cranium. Here we go. <laughs> Speaking of craniums, I've got a couple of good-looking craniums on the couch with me. Thanks for joining me, boys. Thanks, Kaipa. I love being here with you two. It's, uh, it's the family back together. Oh, yeah. We're always together for the Red Bull events. We love them. I'm two minutes 20 to go. Yeah. Looking at the action in this heat, though, I just really hope that we see the guys who haven't really had a chance yet to just give us something. Yeah. Because in the last heat, it really was just one set that kicked off the entire thing and Ian Crane got two waves basically in four minutes that pushed him from last into that first into that first place being overtaken now and here we go we've got some action yeah Greek Hazel we're thinking he's on the QE hitting the lip first he needs an aerial this is the Red Bull Airborne come on Reef and there's no ramp for him we're down to under two minutes but I got an important question Matt Demrose yes send are you, it are you gonna stick around with us for the next group please <laughs> well, it depends. What do you mean? What's it depend on? Well, the Blakey's shine coming off the top of his head. He has to put a hat on. It's out of control. <laughs> 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 we'll get some powder for Blakey's head. We'll, we'll dull it up, and then uh, it will. And will you stay with us for the last group, Benny? I'll stay. All How right. about that one? Yes. You're, you're going to want to stick around guy. just for that, gang. Red Bull Airborne. Eli Hanneman on the paddle back out. He's the leader. The prodigy, 16 years old, Lahaina Maui. Valley Isle represent, and I got another word for Eli. I said it before. Hawaiian. There yeah, we go. I love it. <laughs> got to flex a little pride. He's actually Hawaiian too, like Hawaiian, Hawaiian. He's got not, not just the driver's license, like he's got the blood. Wow, I tell you what, just the talent pool from over there is it's crazy. crazy. Oh, mate, it's next level. <laughs> I, I just cannot believe every time I, I flick on a screen, there's another Hawaiian going loony. The Jackson Dorian clip, did you catch that? Oh, oh my goodness. It's out of control. Eli's getting a little Italo on us right now with the switch stands. Okay, kid, come on, bring it on in. You got your top of the leaderboard. We're going to see you in the final round. Come on, drink some water. 
Rest, get some shade. He's very focused, isn't he? You never see much emotion on his face. Even after he does those big airs, he's not really... Where a lot of other surfers, a lot of emotion. You can see this kid's, um, he wants the final. Dad's a surfboard shaper, a surfer himself. He's basically, this is what happens when you breed a star, a star. When you breed an exceptional surfer. That's the example right there, the prodigy, Eli Hanneman. Eli coming up the beach. Uh, there it is, Benny. A smile. <laughs> You're waiting for it, and there it is. I think it's all business when the heat's on. Yeah, no, nah, big time. There we go. All right, remember, we're here at Karama's. You better phone up, call your mama. It's the Red Bull Airborne on its way right after the spring. I think the CT guys have that mentality of, of surfing in like a 30 or 35 minutes heat and the free surfers usually, they're not, they're not used to do that so uh, I think that's why we see like only CT guys won airborne events yet so and but I think they're gonna get, they're gonna get it figured out soon and I, I saw like yesterday a few of them were already taking it more serious like doing warm-ups and stuff so <laughs> yeah it's gonna it's gonna be serious on the, on the next few events i guess <laughs> uh -huh. yago dora flexing a little bit on the <laughs> fact that it's only we've had two red bull airborne so far and uh, the first one won by yago dora the second one won by italo ferrero so he's saying you know the ct guys we got airs but we understand how to play the game of surfing as well and i think josh kerr made the point yesterday when he was sitting in here with us you know, free surfers are around nobody when they're doing some of their best stuff. They're like out in the middle of, uh, you know, the wilderness and they're getting their clips and they're building stuff. And all of a sudden now they're in the competitors area, they're putting on rashies, they're paddling out with a commentator, they've got all these eyes on them. And they've got to have sort of a little bit of a heat structure and strategy about it. Even if all they're doing is throwing down a huge, crazy punt there's still that little bit of a thing where they've got to get used to all this new environment. Thank you for joining us on Red Bull Airborne Kaipogura along with Vaughn Blakey and Matt Bemrose. Bemi and Deadly here on the set. I'm just having such a good time with the boys and I hope you're enjoying it too. This is stop number two <laughs> of a three stop series. Red Bull Airborne, we're in Karamas, Bali and right now the young prodigy, Eli Hanneman has been setting the pace for the rest of the crowd. Oh my goodness. By local boy, Bronson. Bronson Mady, local Indonesian surfer. I mean, that was a nice alley-oop. He knew what to do then. He, he knows the break. We we're talking about it before. This wave is kind of made for that, that alley-oop section, right? And he, uh, he definitely noticed he wanted to score and he got one just then. That <laughs> is the oop we've been waiting for, I think. And Eli and Bronson, good buddies, surfing out here all the time. Look at the speed he's got. Oh, whips that tail up high, and what a buttery landing. No dramas. He wants to get into this final. He wants to take on his good buddy and surfing companion. That was Eli. beautiful. Look at the amplitude, Bemi, and then stomps it. That's what? incredible. You see here in the air, he's spinning around, looking at his tail pad and watching his landing the whole time. So hey, they look very similar when they're surfing, don't they, Eli? They spend so much time surfing against each other, and I know when you're surfing with your mates, there's nothing amps you up more than seeing them do something great, yeah. and nothing makes you feel better than when they do something great and you tell them that you didn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, happened, this happened during the break. This is Chippa Wilson. What's Chippa got for us? Oh, here comes the chip. So a little varial by Chippa Wilson. We'll see it again in replay, Bemi. Yeah, Chipper, I tell you what, when he takes off, you just got to, you can't look away because the stuff he does on a board, it's, it's so mind-boggling. It, it's like, it's like doing a pirouette on his board in the air. <laughs> is that, yeah, is that true. Here goes Lee Wilson, throws up a nice big air rev. Oh, there he goes. And uh, Lee from the Sunshine Beach up on 
Queensland's sunshine coach. <laughs> <laughs> but he's thanks, um, thanks for the insight, originally. Mark. But I mean, he spends all his time over here, and yep. I've been watching. I've actually been surfing over at Changu with him. He's been on the sandbar, and he's just been doing nothing but punt after punt, getting ready. He's uh, Karamas aficionado, and that was a really good start from Lee as well. Oh, nice. Pokes that tail on the inside. Eitan Osborne Whoa. goes for the varial as well. Let's just explain the difference between a varial and a shove it. A shove it is just your feet. If you have your hand assisting that 180 degree turn of the board, that is a varial. Varial actually invented by a team, a skateboard team, Variflex. Long time wow. ago, they shortened it to the varial and that all, that started in pool skating, actually. And then the big spin after that, explain that difference. The big spin would be a 180 with that shove it uh, put into it. So it's a 180, and while you're doing that 180, you're also shoving the board 180, and that's why it's a big spin, because it's 180, 180, pretty big spin. Isn't it just amazing where, so you, trying to, talking about this 10 years ago, big spins and 180s and 180s, I mean, where's surfing going to be in 10 years from now? Oh, well, with, with the wave pool technology, I'm going to tell you guys are going to be doing 12 foot airs. For sure. Guaranteed. And it's funny because uh, talking to the guys, especially the free surfing guys, look at this, there's the burial. A lot of the guys are saying that the pool is really, really epic for practice. But not many of them want to rate airs done in the pool or makes in the pool as legit, which I find at this stage already. That's starting to break off, isn't it? It's like a, it's like a, a simulation for what you can pull off. Like the same ramp yeah. over and over and over. Don't get me wrong, it's sick. But I mean, I'm just that's the noise I'm getting. Fun. Can, getting we, can we just all get along, though? You know, I can, wish, man. I <laughs> wish. Well, well, surfing, surfing has never been like snowboarding or skating, but now with the inclusion of the wave pool, it is. Yeah. Because they get to do that trick over and over and over and over again. Look, so for me personally, I don't, I don't particularly care. I just want the best, biggest airs that we can possibly see. I don't really mind where it happens. But this kid is on a tear. Bronson has just been fired up you know, by yeah. Eli, and he is ripping. But hasn't this group kicked off with a bang? Some sure. big tricks and uh, some variety as well. I don't know if we're waiting for a score for Bronson to tell you the truth because. Uh, he looks like he has, God, they're making me do math because your big score, your, your, your largest score is doubled. He's got an 8.94. I feel like the judges are also numbered another number for Bronson's alley-oop. And here's he on screen. Can't find the rap and fair. Yeah, well, the alley-oop, if that's correct, it, it only got a 4.45. I mean, good math. There you go. Thank you. That's why we had you. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I think that was a bit bigger than that, right? Has oh, to be. Oh, yeah. I would be baffled if that was a four because that's probably one of the best airs we've seen in the event. No question. No doubt in my mind. So we'll, we'll wait and see. Well, the leader right now in the Red Bull Airborne, <laughs> young man from Lahaina, Maui, and uh, Chris Benz caught up with him post-heat. Yeah, cheers guys, down here with uh, the guy who's the head of the class at the moment and the youngest kid in school. Well, actually, who's younger, you or Bronson? Bronson's a couple of years younger than me. <laughs> Tell us about uh, how tight you guys are as friends. You, you hang out non-stop, you're always hanging out here in Bali, particularly at Karamas. Yeah, we always uh, we always hang out because I come to Bali a lot and then um, I stay at their house when I come here. So, yeah, we have pretty good friends and uh, yeah, I've been hanging, I've been here for like, like two weeks, so we've just been hanging out every day, it's been fun. And uh, the commentators are laughing because they're old and they get sore bones and stuff, and they're like, there's no way we could have ridden out of that air that you just stuck. But did that hurt? Yeah, really bad. <laughs> I did the splits. <laughs> and then you just pop right back up. How are you feeling? You, you okay? Everything intact? Yeah, everything's fine, luckily. <laughs> and uh, you're, you're head of the leaderboard, just looking like you should be in the final. What, what would a win here at the Red Bull Airborne Series mean to you? A win would be would mean everything. It'd be so sick. It's like so many of like my uh, I've, I've watched so many of these guys since I was super young. So if I, if I could beat them, it would be best thing ever. <laughs> and Bronson coming second. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Thanks. Well, good luck in the final, man. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's true. You enjoy your win so much more if you beat your buddies. Oh yeah. The competition within a competition, but. The two young men, uh, Bronson Meddy as well as Eli Hanneman, very impressive.
uh, in this Red Bull Airborne. You can tell just in the interview too, they're like, Eli Hanneman's a true professional. And then you see Craney's interview, he's like, oh, he's just raw emotion. He was, you know, the difference between those two. And this this final, those two already in it, it's it's going to be a... Um, I was actually looking this way, but I was thinking, is there going to be a goofy footy in the final? Well, Ian Crane, for sure. Oh, yeah, that's oh, you, what when I mean. you got here. Yeah, when so I got that's here. That's right, yeah. I, I was speaking to those guys. Like, I was saying, what's the advantage of being goofy? Are there any? And uh, Matt Miola was saying, probably the spin. You, you might be able to just throw it out there on the end section a little harder. Yeah, I want to see a goofy footer flop a McTwist out here. I think it's possible. We've seen surfers like Yago Dora actually in this heat flop those McTwists. Nice mute grab, gets a little bit inverted and puts it down. Let's see if Yago can do that. But first, it's Aiton Osborne. Goes for the burial. No dice. This kid had a drip in his arm two, two days ago. He had a uh, really, really bad uh, barley belly. Ooh. Yeah. So, oh. And to do that, that's why he's pretty light right now. He would have sucked it all out of him. But, I mean. Isn't, isn't it bizarre? Like, every place you go in the world has something some sort of local affliction that you just don't want to suffer when you get there. Yeah. Barley belly is one of the worst. Yeah, it <laughs> I'm is. not joking. It's heavy because it doesn't just <laughs> relegate you to one room in the house. <laughs> but it basically sucks all the power out of your entire Literally. body. You've got nothing in there. Like, just paddling out, you feel cruel. It's crazy. <laughs> Good to see you here. <laughs> if it... <laughs> You're scaring me, Vaughn. Uh, here we go, Dora, stomping on the tail, looking for a ramp, and just in between two mindsets right there. Behind him, Chipper Wilson. I mean, you can see right there, Chipper Wilson, probably one of the very best aerialists in the world, like how hard it is for him to do airs out here on the backhand. So it's, it's like Ian Crane to be able to do that and be number two right now. That's a massive effort. I feel like the sun's less of a problem now, too. The early, earlier heats, we saw the guys actually blocking it from their eyes True. as they were taking off. It looks a little high now. and uh, the, Really, like, all we want to see is opportunity. And there's been a few. The sets are definitely giving some good ramps. Just want to see these guys get that chance and throw something huge. Here we go. That was the, you see, that was the McTwist attempt that we know that oh. Yago Dora can complete. We've seen it on film before in clips. I like that he's going to that. I think that's going to be one of the advantages to being on the backhand, to be able to get, get that twist and flip. And I'm a giant fan of that particular move, the McTwist. Yep. I mean, I think I want to see more of it in, in surfing. He, you well, will. We had a little team shoot yesterday, and Yago down at car parks, there was some massive ramps, and he did probably one of the biggest ones I've ever seen, and just came unstuck at the very end, but it was ginormous. So you can see him there getting inverted and going for the spin, and, you know, that's surfing's version of the McTwist. McTwist, obviously invented by Mike McGill, from the Bones Brigade, blew everyone's mind when he did that flip spin on a vert ramp. Wilson. Oh, a little wheelie. Rocket air. Interesting to see the board that leads on. Very short, flat, wide board, like almost fishy in its outline. And Yago's board on the wave just before the McTwist, like a really pretty standard short board. What are the advantages of uh, the two different craft when you're in these air shows, Benny? I mean, Yago's using his board that he uses in heats because he doesn't really change it up from his heats to this air show, and he d does what he knows. If but um, you... the big fat board, I mean, on the landing, you're going to have more width, so it's going to be easy to land. Oh, now, that if a little judo? So if you see that leg, like, that's what I was going to say, in slow motion for Lee Wilson, he did try to kick out a judo. Sick. I love that. So judo air, you're kicking out that back foot. Well, actually, a real judo, you're kicking out the front foot. I, I think Yago fully caught that. You could see his face. He was like, that's cool. And, and again, the guys love seeing something a bit different. That's right. But what's, yeah, sorry, you were saying about the water boards and then oh. the shorter, thinner boards... Is it just because that's what their go-to is? They feel 100% confident on that? Look at I, this. I, that I, is that so cool. 100% intentional. I thought it was just the straight wheelie. But it's almost like a little 
Has it got a name, that thing, Kaipo? I mean, is, is, is well, it only a judo if, if you're doing it off no, the front Yeah, floor? if you were to grab the tail, you could call it a Benihana. Hey. Um, but uh, a judo air is generally the front foot kicked out, invented by none other uh, than the great Christian Lasoy. Um, but yeah. It's, it's great. Just, great <laughs> someone's going to light me up with the name real soon yeah. for, for a rear uh, foot kick out. But I know for, yeah. sure, for sure if you grab the tail, that's the <clears throat> Bill Benny there, Bemmy. You know everyone. Is it, has anyone ever baffled you with a turn or an air yet? That you go, what is that? No. You got to tell your skate mates or? No, no. Well, because surfing's got some specific ones, yeah, like a Gorkin correct. flip or something correct. like that. I couldn't, you know, relate that to surfing. Yeah. I mean, to skating. Yeah. You know, so, but for, you know, if you're going to have like a uh, skate airs, hey, these things were invented. I mean, these skate airs and terminologies, they were invented pretty much in like the 80s and 90s. So we've had a, we've had a while to. Miola. To learn the names. Matt Miola. Oh, my goodness. A big radio attempt. It's amazing how late they hit that pocket, isn't it? I mean, that's where all the projection comes from. Now, Not able to stick that one. Let's we'll see who else takes off on this. Do you think, um, Bemi, the offshore wind is hampering some of our aerialists today? I mean, that's why you're going to see a lot of them go to the grab and hold on and stick that to their feet. And that's why it's going to make it a lot harder for those big straight airs that we saw Lee Wilson just do before that made it so much harder with that little kick out. Like, how did he even do that? So, yes, I do believe it's going to hinder it a little bit, but these guys are just so gnarly in the end. Like, I mean, look at that. That is almost two completely different maneuvers in the same air, isn't it? He gets the first part of the projection up, and then as he starts to feel like he's hitting the apex, he extends his body out so that the board is completely baked out in front of him. Amazing technique. It's just so sick to see how much thought and body language goes into these aerials now. And these bales are exciting too. Like to watch Aiton Osborne, how he's aware of where his board is, knows he's going to have to abort the mission and gets that board away from him. Isn't it funny, guys, I mean, when you're around surf comps and you're around them a lot and you go to the beach and you, you might be in front of maybe a couple of thousand people who don't know surfing necessarily. And the biggest cheers are always for guys just ejecting off the back of the wave. Yeah, yeah. And you always just go, he's just jumping off. He's jumping <laughs> off the back. There's nothing there. But it, it, it's, a good, it's a good sign of just of the fact that the air had to be the place to go. I mean, it's, uh, it's such an entertaining form of surfing. And now that guys are actually jumping out into the air and making it, anyone on the beach can relate to that. Everyone knows. It's like when you watch half pipe events, don't you reckon? Like yeah. everyone there is just going, what am I even looking at? Yeah, no, exactly right. And it's funny you say that. You think the big bird man, we call it. Yeah. Back home, the bird man. It's, uh, it's, when you see a newspaper or someone talk about an event, it's usually someone doing a big bird man over the back <laughs> of the wave. <laughs> it's like, who's picking these things? But that's the, uh, that's the exciting part of surfing, I guess, for the general public. Yeah, projecting, <laughs> flying through the air yeah. like a cannonball. It's just, uh, it's always been a sensational thing to watch. But, you know... Those days are on the wane as surfing grows in popularity, as, as people start to educate themselves on every single kid has, uh, you know, some sort of skate or surf game on, on uh, you know, the screen, games at home and whatnot. So, like, everyone is really down with the terminology and what the tricks actually are. I want to see some suspension. For us. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, I want to see some suspension on, like, grip pads or something so that you can take up some of that shock so that when you're doing 12-foot airs, you yeah. have something to, like take some of that initial shock away so guys can go higher and uh, go complete because like you said with Noah Dean there is a uh, you know there's a point that your equipment's going to fail when you go super big yeah and that's what I was thinking when you're talking about where surfing is going to be in 10 years because it's going that far above I believe the equipment's going to have to change whether it be boards or, or like you said grips but I mean otherwise the guys are going to be breaking every limb in their body there's another little facet of aerial surfing that is just starting to sort of pop off now, which we haven't really talked about, is, and that's the strapped-in aerials Ooh. guys like Kai Lenny are doing on 60-foot waves. <laughs> I mean, it's not really relative to this scene and what's going on here, but it is definitely coming. It's definitely going to be a factor in big wave surfing in the future, especially toe-ins on waves that you just, you know, on that next level. Because I, I am just so 
incredibly stunned by what Kai Lenny's doing. I, yeah. I just don't know how he does it. He's free, he's doing acid drops down to 80 footers and then coming out and doing huge methods. Calm downs. And <laughs> boned out, you know, uh, frontside grab. Like, it's just crazy what he's doing. And, and so that's another sphere of aerial surfing that we're going to be exploring as time goes on as well. Yeah, he's going to get some big spins in, inverted, giant fit spins. When, you, when you're strapped in, that's going to increase uh, the amplitude, obviously, but then also the ability to spin and go corked out, go off axis with that spin. Are we going to hear, if that does happen, those guys who are, are leading the charge in that field of strapping surfing going, yeah, I just want to give a shout out to my boy Laird for being the trailblazer <laughs> in that respect. Dylan Longbottom, thanks heaps, man. Even Goodsy had a little attempt yeah. at strap in surfing there for a second. Go up on a, a big wave of jaws, blow your vest up to a big air, <laughs> stay out there for a bit longer. <laughs> I mean, why not? <laughs> got, your, got your kite maybe, yeah, you know, yeah. you go out there, deploy your kite and keep yeah. on flying, yeah. you know, all the way down the coast, could happen. Anyway, it's just, you know, it blows your mind, doesn't it? Surfing just keeps on expanding, keeps on growing, keeps on evolving. But right now, I mean, at the Airborne, this is the pinnacle. Aerial surfing right now, if you want to know who's doing the biggest and the best airs, this is the place to be, Karamas. It's the third event, and uh, we heard Yago saying before, you know, the CT guys have got the, the format of the competition wide. Who's this? It looks like Yago now. It's going to be a big upside down. Double grab it. I think he's right. I think the free surfers are going to be coming after these CT guys really hard in the next few events. It, does it surprise you, Bemi, to see the enthusiasm of the free surfers to come here and be around the CT environment to be pulling on the Because I was saying to Kaipo yesterday, in the first event, the very first one we saw in France, they looked a little timid and like, yep. is this where we should be? That's not really knowing. And, yep. and now they're, they're down there playing ping pong, moving boards out. Is that Slater's board in the rack? I'm, I'm getting rid of that and yeah. put my own yes. one there. Yes. <laughs> well, they're, they're taking ownership of this space, right? Yeah, it's like a kid to candy. Like, give them a little bit of a taste and then they're going to go at it. And these guys are loving it. And, I mean, the next event in France, they're, they're going to be taking over the whole joint, like kicking all the boys out. You know what I mean? It's they like got this. a taste of the good life, huh? Yes. You, there we go. What, talk about the fun zone. The Red Bull Athlete Deck. And it's got funs and games, ping pong. We've got basketballs, cotton candy. There's a Ferris wheel you can't see. Three-pointer by Finn McGill. Oh, 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 Jay Davies almost tall enough to be, a, uh, you know, a basketballer, but he's got the body of a footy player. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Davies getting a start after Felipe Toledo pulled out. <laughs> Good times down there, isn't it? Good wholesome fun. You know what? And that's the vibe. Red Bull Airborne about progression. Bringing aerial surfing to you, the viewer, which we thank you for joining us, and a lot of good times. Hey, guys. You know what's really interesting? Sorry, Vaughn. Really yep. interesting. Mason Ho is still in sixth place. Love it. After the first heat, I, we thought he'd be out, but Lee Wilson, Will Wilson's coming for him. Chip is still there. I mean, there's guys, like, right behind him, um, and there's not too long to go. I was minutes. just about to touch on this. This is the, the final heat. This is the final group. And every one of these guys, right now, that leaderboard tells the picture of who our finalists are going to be. Yeah, but you can Lee, see the red cut line right that's there. That's right. Lee Wilson and Chipper Wilson. No, no relation. Those two guys and Bronson as well with a nice oop in his score line. They're the guys. They're the guys challenging to get up in there at the moment. But with 20 minutes, two airs is all you need. Even if you've got nothing. Miola has not landed an air yet. He could pull something off and get still into that final. It's an awesome format. I love it. It gives these guys right to the very last second to try and get in there and have a shot. And, and it goes back to zero, right? It's a clean slate yeah, clean in the slate. final and one aerial to so win. Exactly. That's the format. So we're going to race the board after we get the top six from the leaderboard. Yago Dora looking at this left, nothing going for Yago. And oh, the rodeo there spin is. for Matt Mayola, the fish killer. Just got a killer air and he wants more. Oh. Can he combo it up? We'll find out. 
Wilson, explosion on the landing. As soon as we said Matt Miola hadn't gone one yet, he's gone and done that. And, and like you said, Vorno, 20 minutes to go. He's got plenty of time to get two scores. And he just banged uh, maybe one of the biggest ones oh, we've seen. I started fizzing just then because I was going, is he going to get both scores on one wave? Yeah. Because it's possible. If you can't put that up, yeah. Man, if he came through on the inside, it was, oh, my goodness. How aggressive was that rodeo? This is a cranky air, isn't it? He was, like, sick of not making these things. He's got them on a string. Now, now the one thing that may hinder the scoring a little bit on that air is that was a double grab on yep. that. Uh, so he did have the safety double grab going on that, can, that air. Is it, can you do a single one-hand grab like that, though? I thought you had to double grab it to be that compacted to your board to spin that fast. Has anyone yeah. done a one-hand grab? Uh, again, coming from the skate thing, I mean, double grabs are just like, yeah. uh, like the double grabs, you know? Yeah. Uh, but is uh, it possible? Probably. I think the thing... Let's, let's, pon let's ponder that. Because we're going to be back. You know what? It's full of drama. We're at Karamas. We'll be back to Allah. This is the Red Bull Airborne. We are at Karamas. This is the Red Bull Airborne. Let's find out what's going on for the rest of the day here at the Kanu Resort. For that, we'll throw it down to Chris Bins. Yeah, thanks, guys. Down here with uh, godfather of this whole Red Bull Airborne series, Josh Kerr. Mate, what's, uh, what's the deal? Bit of debate amongst uh, all the surfers, but we are... Yeah, yeah, we're on for the final. It wasn't really a debate, it was just talking about length of time. There's some great waves out there. And so we're going to have an hour final, so that's going to be really exciting. And, you know, there's nothing else going on today, so we've already got an epic, you know, vibe down here. Boys are shooting hoops, and, like, how long do we have between the semi and the final? We've got a quick one out there. So, um, yeah, it's pretty fun and some good stuff going down. I can't wait to see what goes on in the final. Your good mate Lee Wilson's in the water right now. Um, he's really flying the flag for Indonesian surfing the last few years. Tell us about his whole aerial strategy. Yeah, he is epic. Obviously, he earned himself a wild card just from what he's been doing over the past 15 years here in Bali. You know, he's owned this peak out here for the, some of the highest, biggest airs that's been done for many, like a decade now. So, um, yeah, he's getting close to making the final too. It'd be epic to see him in the final, but it's definitely. Um, Today the, the bar's been raised a little bit. There's a few a bit harder to get to the final than some of the other events. So, you know, I'm pretty excited. And it seems like with Lee that he will not compromise style or integrity for anything. Like he would rather not make it and look cool than, than stick something and look like crap. Yeah, so he would tell me, he's like, you know my plan. I'm just gonna sit on that deep wedge and I'm just gonna try and do big weird things. And that's the thing, he's like, he's the guy that's always looked up to Brucey and all these kind of guys that are just such style fun service to you know aesthetically really pleasing to watch when they're in the air and that's the main thing we really do judge on style so if he can get a proper ramp and do one of just these big straighties i feel like it'll be one of the better scores of the day and uh who's surfing have you actually just have a look at this one talk us through it no no one's there who's uh whose performances have, have impressed you so far over the event uh I'm, you know what eric garsman i'm stoked to see eric put some stuff together because he's had he's been like one of my favorite guys to watch like underground guys to watch for so many years now and i know his talent and know his level of ability and to see him do it on a live platform is really cool and we're both on the uh wsl group text that goes out every day with the judging criteria according to the conditions what's the judging criteria today same as it always is right go big tweak things look stylish yeah you know like obviously big is cool and then tech is really cool too like obviously if you do tech you don't have to go as big to get just as big of a score so and look really good doing it stylish is obviously just we just think video clips what if you drop if you're going to put it in an edit then it's a really good score so an hour and a half we're going to have a winner and uh, hopefully we can gr congratulate you on another, another epic outing of the red bull air series yeah thank you back up to you that's a good point. Yeah. If, you, if, you, if you put it in a clip, and these guys are so fussy. Oh, like oh my goodness. Oh, Yago Dora nearly completing that backside rotator. Aiton Osborne might have a chance on a ramp on the inside here. Screaming down the line, got the pop, got the air, lands on the roof, rotates out of it, revert. Chipper Wilson right behind him. Chipper eyeing up the lip. Ooh. And has to throw that one away. Yeah, Aton, he was throwing down burials and shabbats and all sorts of stuff in the actual world juniors, right? He's, yeah. he's a guy who 
I mean, regardless of what path he takes in surfing, he's going to be bringing that progression to his game. But I, I just feel like Kersey made a good point. If you feel like it, you could see it in a clip, one of these guys' clips, it's probably going to score big because these guys are absolute madmen when it comes to fussiness over what goes <laughs> into a clip and what doesn't, right? Yeah, and, and they're real particular, like you're saying. I mean, we did head noise with Noah, and he was very... Um he was making the call on what was yeah. in and what wasn't. And he, che- and he said, I did not want an air reverse. And you see, Yago Dora, I mean, it's hard for me Whoa. here being a team manager, these guys not to be like, come on, you got to do it. But, you know, <laughs> I mean, Yago is comp- he's so unbelievable to watch. And uh, when we do trips with Yago on team trips, the boys are like, oh, no, no we've got Yago on the trip because he, every wave, he pretty much makes... It's just, it's, it's weird that he hasn't been making these ones, to yeah. be honest with you. He brings a, a, you know, he talked about the CT surfers versus, you know, the airborne surfers that were invited here. Yago very serious. You saw him warming up on the Red Bull athlete deck like he would a championship tour heat. So he still has that very competitive mindset. We're going to see if that pays off for Yago Dora. He's got to yeah. do some work. He's way down on the leaderboard at the moment. So he's got to stomp an air yeah. if he wants to make it to that final round. Yeah, the, the CT guys are down there with their medicine balls and their rollers and they're doing all that. And uh, the the airborne guys are just rocking up straight out of bed. <laughs> Playing ping pong. Maybe, maybe a, a, red, a red bull and a straight out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly right. And, and a lot of these guys, they wouldn't be surfing this time in the morning, let alone trying airs like that. And, and it's really noticeable. It's really noticeable with the guys that compete, they get up early every morning, ah. they're, and, they're, and they're actually completing these rides, which, and you said about Yago before, with 11 minutes to go, he hasn't completed one yet. I'll guarantee it right now, he will. I'll guarantee it right now. And I'm, yet, not gonna t- I'm not gonna challenge you on that one, I think you're right. Yep. And Yago made a name for himself as a free surfer. I, I remember when we first started seeing clips dropping of him, everyone was just like, what? Who? Who's this? Yeah. Doing what? And, and it, it took all of about three clips for him to, like three waves in his first clip for everyone to just go, this kid is unbelievable. Yeah. And it didn't, we weren't sure if he was going to go down the CT road. No. For a while there, it looked like he was just going to go straight into just being one of those guys who just blows minds in his free surfing. Next thing is, what, how many world champs did he beat on that run through beat the... Three That's world champs crazy. in Rio as a wild Amazing. card. Aton, Osborne, down the line, needs a ramp. There it is. Goes for the burial and, again, incomplete for Osborne. He's got to bring some Sabbath right now in the last minute, uh, ten and a half minutes. A bit of mongrel. So, so boys, tell me this. Do you think ten minutes ago is that spot of Mason Hose? Do you think, I mean, it's is it going to It's not safe at all. Not safe at all. Do you think someone's going to overtake him? And if so, who? I'm putting it out there right now. Um, I, I'm going to go with Yago or Aiton would be the guys that I, I'd keep my eye on to bump Mason Ho out of out of the, the the cutoff line because Yago has a very high pull rate on airs. Aiton has a very high pull rate on airs. Both of those guys I've seen do airs in in the jersey before. When you look at the free surfers, they get multiple tries before they get to choose what clip is going to be released on the internet for your viewing pleasure. I think uh, the real danger for me is Chipper and Lee. These guys already have a, a half decent score, so they really only need another pretty solid make and they're going to bump Mace out so and we haven't really seen Chipper what he's capable yet I mean M- Miola gave us a flash with that nice little rodeo but Chipper is just sitting out there I think one of the most exciting things that everyone was the most looking forward to with the Red Bull Airborne was seeing a guy like Chipper pitted amongst the very best air guys and CT guys because he is world renowned for being the most progressive when it comes to grabs, technicality, and just style. He is Let me make this point, Vaughn. As we're inside nine minutes, as we see this aerial view, priority is going to be, the, well, the lack of priority is going to play into this drama, okay? Because this is gentleman rules. I'm thinking the more competitive surfers may take a more aggressive approach. As you can see, Chippa Wilson kind of on the perimeter there with the other surfers. Is Chippa going to kind of, you know, get get a little bit of the, the aggression? Because he's going to have to fight for, for waves right now because we're not... Bemi, we don't have designated priority. Correct. It's, it's you know, the, just don't be a jerk, yep. but it's the guy closest to the curl. C- correct. And But, uh, you know, Kersey said yesterday, if someone does back paddle, you paddle around him, you have every right to drop in on him. You can drop in on him. And then the boys are... They're being pretty gentlemanly out here. And the one thing with Kramacy is because you've got these long period swells, like when they do come through, 
there's three and four waves in a set. So we're going to see guys all get that opportunity we've seen all day long. And like um, Vaughan, I said, I do believe Chipper's right there. But the one thing with me is Barron. I think Barron, we haven't seen him shine. He took the first wave of the heat. Yeah. He only got the 4-5, which, you know, I thought that could have been maybe a point higher, which would have him right there. I, I, I can see he's on screen right now. I think he's got something else in him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually a little bit surprised by the score he got for that alley-oop. It was a really high one, and he uh, he really cushed out that landing. Uh, and all he's going to need is another opportunity. He, he's sitting on... It's not a bad score, actually, to have him there. So let's see Bronson get another opportunity as well. I know he would be absolutely frothing to How get in there with How beautiful Eli. is our venue oh, right my here, Vaughn? Just take a look at that shot, and uh, you can describe a little bit about what's going on in this perimeter. Yeah, so uh, basically you are looking down on the judging tower, uh, which is set up above the Warungs that have been down here at Karamas for years. That's where the umbrellas are. And then if you go slightly to the left, that's sort of the competitor zone. That's where the white tent is. And then you go down again into the yard at the commune. That's where the pool is. That's where the Red Bull athlete zone is. And then you just move on over again. The beach, what, the beach club, the beach restaurant. Yeah. That's where we uh, often wind up after the day's events have uh, finished and start sensibly, uh, yeah, having a couple of Red Bulls and yeah. Coronas. And then uh, over again, that's the uh, the little Nev Hyman. Uh, what are they? They're the, the Nev houses. And yeah. that's, uh, that's a whole other story. Those things are incredible. Check them out online if you get the opportunity. Basically taking garbage off the beaches and making houses that are Category 5 typhoon proof it's, a, it's just unbelievable so the whole zone there is just non-stop action and cool stuff going on most beautiful place in the world i love today, it today for sure bronson gotta find the ramp wants to get above that cut line and find the final six four and that's not going to be do it for no. the home team. Hey, what's the go? I mean, for people at home looking at this lineup, it is just a dream. I mean, when you wake up in the morning, if you had sort of three to four footers, you know, uh, four foot Australian, I'm sorry, cops, I've, I've got to say four, because <laughs> at home we would say four. Yeah. But I mean, for the air guys turning up and seeing this, what's going through their brains, Bemi? Oh, I mean, they're, they're absolutely hyping. I know, um, just looking at these sections, they're looking at the wave and looking at the very first section. I believe that first, like, where we're talking about the where the guys are going for the alley-oop or the air reverse, and they're looking at the last section, going down the line, looking at a lot of speed there, and think, you know, they've got two opportunities there, and that, like you said before, they can get both scores on one wave, and that's the beauty of this wave here yeah. right now. Yeah, and you know what? Big scores can be awarded to surfers, both doing spins as well as... Large straight airs. Talking about large straight airs, a guy who's not a, afraid to go to the flats, Reef Hazelwood's with Binzi. Yeah, cheers, Kaipo. I'm with uh, Reef Hazelwood. Mate, have you ever been in a contest where you've scored zero points and had so much fun? Uh, definitely not. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was like, um, I, I would have been stoked to make one air, but, um, you know, I was just having so much fun and uh, everyone was laughing yesterday or, yeah, whenever we ran last. Two days ago, two days ago and then uh, today too. So, um, you know, I like, you know, I wish I could have done something sick, but, uh, you know, I really could just kind of came here to have fun and um, I did that. So, yeah, I'm loving it. You got second on the Gold Coast. You're obviously a fan of the Red Bull Airborne Series. Yeah, definitely. I love it. Um, you know, hats off to Josh for putting on such an amazing event um, and series. Um, you know, it's it's pushing everyone surfing, um, and there's new tricks that I haven't seen before uh, being put down, and uh, it's it's super sick to see um, the sport uh, being pushed, and um, hopefully uh, the CT can start having those airs come through, and then um, yeah, hopefully I can kind of pick it all up too. So yeah. The uh, first heat two days ago, you just went for the rodeo time and time and time again. Was that your, your, your whole determination was you, you just wanted to stick one of those or did, were you starting to think, oh, maybe I should just do a, an air rev and get some points on the board? Um, I, I, like, I think I, I went into the heat just kind of um, really looking for the rodeo, but I also kind of felt like the sections were kind of leaning towards that for me. Um, like I wasn't really finding any um, like really good air reverse or um, kind of straight air sections. So, um, you know, I, I kind of had it in my mind and then it kind of also just kind of worked out that way for the waves too. Um, and so, yeah, it just it kind of made it a bit easier. And um, I, I guess I'd kind of been watching that before 
Um, so, yeah. All right, and uh, unless sort of half a dozen guys all break their legs now, you're probably not going to make the final. So, who's your tip to take the win? Uh, I think. Um, I don't know, like Ian Crane in the last heat put some pretty insane moves, uh, like really technical grabs and uh, the rotation too. Um, but Eli Hanneman's looking pretty uh, solid and just constantly landing stuff. So I think between them two, it could be yeah, a, a good battle. So I'm excited to watch it. All right, and uh, hopefully you get the call up for France because we've loved having you in the Airborne Series so far. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Binzi, and uh, we saw a couple of rides, but good point as we look to the home team, Bronson Mady. He's, he's on his tail there, just looking to find the steepness where he can pump and get a lot of pop, and there it is right there. Goes to Air Rev. Didn't stick it, but I, we saw Chipper just before, only needing a 5.4 to advance, and that was as technical as you can get. Are, we, you, are you going to say it? Uh, do you, what, do you what, think he got the score? Oh, it's hard. It's hard to say because like the height isn't there, but technically it's crazy. I mean, it's just like these little burials, the little shafts. They're so sick. Look at the technique, and he actually like fakies out of this thing through the wash. So he's coming through the bouncing wave. Easy. It's a tough one, man. I mean. It's really tricky. I think that if you look, compare it to uh, Bronson's alley -oop, that was a much higher air and maybe maybe in the same ballpark. I don't know. The technicality versus the height, it's, it's a battle that the judges have really got to weigh up in these conditions. I'm going to say it's going to come up short number-wise, Benny. Okay. But I like the technicality. I like the little, you know, varial. He did a little body varial out of it too because he had to land switch. He came out of its switch and um, reverted out of a, a nice 180. Pretty cool. I mean, progression, Chipper Wilson, that goes hand in hand. You can always say that in the same sentence. And this is crazy. A minute to go, and there's at least four guys who can do this. I mean, all six of them can do it uh, if they get maybe a couple, a couple of airs. But it looks like to me there's just one last opportunity for these guys who are right on the button to try and sneak and improve those scores. Interesting. I mean, this is the last chance, guys. I mean, the final is up next. The Red Bull Airborne. It's given us a bit of everything, though, hasn't it? I mean, we've seen technical airs, different grabs, nice big lofty airs, a couple of big oops. And uh, it really is Eli with the, uh, you know, the, the big standard full rotation, but getting the distance and the speed and, and stomping him against... Uh, Ian Crane, who was basically just bringing all sorts of different stuff to the party. So both styles of air is getting rewarded at the moment. It definitely, like you said before, it's, it's the height that I like to see as well. That's why Chipper probably didn't get that score. Uh, it was as technical as it gets. But um, Eli Henneman, Ian Crane, Gosman, Freestone, Kalani and Mason Ho. Mason Ho! <laughs> Made it. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm pleased at that. Well deserved, too, because yeah. if you think about the airs in the context of every single air, and that's what the judges, they've got to keep the scale the same. You can't move the scale Correct. because it's got to be in the context of the leaderboard, the overall leaderboard. And Mason's air was definitely a top six air. If, you, if you're looking at every single one of them, and he backed it up with a nice little backup score to push himself into the final, he'll be losing it down there. And, I mean, we're just stoked. We're just stoked to see Mason in there. There's Clarny David. I mean, he's a surprise packet. The guy's unbelievable. Kind of everything. Our final round is set. You can see the cut line. Mason O, Kalani David, Jack Freestone, Eric Geiselman, Ian Crane, and Eli Hanneman to the final. We're feeling right. I'm loving life. And you know what? We're going to see some airs with height boys. This is the Red Bull Airborne, and the final's on the way. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Red Bull Airborne. We are about to get the final underway, and what a top six we've had. Unbelievable the success rate that these guys have put together throughout the contest so far. And we've seen so many great airs landed. 14 different variations in total with a couple of big attempts at different moves. It's been awesome to watch. Uh, 
Yago Dora almost getting that McTwist done to make the grade, but not quite cracking the top six here. In fact, only one championship to a surfer in the final six, and that's Jack Freestone. Yeah, well, here they come. The free surfers have had a gutful of the CT <laughs> surfers just, uh, you know, paddling around on the inside and, and being all hungry in the heat. Look, I, I feel like this has been a, a pretty amazing top six. I think even Mason Ho squeaking in there and really sitting there having to watch the whole entire last group not get what they needed to squeeze up in there. He'll just be going, wow. But in the context of the entire event, the air he threw down this morning is definitely top six. I mean, there's no denying this one. Big lofty projection. The style, incredible. Gets back up over the board, Ron. Lands fakie. And then just rides out of it. Look, classic base. Little cheetah five almost. Oh, I love that exit straight into the stylish bottom turn to uh, exit that move. But I just love the fact that he got it up there and then almost just sort of in slow motion pushed that tail around. Now, we know that the, the criteria likes to see a little more rotation. I think that's why the score didn't go higher. But sometimes you just got to tip your cap to height and loft. And he had plenty of that out of the pocket. Really... The four, three or four or five highest airs we've seen have been done by the guys in the top six. So there's there's no question that this is our final. Uh, you know, you can see Mace there talking through his air. He loves doing that. Bang, got it. We love talking with our hands, don't we? He just loves talking <laughs> surfing, always. Big time. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, for me personally, uh, the big airs have got through. It's, it's just, for what we've had here at Karamas, what we've seen has been incredible. It's a little bit of a bummer we didn't get a touch more swell because these guys love sending it on this end bowl. But there's no question that we're in for a really epic final. Eli Hanneman, well, there's no doubt that that kid has been the standout surfer of the Airborne so far and only just a whisker behind him, Ian Crane. And very different approaches, dog. Eli really just basically hitting sections, doing everything textbook perfect and just stomping landings. Big Air revs have basically got him through. I'd really, Ian, on the other hand, I've really enjoyed Ian's approach to the event. Just exactly. The, his variation's been impressive, but no denying this kid. Eli Hanneman, 16 years old, from Lahaina, Maui. And just, I mean, that is undeniable. It's, it's a very standard air by today's standards, but when you're doing it that clean and you're getting that rotation that far around, you're going to get rewarded. But I will be amazed if an air reverse wins the final. I just feel like there's too much creativity in the, in the guys that are there. And unless that thing is really, really high on a set wave, the judges want to see more. Yeah, well, I think the, the air reverse, you know, it, it's kind of the most reliable move that most of these guys can go to. So don't be surprised if you see a couple of huge attempts. But as we mentioned before, this guy, he, he went out there with a different plan in mind. Stalefish backside air reverse. Love the the commitment to executing this manoeuvre as his major turn. Had a bit of recovery time there, probably held him back on the scale just a little bit, but you know, you just got to love the fact that he's gone out there really wanting to, to push the envelope uh, as far as variation goes. Going for one of the, the more difficult grabs. And the cool thing was, once he stomped that, his backup air was insane as well. A Gorkin flip. He, he was really mixing it up hugely, and I think there's a lot of people stoked to see Ian Crane even in this event, because he got in thanks to a withdrawal from uh, Italo. Let's have a look at the finalists. Eli Hanneman representing Hawaii out there in the red. Ian Crane from San Clemente in the yellow. Eric Geiselman, this guy's got so much variation. Stomper, a corrupt flip. Also had a nice air reverse in his first qualifying heat. Jack Freestone in the green. Kalani David, again, getting to the, the top six in the Red Bull Airborne Series. He's in the black. And Mason Ho will be wearing that white jersey. And can't wait to see these guys take flight out here. But what a, an enjoyable event it's already been. I mentioned just the, the variations of airs that we've seen. I, I kind of counted about 14 successful different aerials in total. Uh, variations of the air reverse, frontside, backside. Variations of the same turn with different grabs. Uh, stale fish. Um, we also saw a, a beautiful... Uh, melon grab from Ian Crane. I love that. That was just so smooth. And, and I hope we see more of it in the final. The big straight airs are, are kind of really turning people on at the moment. Big time. And uh, one of the things we haven't really seen, I think we've only seen one boned out air, like a proper one. And it was by Finn McGill, who didn't even make the top six. And that thing was so quick. I didn't actually even notice until later on when I was watching it. I was like, wow, that was actually incredible. But Lee Wilson... 
this is uh, I think this is his big frontside air rev. And stomp this, came down in the whitewash. There's been a lot of great airs throughout this event, Doggy. Yeah, and he just missed out on that spot in the Spewing. final two. He, he Lovely. Had, and obviously he was kind of the, the fan favourite amongst the locals. We had a, also um, a couple of Indos in the mix, actually, which Did was awesome to little, see. his little kick? I, I don't know if it's a yeah. judo or whatever it is, but it was a back foot little... Yeah, it wasn't much release. of a kick. It was a little, kick, little, in the, little cute, kick in the shins. But, but cool. what we want to see with this event and what these guys have given us is variation. You know, I think this is going to really inspire the Championship Tour competitors, the fact that we've intertwined these aerial specialists with this CT event. And Julian Wilson was talking about it on set, but also off camera. He's going, I just hope that this fuels a bit of variation in the approach from the Championship Tour surfers as well, because it's kind of opening their eyes. So often we're seeing the air reverse. We're seeing incredible, very, um, obviously incredible attempts at it, successful attempts as well. But... We want to see more of those different grabs. We want to see guys mm -hmm. attempting stuff like that in heats uh, as well. And, and this is the catalyst. It is time. It's time to go beyond the air reverse and even the alley-oop. I mean, the alley-oop is a go-to air for even the best surfs in the world. When a really big section comes on anything north of sort of four foot, it's going to be a really sensational air. But more twists, more off-axis rotations. Don't just go for the full rotor. Go harder and also bring in the technicalities because that's exactly. the only place it can go. And that's what Freestone's done. He landed his first ever Stalefish alley-oop in this event here at Karamas. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him go for a bigger version of that same turn here in the final. Ian Crane, it, after that first qualifying round, it was so funny looking at the leaderboard. You're thinking, oh, God, some guys didn't even get a make in the first qualifying round. But it just goes to show that you know, it's not always easy to find that optimal launch section. And a lot of the guys that went out in that second round with no scores to speak of came out in the top six. Now, I don't know if it's the Red Bull speaking, but I am that jazzed on this final. I'm looking at the names, every single guy there has given us a highlight from this event. And I don't think we've seen the best of any of them yet. Because the waves are cranking, the sun's out of your eyes, there's a little puff of wind starting to show on the surface of the water. All these guys are going to bring it. There's money on the line, there's bragging rights on the line. I'm getting goosies. It's going to be fun, isn't it? It's fun right now. Look at Mason, he's psyched. He can't believe he just sat through 45 minutes of the best air guys in the world and he, none of them managed to peg him back. Well, uh, Mason and Ian are the two surfers that had no numbers after that first qualifying round. So they were the guys that were desperate. And with their backs against the wall, you know, to their credit, they got the job done. And to me, that strategy was, you know, it probably wasn't the smartest plan. But to get those those makes in that second round, to get yourself in such a good position to crack the top six is awesome to see. Well, I just love that it's a clean slate now. And it's all about one air. Exactly. Uh, yeah. This is like... This is the dream scenario. Like, just don't worry about any sort of strategy. Don't worry about hunting out a little backup air so that you can get into the final. Go out there, send it as big as you can send it. Make every single person on the beach, which I'm counting right now, it's about four of them. <laughs> <laughs> but make every single person watching at home basically make the same facial expression that you're making halfway through the air. You know what I mean? You can't see Get the VIP pumped. deck, the uh, Red Bull Athlete Zone there, but it is packed and a lot of the world's best surfers coming down to watch this final unfold. One surfer that won't be in it, unfortunately, just missed out, is Lee Wilson. He's with Chris Vince. Yeah, cheers down here next to Lee Wilson. Didn't quite make the final, mate, but you, well, I was just talking to Kersey about it. You're just always going to stick to your guns. You'd rather go down uh, doing it your way than, you know, <laughs> cheat yourself to make the final. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I should have. I should have, my dad's going to tell me what I should have done. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to, I figured I did the 360. The sections were good for 360s. I, I was confident I could have made another 360, but I'm not sure how they would have scored another 360 if I did another one. Um, it was tricky. I wanted to do a straight sit shifty and yeah, it's, it's tricky. I suck at comps, man. I don't really do many comps, but I, I, I got seven. You won the Padang cover a couple of times. That's not too bad. Tell us about your love of the East Coast right here, Karamas, and a few of the other reefs around here. Man, this is a, I think this is the best wave in the world. I haven't surfed it for like a year because it's just, it's really busy these days, but it's, I reckon it's the best wave 
for a comp, for an air show, especially an air show. And um, yeah, I got deep love. I mean, I've been coming here ever since it was before all this, and so we have a quite a nice relationship. She's pounded me a few times too. <laughs> you. Um, you take your sort of uh, craft very seriously when it comes to aerials and that sort of stuff. Who's, whose airs have you particularly enjoyed in this event so far? Um, I, I mean, I've really been enjoying watching Eric. He's real technical. Like On days where I just can't even fathom how to do one, he'll just do a, a dream air and it, it trips me out. Kalani, David, um, everyone. Like, honestly, everyone. I, I watch these guys stuff every day and I can't pick a pick a sucker because they're all good. All right, let's put you on the spot. Pick a pick a winner in the final. <laughs> all right, guys, I'm in. There you go. Winner, winner. Uh, see you next time. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Benzi. <laughs> Good on you, Benzie. Yeah, Eric Gosman didn't even know he was in the final. <laughs> you know, these guys, uh, a lot of them, they're not famous for their competitive smarts. <laughs> they're famous for doing big airs. And Eric Gosman, he actually finished uh, third in the qualifying round, so uh, he easily made this final six, but he was just chilling, having a Nazi Gorang, just uh, relaxing. I know it was before the hoot over. Can we give May some points for that run in? <laughs> that was <laughs> unbelievable. The froggy. <laughs> On the shore break, and our competitors are hitting the lineup. Ronnie Blakey, uh, along with Vaughn, and now joined by the creator, Josh Kerr. Mate, a very proud moment for you. Uh, getting this event underway on the Gold Coast was a big thing, but I think especially here at Karamas, this venue is so well suited. And we counted it up, 14 successful different variations of airs already in the contest, and a good chance we'll see more here. Yeah, how cool was that? That's exactly what this platform was um, created for, to be able to just see some new stuff and give these guys a chance to be able to... This one's been really special because they've gotten to have 45-minute heats. So they've had an hour and a half instead of the regular hour for two heats. So, And obviously, a wave like Karamas does help a lot. So, yeah, it's pretty exciting. We were talking about uh, the key word in aerial surfing at the moment, boning, tweaking, whatever you want to call it, really shoving that back foot out. We haven't really seen a lot of it in this event. Uh, we have seen a lot of air reverses. Oh, we're off and running oh, straight into it. First attempt, it's a successful one for Kalani David. Things are underway here. We've got an hour for the final. It is the biggest air that is going to win. So everything that's done in the lead up to this final is gone. You're just part of a highlight reel now, and it's all about sticking one big air. Kalani David's going to jump in front here. An alley-oop, not a lot of height, but a really clean rotation and an easy easy landing. He has a really good rotation with his oops. I mean, he just goes up steep and comes down steep, and he did a really good version of that one, obviously, in the first round. That one's, a, yeah, a little smaller, so um, I'm sure they'll keep that one pretty within a nice little realm of, for the score, but they're gonna that was a great it, way to start. For sure. They're going to keep it at the bottom end of the scale because there is... Uh, Anticipation for something really big to be landed here as we see Eli Hanneman up now. His first attempt. That oh, wave just tape off it off. <laughs> well, this is what I wanted to ask you. Uh, did you see an air reverse winning this thing? Uh, I, I just feel like it's building into something bigger than that. Um, I don't see and just your old frontside grab air reverse winning this by any means. No, no unless it's something... It's got to be psycho of an air reverse to win this, unless you throw in like Ian Crane backside style fish or something like that. And then that was, here we go. Speaking of the devil. Well, here he goes. Oh, he's giving us some great variation. There's a little bit more. Of, yeah. He's back on the QE. No. <laughs> well, that showed, you know, that guy is so well rounded, obviously. Oh. Nice little shove it to Just finish this one off. Thought he was for a second there. Whoa, well, the boys oh, thought they're on the CT right now. Have they forgotten what's going on here? <laughs> this is Red Bull Airborne, fellas. It's 20 grand out of the <laughs> I love how they just paddled out late, too. I had a text from Renato. You've got to be down here and control your boys. They're not getting out there on time for the final. I'm like, I wouldn't speak, expect anything less. Nah, right. <laughs> you've got, nah. got more chance hurting ducks. <laughs> yeah. Totally. I'm yeah. like, I can't do everything with these guys. They run at their own speed, their own time, their own pace, and that's something they definitely all have in common. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're running the uh, one of your old sparring partners on the CTs program, Chris Davidson. Picking oh, yeah. your jersey up after the Hooter has sounded. Yeah. <laughs> but, it's, uh, it's a good one for sure. Uh, I'm, just, I'm stoked that we've got to give them an hour right now. You can see right now on um, that the waves are kind of splitting apart a little more. The tide's starting to kind of move the other directions. It was so clean this morning, and when they came, they were such like a groundswell push with that tide. 
So I don't think it's going to be a bad thing. I think there's still going to be plenty of sections. They might be a little bit slower before they come, but, I mean, we've got six guys at Karamas, three-foot sets. And, all and the air wind is starting to puff up. I just walked here from out there. It's just that perfect light, just just amount where you can pretty much do whatever you want. And the, the strike rate for all these guys has really gone up today after that second qualifying round. Kalani David's out in front at the moment. Love seeing this guy in the mix, Vaughn. And he has uh, finished third place in a major skate event, uh, bowl event. That was a long time ago now, and he's also had some amazing results as a professional surfer. So Kalani, he is like the ultimate surfer skater crossover athlete. Not just that, he's, you know, you speak of the people's champ, you know how people love to get behind someone. Kalani has so much public support. I mean, whenever you're in Hawaii and he's surfing either, you know, Triple Crown events or Falcon Pipe Pro, the energy around his heats is huge, and you really feel that wherever he goes. People just love what he brings to surfing, love what he brings to aerial surfing especially. I, I feel like he's one of those guys that everyone wants to see win. Totally. I think Kalani, he's got the full package. He's like, when you're a kid, you want to grow up and be good at skating and good at surfing, and he did it at the highest of all the levels, you know, and the amount of respect I have for that is so high, and obviously... He's not, he's not just good at airs. He charges big waves. He can rip. Like, he's probably, you know, I'm sure he'll hopefully use this platform to stepping stone himself to the QS and take it to another, take it to the CT. He's also a uh, musical prodigy. Should see him beat the oh, drums. Unbelievable. Oh, I yeah, Phil Collins beat your heart out. Maybe if he comes, maybe he's surfing for seconds so he can get that little jumbo exactly. and get the, uh, hit the car park. Right, and... There is a band in this lineup, I'm telling you, <laughs> right now. Is. Eric Goldsman is incredible on guitar, also plays the drums, but, you know, we can get Kalani David on the drums. Mason Eric on the uke. On guitar. Mason probably would be a good front man. Yeah. Jack Freestone would be a good stage manager. <laughs> <laughs> They've all got the, the perfect jerseys for their band right now. So oh, yeah. <laughs> they're ready to oh, go. Yeah. It is oh, a tidy, a tidy six piece. I see Jack as the uh, the good looking bass player. <laughs> oh, yeah. Eating his chewing gum, Just standing shirt, in the dark in the corner. Shirt off, sort of 90s style necklace. <laughs> maybe some, maybe some uh, black lipstick. Well, waiting to see the, uh, the illustrated man get his first ride out here in the final. 52 minutes remaining, and it is Kalani David out in front. Ian Crane has a one. I like where they put Kalani's score in that 4-5. You know, it was nice. You know, yeah. it's, it's nice, but we want more. And it, is, <laughs> it also kind of gives the, the guys, uh, dangles the carrot a little bit. It was like, okay, it was a make. Everyone else would have seen it from out the back. They'd understand sort of uh, what he executed, how high he got, and uh, just where it went on that scale, and going to be pretty easy to work out what you need to do to go bigger yeah. and uh, height exactly. is going to be a big thing. Yeah, we're going to see probably a lot of the waves like now come in pulses with some very slow moments in between. So I think definitely if you get that pulse and you get your turn, obviously, in the six-man heat and you don't put one down, those nerves are going to build every lull that comes between the next pulse and the next pulse. So, But the love, I love this about this format that I created that everyone's in it until the last second. Like, it's just best one air. So... It's an hour. You might throw down the best air at the start, but you're on on edge for the next however long. No doubt. And yeah. I think just as we, we talk a lot about the CT free surfing thing, when it starts to you know the, the screw starts to turn, do you feel like the CT guys maybe do have a bit of an advantage where of like that pressure building towards the end of a heat and like knowing how to get it done? Exactly. Or, or are the free surfers. Is this something that we're going to see more and more of? the free surfers feeding into that energy and and then bringing. I think it'll take them time. I think it's going to yeah. take a few more events for them to really get that. Honestly, they're not used to going out surfing, trying, air, like, honestly, to just normally let those kind of waves, those airs just kind of happen. You're not as trying to force them, which the CT guys are used to forcing them in heats. They're also used to beach commentary, talking while they're on a wave. All this different stuff that the free surfers are definitely, it's cloudy for them. Definitely. We've got uh, just on 50 and a half minutes to go. Ian Crane up at the moment. He's going to kick out of this one. The surfers have been enjoying the format. A man that's competed in, in a lot of different kinds of events is Kalani David. Let's get his thoughts on what's unfolding here at Red Bull Airborne. This format, I think, is a, like the coolest thing ever. It, took, like, it takes like all the pressure off. And you're not like, I got to get this. I got to make this heat or else I'm not going to make it to the next round. And it takes like, all of that off. You just like go out and do the best you can. Like, just do the best air you can. If you don't make your first couple runs, like 
That's all right. Like, you know, you got to, you have what, five runs? So I feel like, you know, that's the goals on the high, like they take all the highest scores and it's like on a leaderboard. So I feel like uh, I kind of already know that format from skating and to put it into surfing, it's just like, it's honestly the coolest thing. You just start off slow, get a score, and then you just build that momentum up. Thank you guys for uh, putting this format together. Well, thank you, Kalani David, for stomping some big airs. And uh, looking forward to seeing a couple of more with just under 50 minutes to go. But the, the formula is so simple. There, there really isn't a, a gray area, Josh. It's, it's not like you're going to be comparing a, a couple of frontside hits to a cutback and a float on the inside. It's just big is best. Um, if you can be technical and, and go big as well, it's going to really work in your favour. But it just uh, always seems to be when we get to this point in the competition, the person that gets the most height is generally going to uh, give themselves the best shot at taking it out. Yeah, here we go. Here we got Crane off the end here. It seems like a lot of those waves are moving off that to the wide kind of section with the, the current starting to pull out. So, like I said, we're not going to see quite as many of those deep mega sections. They're just going to be every now and then. Here's Eli. Super Grom starting to build some momentum. He's just been stalking those insiders. Mason paddling as hard as he could. Yeah, How Mason's good is that been. look of those pumps even? Oh, oh yeah, Judo! Like, oh, went the big one. He was telling me he was going to try that. I'm like, yeah, that's tough with a slob grab front foot kick that's because you're kind of pulling yourself up. You've got to kind of just blindly throw your board down, hope your foot goes with it. Lean grab is normally the more go-to move for that front foot kick, so... Yeah, that was cool. This would be really cool, Wang. I wish there was like a, a shot. Oh my goodness, he got some extension on that leg. That was like very... <laughs> Tiny dancer. Yeah, a bit gymna gymnast of sorts. How, look at that. Big old boot. Wow. Oh, I wouldn't expect... Oh, and he got it. He caught it too. Oh, oh so oh close. I mean, Lee he Wilson had a, uh, a kick in the shins. That was a full kick in the mouth. That was a big <laughs> kick in the face. Wow. Yeah, I think... I honestly think uh, Lee's one, he wasn't even meaning to do the back foot kick. I think he was using... Oh, oh that was cute. Really cute. <laughs> that was nice. They like had him. Just a nice little section, not too big, but he somehow got the full road. He's just so small and nimble, he can just rotate quick. Talk to me about landing with authority, stomping an air curzy, because uh, that's what makes this backside air reverse so impressive. Yeah, I just like... Whenever someone gets that front shoulder over on the landing and doesn't like, that, you see a lot of guys fall back on these ones. They don't get the, you watch, he'll get the end, he'll bring that front arm over and around in front and that's what keeps his um, whole body over the board for the landing. Kind of an audible thud though, Vorno, when he hit the flat stand. Yeah, yeah, you want to hear that. You want to hear that just snap, it really clean. There we go, got a couple here and, as well. Uh, good to see, but yeah, at the end of the day, a, a full rotation backside air. Oh, make that. Oh, wow. mm. oh, for me, just seeing the extension of that judo, like the fully committed one, not just a little half judo, like that is something that I got excited by. Yeah. I think like what I was talking about with Lee's one earlier with the back foot, I'm pretty sure he was using that back foot to do a tweak, and yeah. he just didn't get his catch on the board, you know what I mean? So he, his foot went out instead of the board going out. Well, some serious oh, ripping Eric's, going on uh, like, out here at the moment. What do you think about that, Josh? Uh, we've seen a few guys almost flowing their way to the air sections. We've got Ian Crane up at the moment, loading up with something big. Oh, oh, oh he's, he's going to make swing. it. He's going to make it prone back into it. <laughs> hey, he might get a second chance here. He is on a little low road here. A little varial, maybe, I'm feeling. Loading up. No, a second chance at this tail. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> Oh, he that loves that classic. turn. He actually says, without that, I am nothing. <laughs> I don't does. believe that. I, I don't, don't believe why. it either. I was no, tripping. he's got all sorts hey. of little tricks in his bag. Like He's Gorkins got the backside, big backside straighties, the exactly. Gorkins, and he's got the, um, he's one of the only guys in the world that's got the backside hoop. Love yep. it. Yeah. That's a sick turn, too. Yep. I mean, if you get those ones where you really get the tail out and you're yep. sort of like doing it in the same style of like the modern hoop where you're yeah. projecting up and looking down. Well, that's, I guess skate, it's a front side hoop, but it it's is. a backside yeah. wave. Yeah, so oh, no, front side you? rotation, backside wave, still a backside hoop in surfing. Exactly, mate. <laughs> well, the top 34 turning out to watch things unfold here. Chloe Andino with Chris Benz watching this oh. unfold. And Binzi. Yeah, that was Looks like uh, the boys the having a good time. They sure are. That was the only top 34 in the field. Jack Freestone going crazy. And we've got another one right next to us, Chloe Andino. 
Mate, um, does this get you psyched? Are we going to get you in the French one of these? Oh, uh, putting it on me like that. Um, I don't know. I, I actually wish I was in it today because it looks really fun out there. And any extra wave I could get out there, probably the better for doing good in the other event. And you snuck over your surfing car parks, but you snuck over in the little break between the final, get a couple? Uh, I got one and a half. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. The wave's like pretty slow and then the, everyone's frothing, so it's hard to get good ones out there, but um, just trying to put bits and pieces together, I guess. And one of your best mates, Ian Crane, is in the water right now. It'd be good to see a San Clemente boy take the W. Yeah, for sure. Um, Crane's been ripping. I, I was surfing when he, when he made the final in his heat earlier. I guess he blew up, so... Yeah, it'd be sick for him to win. I was just hoping maybe he would get top three so then he'd get one of these trophies because they're pretty sick. Yeah, they're pretty epic. We were uh, just talking about them before. What's the best trophy you've ever won and what condition is it in now? Um, <laughs> well, the best trophy I ever won was actually I got I got a bunch of seconds. So um was a second place at uh, Margaret River. I had like a, it was like a glass blown like bowl. And then uh, that night my dad actually shattered it. So um, the next year after that, I had to buy another, another one, but Thanks, yeah. Dad. Yeah, yeah. now I got the real one at home, so I'm, I'm stoked. All right, well, let's hope that Ian Crank can bring an instrument back to San Clemente. Thanks for the chat. Yeah, thanks, boys. Cheers, Benzi. Meanwhile, out the back. Wow, big burial attempt there. That was like a late shove, I think, he just tried. Yeah. Going back to Kaloe, though, he did just paddle out between the... the fit, but oh, my flip. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> Eli Hanneman um, just corkscrewing his he, way through that one. Yeah, so... Chloe paddled out and did one of those crazy spins that Jack's been trying straight away into an air reverse. That was his first wave out in the lineup between the, um, the, the heat and the final. So he's definitely excited and inspired, I can tell that. <laughs> so do you start like writing down names when you're watching the uh, free surfing unfold, going, hmm, who will yeah, I get into sure. the, uh, the event in France? You know, it's a, a tricky time of year for the CT guys to jump in on these. You know, they're, they're, they're on, a, on a leg, you know, and they're trying to build their momentum, especially those guys that are going for the top world title kind of. So, you know, I'm just stoked that the guys that do give it a chance, it really shows how much they appreciate this kind of stuff. So for Jack and Yago to jump in, I'm really proud of that. And it just shows their kind of mental headspace with the sport of surfing in general. Vorno, you mentioned it, though, early on today. Uh, it... it can be a momentum builder. We've seen Yago, he went on a bit of a tear through the back end of last year after getting a victory in Red Bull Airborne, the first one. And then Italo, obviously, won the event, won both events on the Gold Coast. So it can kind of work in oh, your favour. A win's a win. It gives, it gives you, like, no shortage of confidence in whatever you're going to do. Because you come in, you're just jacked up. Uh, this is pretty psycho. I Here mean, this, go. a flip like this... A really inverted one is definitely going to score well if he stomps that. Yeah, that, that, that's not just an air reverse that, right there. Yeah. <laughs> no. There's only a handful of guys in the world that are doing those and doing it properly. And Eli's really made a name for himself. This was really cool. It was like a late shove, like a late front shove burial. That was really sweet. I don't think he meant to do it late. He kind of got his foot caught right there or something. I don't know what he was doing. He was almost trying to grab it with his other hand too. And the late shove is... You know, definitely something that, that skaters love the, the look and feel of. It's basically popping up into the sky and leaving the shove until the last moment. Well, Eric in his own right is an amazing tranny skater as well. You know, him, he'd be the second best skater in this field to Kalani David. <laughs> just getting back to momentum, guys. It's not just the CT guys who can ride that into taking it next level because I think back to the early days of the air shows, Kersey, uh, Rye Craig getting a start. Like his entire career started as a 15 year old, I think he was, when he won at, at Cottesloe, one of these events. Uh, you yourself kick started your career on it. Uh, yeah. Ozzy Wright was one of the first ever winners of the entire air show series. Every single one of those guys went on to have like blistering careers on the back of launching it at an airborne like event. Yeah, exactly. And this even. Um even seeing like the guys like Eric, like he not he's either hot or not. That's his you know thing. When he starts, I think that's why at the start of the seat, he just started doing some turns. He's like, I'm just gonna find some flow right now. I've got an hour. I'm gonna like just like find my regular flow. I wouldn't a free surf because that's the they're such rhythm surfers. You know, they they go out in heats. They're either twos or tens. You know, so I think that's what they're looking for in this um, final as well. And. You saw Ian try how many airs before he actually made one, and then once he made one, he made his next three, three. attempts. Yeah. So, you know, it's not just like 
the way um, they go in heats and in career paths is also just every surf, every free surf and everything. It seems like when you bang one clip, you bang a bunch. Yeah. yeah. And another surfer that we can probably reference as building momentum with aerial surfing is Reef Hazelwood because he had an amazing amateur junior career and then sort of went on the QS and wasn't collecting a lot of results, started to focus on airs, got some attention as a result, got sponsorship. And he did really well in the Gold Coast yeah, Airborne what, event, got yeah. second and uh, went on to a great result in the main event too. That's exactly what this is for, you know, those guys that can start their junior amateur careers that are really talented to not just go jump on the QS at 18 and kind of get lost in the mix and stuff like that. Like, let's, let's keep, keep the creativity going. Let's keep your progression of surfing going on a platform like this. Free start up oh, and out. He's, and he was wow. always making that one, wasn't he? That's... The he's Jack Free Stone, stone go to and you watch. Uh, reliable. That should get him one. into the lead. He's made one, so let's see how many more he makes in the rest exactly. of this final. <laughs> and it's funny because what 38 minutes to go, Freestone. We, we were talking, you know, will a, will a frontside air rev win this thing? Maybe not, but no. stomping one, just getting that yep. big landing, getting uh, getting some height, especially getting was, comfortable right up there. That was a good section. That was nice. You know, how's this going to compare to the alley oop from Kalani David? I think it's going to be in the similar range, to be honest. I don't think they'll go too... I don't know if they'll go too big with it, but it might have been maybe a bit... Um, maybe a bit bigger. About the same. Smaller similar section. section uh, similar kind of tough tail down landing that he whipped around on. He executed it amazing on that section. So I feel like the alley-oop on a day like today is... Yeah, I think I think Jack's might be just that hair better. Alley-oops on a day like today, this wave is almost the easy kind of go-to with that lip line section. Um, it seems Jack had a little more height projection as well. If we, if we it's going to be similar. Yeah, oh, and oh. here's we got the score, and it was a 5 3 3. So, yeah, like 0. 0.7 more. Oh, here, here we, we go. go. He's got something to say about it. Kalani loading up. Oh. That kick out was pretty damn cool. <laughs> <laughs> Don't shut down the kick out. That's where you sort of like start to figure stuff out sometimes, right? Like you can just do big flyaways and start figuring out where, you're, uh, where you want your feet, how you're working on things, yeah. and then you start bringing it in. That's how I got the corrupt flip to start happening. Just fly him off the back of the wave. I'm like, oh, maybe I could get a section and bring it back in. Look at that. That was cool. And that's the difference. Like, those kind of kickouts is just rad. <laughs> Looking at the three scores we've got on the board here, Doggy, the 533 for Jack Freestone, the Kalani David, 4.5, and then Eli's 4.47 for that tiny little wave. But all the points coming from sort of dis different elements within the ride. I think Eli got all his points on the landing, the full rotation and then that, that authority of the land. Whereas Jack probably had the height and Kalani just a nice smooth ooh. So yeah. they've, they've all got sort of something different going on there. Judge is doing a really good job as far as uh, like putting the airs in context and then making sure that they're falling in the right order. I'm really, really impressed with that at the moment. Yeah, and really holding back on that scale, anticipating something monster in the final stages of this battle here at Red Bull Airborne. Still plenty of time on the clock, just on 36 and a half minutes to go. Jack Freestone out in front. The final at Red Bull Airborne is underway. We're approaching the halfway mark and Jack Freestone is holding on to the lead. A tidy little frontside air reverse, really poking the tail out. 5.33 is the number to beat. Kalani David and Aliou has him sitting in second spot at the moment. 4.5, he's got a lot more to give. Eli Hanneman, he's also stomped a, a really nice full rotation backside air reverse on a smaller insider. And he is out there at the moment with a 4.47, but everyone's trying to better that 5.33. It's all about that one big individual there. Ronnie with Vaughn and Josh Kerr calling the final action for you. And boys, it's so fun to see this next generation of aerialists coming through, Vaughn over. But it's a good opportunity now with not too many sets out in the lineup to, uh, I guess, celebrate those that have come before us. Who, who are some of the greats? Who are some of the original aerial pioneers? Oh, I don't think you can really go past Christian Fletcher as the most influential air surfer ever because not only was he the first guy doing it and really bringing, like, solid makes, he was the first guy to bring skateboarding right into it and, and that level of thinking. Like, he knew all the way back then that it wasn't just about doing airs. It was like aerial surfing is going to go into grabs. It's going to go into 
you know, all these different sort of style moves. And I just think he sits at the very, very top. That's just for me personally, but... Um, yep. There's a group of them, right? Like there's a group Joe of them. you got Joe Cremo, you got Justin Madison, you got yeah, Josh Slay, the you got all these guys, guys just sure. under him that were just... You yeah. know, obviously Christian's judo back in the day was just like, you don't even see them now. That's how hard they are. That You don't even see them now, like, consistently by any means. Yeah. Or at all. <laughs> and then yeah. you had, like, Power Air guys, which was another sort of um, yeah. a, a whole different line of thinking. Martin Potter, when Strange Desires came out, he, he was basically just hitting the lip so hard that his board was releasing. Mm -hmm. And th there's airs today that are not dissimilar to that. Like, if you see, like, a big front side air reverse on a closeout, that's kind of an extension of what Pods was doing. Right. So, yeah, I just feel like, uh, you know, those two guys are, are right up there in terms of making it an everyday part of what we do. Yeah, for sure. They. Um... And when I say we, I mean you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I've seen Ronnie throw an alley oop. Well, you a few see a of lot of airs that are basically they're doing a turn. If it, if you put that mo that motion on the face, it's a turn, but it's in the air. You know, exactly. I mean, that's that power air kind of thing you're, yeah. that you're talking about. And I think the power air is making it, its return in a big way. I think we've seen it in the the first qualifying round. The way that Eli Hanneman and um, also uh, Eric threw themselves into their sections it, it wasn't like they were just sort of popping and finding lift in the wind it, it was punching through the, the section as hard as they could in order to get inverted in order to get that rotation happening at such a rapid rate mm -hmm. that, that it's sort of making it its return it, guys are hitting sections hard now to get that flight there's another couple of guys i want to mention as well ron um in in light of uh, sort of you know there was a do you remember the, the convos where sort of old school guys were dark on air guys because they felt like they wasted too much wave getting to the air section? And I really think Aussie Wright needs a bit of credit because he, he was like linking turns in the cutbacks and really surfing beautifully right through. And that sort of put a different spin on air guys. And then Andy and Bruce, I mean, how much effect did those guys have on entire generations? Well, oh, Bruce's just style in the air. air. Yeah. yeah, Bruce's style in the air, even these unmade airs. Look at Lee Wilson, I'm sure that's exactly who he looked up to. You know, you can you can see him like replicating that kind of style when he's in the air and um yeah, that those guys definitely were at the forefront for someone like myself. Is that just that generation ahead? But there was that uh, the momentum generation really kind of definitely with the, the movies and the clips, they they took airs to another level and then there was sort of the, the aerial surfer who brought the attitude, the same kind of attitude that Christian Fletcher had, and they brought that to the fore. And I guess Aussie is sort of part of that. You know, he definitely brought, had that attitude as well. But, um, you know, that, that continues on these days. You know, you've got championship tour surfers who are more like those momentum generation guys, like Jack Freestone, who are really well-rounded and their airs are kind of clean. And then you've got guys like Noah, who are also well-rounded, but their airs are kind of grungy and raw. <laughs> on, on that, I feel like the momentum generation forced the judges on tour to evolve. Like, they were the guys who made comp competitive surfing and aerials appear on the CT legitimate. That, they did that. On the other hand, you had the lost generation. You know, those guys who were just dead-set freaks, didn't really care too much about... CT surfing and all that, and they took aerial surfing in a whole other direction, brought a lot more attitude to it, and so you had this sort of like, uh, I don't know, it was like a, a punch on between those two guys, because one of them was saying, we want to legitimize this, and the other guys were going, nah, we just want to like tear in as hard as we can and, and take surf, aerial surfing in particular as far as we can take it. There was like almost two types of those aerial surfers, it was those like aerial surfers that were super grungy rocky you know yeah. and then you had these more creative kind of like Aussie felt he had the attitude but he was also super creative artsy kind of form as well a lot of Santa Cruz guys that kind of fell into that realm as well oh, yeah. I, can't, I can't really underplay the Santa Cruz guys I just think they are so huge in the way that aerial surfing progressed Barney in particular the things he was doing, I mean, he was sort of like, you can, you can see him in Mason, you can see him in Aussie, you can see him in so many different fantastic air guys who bring that really creative and almost like 
loopy approach to things. Absolutely. You, you see like mixes of like Chipper and Aussie a little bit. They're very exactly, similar. Yeah. You know? And then you've got the Barney Mason kind of just like, you just don't know what's going to happen. You're like, but even be a kick out, they're going to do some weird kick out. You're like, that was so cool. Yeah. <laughs> what about for you, mate? Like, who were you looking at uh, when you were a Grom coming through? Because aerial surfing was really established by the time you started coming through. Who were the guys that you were just going, that's where I want to go with it? You know, there was the mix of the, like the Bruce and Andy and that kind of crowd. Like, I, I guess they were kind of in the loose changey kind of area around then of the Taylor Steele films who really helped push that kind of envelope towards us. And then then there was the Aussies and then there was the, um, the you know, the Newport kind of San Clemente crew and the Santa Cruz guys. All those kind of mixed together. I kind of looked up to all of it. I was, I was into every bit of it. <laughs> just oh, like just a little surf. Just, yes. just taking it all in. And, like and also action sports are really making that big movement of like X Games and Jew Tour and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it was it just had a really good movement at that time. We've been calling you the creator, but we've been calling you the mediator as well. Just bringing these two different groups <laughs> together. I imagine at school you were the guy who ate your lunch with the meatheads one day and then went and sat with the surfers and then went and sat with the skaters. I did, actually. I was kind of just a bit everywhere. <laughs> well, mate, thanks for pulling this group together because it's uh, such an eclectic group of individuals, but oh. also a, a great group of, of talent, as we see. Eric Gosselman oh, learning to make it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, he had it. I love it when guys corkscrew out oh, of the air. He's and... mad. Look, he's mad. Oh, he broke his board. He no. knows it straight away. He went through it. He went that steep on that angle. He went through his board. There, there's a lot of talk about guys getting full rotation, getting that tail down first, finding a transition. But coming nose down is kind of wild as well. <laughs> and we're seeing... Coming into the, the transition with your nose pointing down the, the face. But he has busted his stick here by the looks of things. <laughs> Didn't have as much like speed down the line to kind of carry that that folding of the board. But um, I think he just kind of came down so steep and flat. He just, yeah, he was going always always going to go through that. And he was kind of hugging his board, always momentum too. Oh, yes. Ollie looked good, buddy. Ollie, he's had barley belly last night, but he's um, still down in. He was trying all these things out oh. this morning. So I'm going to go shake hands with him. I need to shed some of those kilos that I'm packing <laughs> on over here in Bali. But have a look at that. There's the buckle. Yeah, he just right in front of his front foot, just folded. There's so much pressure on the nose from where he came down. They just folded right. He would have felt that thing fold in front of his front foot. There, there's certain airs attempts that you see, Vaughn, where the, the guy's in complete control and, and technically everything's in place and you just, you know that they're thinking, oh, well, I've got this. And, yeah. and on that occasion, he was just probably millimetres away from, from being, having his board in the perfect spot to stomp that thing. Yeah, that's a, such a good point. You see guys out there who know exactly what they want to do and you see other guys throwing the big Hail Mary and just hoping for the best. Um, it's funny, they're completely different approaches and both of them have the potential to get massive, massive scores. Yeah. But it does seem like, you know, guys who know what they want to do and really throw it in there, like there's, you could, he's projecting into that flip well before he does his bottom turn. He knew oh. what was coming. All the boys at the back are actually kind of bummed he didn't make it. That's the kind of spirit and vibe that's going on. There's such a cool little vibe in the Rebel Airborne zone with the boys playing hoops and all that kind of stuff as well. And the other day after round one, there was a bunch of beers getting sh shared in a good little area and like such a rad vibe. Just saying that I didn't feel in the last five years of my tour days. So I'm really excited <laughs> to see this kind of vibe come yeah. to this area. Until Tasha's uh, retirement party, right? Oh, yeah. mate. That was a good one. <laughs> still Mason still finding a left against the grain. Here we go. Throws oh, it back oh, indie. Love it. Yeah. Well, the indie because you can't do an indie front side. That's right. <laughs> but the love indie... That. Oh, wish he had just cushed out of that one because that was a, a really nice projection. Mace is one of the best at, like, launching backside and then extending at the very apex of his air. Have you seen how much distance he can he come? Almost, he almost did a little nose poke, didn't he, in that in that indie? That's that right. Was, he fully poked. There's going to be a moment and a frame grab in here that's going to be beautiful. Kept the moment, the flow as well. He didn't get stuck going, like, kind of straight, which kind of can happen on those ones. He tucked the head down. There's the angle. Oh. Look at that. Oh, what? Fully pokes it. What? That was wow. cool. I bet someone will be impressed. I bet Chipper is back at the place. Just super stoked on that one because he's really good at him. Someone got the still frame for sure, but uh, that's a pretty shallow section of the reef too. <laughs> so you want to make sure you get on top of your board when you're coming down because it's a really good ch chance that if you don't, you're going to face plant. That was so awesome. <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's a really 
violent exfoliation of the face it if, is. You, if you come down face first on that section. But uh, plenty of time on the clock here, lads, and we're seeing some great attempts thrown out. Who, who are you expecting, Josh, to... Who you're anticipating is going to give us something special in the near future? Yeah, you know, we're obviously under halfway and we've got, I think, these guys, actually all these guys in this final. I mean, Mason doesn't get nervous, so I'm not worried about him. <laughs> but all the guys, I mean, Eric is the one guy that maybe is a bit more of the momentum kind of surfer out of these guys that might feel that pressure a bit more. Everyone else is kind of like the young guys, like Eli's got nothing to lose, he's cool. And then Kalani's pretty cool and collected in these, in these moments as well. And Jack's obviously on the CT and used to needing scores at the end of the heat or whatever. He's sitting on time. He's used to trying to fight off the guys behind him as well. So Beautiful. Yeah. Looking forward to watching what unfolds here in the final 23 and a half minutes. Freestone still out in front. All jacked up down there in the Red Bull Athlete Zone is Binzi. What do you got for us, mate? Yeah, I've got the most technical aerial surfer in the field. Chipper Wilson himself, mate. Didn't quite make the final, but he had a blast out there. Had a ball for sure, yeah. Had a ball. It's just hard, yeah. Couldn't get too many ways, but everyone out there was having a hell of a time. So. Hey, how good is three foot Karamas? It's dreamy as can be. All the world championship tour competitors are here, and you little punk bags have got the, the lineup to yourself. I know, I couldn't believe they gave it to us. We rocked up, it looked really fun, and I was for sure like the dudes are going out there, the CT dudes are going to go out. All of a sudden, it's 7 o'clock and we're out there. <laughs> 6.30 a.m. is a bit rough though. Well, Hang on, this looks like Eric again took us through it. Yeah, it's Eric. It's just about, oh my god, he just did a, I don't even know what you call that, big alley oop lean or something like that. It's pretty mental. And this is Stoney on the way behind. Big alley oop floats it up, can't quite ride out of it. Well, body surfs out of it, but that's yeah, incomplete. Doing a, doing a crazy shit. That's an alley oop stalefish, which is so hard. And they're just doing it on a reg now. And um, was there anything you came into this event wanting to stick or were you just playing it section by section and sort of surfing reflexively? Yeah, well, I only I was just out there trying to get a wave and every wave I got was super fat. It reminded me of Cavarita Beach. <laughs> so all I could do was like back shots, you know, try and make something out of nothing. Just. Just. <laughs> kind of. All right, you got a t tip of the final? Uh, kind of. I mean, Kalani's gnarly. Eric's going pretty buck wild. It's hard to say, Stoney's not. Who else is out there? Crane, Eli. Dude, I want Crane just to do another back stale and take this thing out. He's, yeah. That was a by far my favorite day of the whole event. They're hard to do, man. And what's, this is a bit of a family reunion. You guys travel together a lot, um, but it's always trips and, you know, planes, trains, boats, the rest. To, to all be here at Comi and really enjoying it, it's going to be pretty sick. Yeah, it's fun. The vibes are already super high now that this is over today. This afternoon could be a partial flare. <laughs> and then the, red, the party tomorrow night could be pretty big too. Epic. All right. Well, uh, there's a bunch of time still to go in the finals. So a tip for a winner? Uh, yeah, I can. Stony. Yeah. You had it here first. Oh, nice. Oh, I just took notes on, on just some of the phrases that Chip is using these days. Buck wild, nuts, and partial flare. That's <laughs> unbelievable. We're going to see a wholehearted flare out in the lineup. Oh, but mate. I don't think it'll be partial at all, Vaughn. I think it's going to be fully <laughs> committed the flare There's up this afternoon. It's going to be a committed flare up. The yeah. boys are actually putting them under the lights, Asavo, for a little fun session. But I don't, know how many, flare up. I don't know how many of the boys are going to be paddling out. Um, um, just yeah. clear-headed, let's say that. Yeah, no, nah, it is on <laughs> for sure. But another alley-oop here from Kalani David. And a, a tricky oh. transition to come down in, but just shows us how sure-footed he is. That with, like, the stale that um, Stoney's doing would definitely put a very good chance of a win coming, for sure. So, I don't know how if that... Oh, oh, Mace! Oh, that came onto the screen right at an exciting time. Um, but, um... Right here, we've got those pulses, like I was saying. They're just going to come in those kind of waves in between those lulls. Um, well, I guess that happens in every surf, doesn't it? But <laughs> oh, yeah. But here we go. Here though, in grain. particular. Oh, Ooh. he's just... That back end is tricky to get quick around those sections. It'd be interesting if Kalani knocks the top spot. I think it's going to be, like, maybe in between, to be honest, Jackson. Um, his other rally. We'll see how it, how it plays into effect. I'm sure they're having a good old talk about it. Gnarly transition to try and come down in, yeah. clean, but stopped it. Could go either way. I don't know, really. I don't know. <laughs> That's why I'm not a judge. That's why I put Shane up there. Re really just yeah, uh, a r random question to uh, throw at you. 
Josh, and I think it might relate to some of the competitors that we have in the field, but what is the biggest and best air you've ever seen? Oh, geez. The biggest, I'd have to say probably Noah's from North Point in his, his last edit was scary big. Head noise. <laughs> yeah, head noise. That edit is that's, amazing. That's worth checking out. Just You yeah. can search it up, Noah Dean. Yeah, head and, noise. Oop, yeah. And uh, it'll pop up for you. It is unbelievable. Is that the, the biggest you've seen? Um, Height-wise, and then what else? Um, Felipe's in Brazil last year in the heat, like... Well, no, I did some numbers on that. Maybe hang time. I think that was like and no over, transition over 20, landing. Over too. 20 feet of projection. Yeah, and no transition landing. It was just flat and just stomped. It was, that was crazy. So they're kind of the benchmark, Vaughn. You got to in the way of big, not throwing the technical card in. I, I think they're they're easily two of the best airs ever done. Noah's one so psycho that he actually just buckled his board on landing. And um, he said that if he didn't buckle his board, he might have buckled his ankles. And he's got chunky ankles, mate. <laughs> yeah. To get through those things, you, you would really need to be coming down from a pretty, pretty good height. Skin-tight pants in any pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's 18 minutes to go here. Jack Freestone still holding on to the lead, but a stacked field chasing him down. Welcome back to Red Bull Airborne. It's all about bringing two worlds together. And it is the aerialists, those free surfers who are prevailing at the moment. Only one championship to a surfer in the mix, but he is playing the smart oh, game. Mate. He's gone to the high percentage play, stopped yeah. the air yeah, reverse, well. and Jack Freestone's out in front. Time to uh, turn it around, lads. Hey, yeah. Freestone's got a foot in both camps. I think, I think he considers himself as much a free surfer as he does a CT guy, and so like, I remember talking to him about the airborne and stuff, and he was—he wanted to be like supportive of it. He wanted to support the free surfing thing, but then he's also the CT guy. Uh oh, here he goes. But I know that the free surfers don't want to see another CT guy win this thing, Kersey. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're competitive, mate. I'm telling you, they want to start claiming these things as their own. And as much as uh, Stony is one of their boys, they'll be going. Bit You're of still on the CT, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, mate. 100%. They'll he be doing did the play the percentage because we've seen probably three or four unmade airs that would have taken that top spot easily that were just within inches of mates. Yeah. I, 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 we touched on it at the start. I mean, we do, we're we kind of hoping not to see an air reverse win this thing. It was a nice one, and he did poke it, so we'll give him that. Here's a, a little replay of Mason launching it up. Oh, there's that this, judo from earlier. How cool is that? Like Mason's... Two oh. airs, if made. Oh, two, oh, two of the best airs. Yeah, we've seen the whole event. Look at this oh, thing. Oh, <laughs> that's the one. Pokey. Oh, oh my oh, goodness. Oh, like, that is just awesome. Look at this one, too. A bit more of the high percentage. We're talking about just throwing it off a big, gnarly section. Wow. We didn't really get to see that one properly before. Ah, that's, that's three taking the lead airs. And yep. the only other air that's really come close to challenging those is probably Eric Osmond's flip. And Eli's flip, too. And Eli's flip, too, that he didn't quite make. Yep. But, so a lot of near misses, but getting the, uh, the feel of why he near misses, is it like skating, Kersey? Because, like, you know, every single ramp is different. Do you get the option of sort of, like, doing a couple of attempts and feeling out what you were doing wrong, or or is it just every air is on, on so its own much, merits? Not so much, unfortunately, with, like, surfing. Kramas of all places you can maybe almost get a little bit of feel like that. Um, but obviously on a day like this where it's a little bit slower, the guys are waiting for those pulses. I mean you're going to only get those probably in this final, even though it's an hour, maybe two real chances. Well Mason's had three. But uh, you got a bit creative thinking with that back, the left one that he got with that Indy. That was rad. I, th I think three of my favourite airs have been actually uh, on the backhand. We had the melon from Ian Crane early on and then the, the indie attempt there from Mason Ho, but also the backside stalefish reverse. As we see, Jack Freestone there. How good is it? Just throw, He's just throwing in stales on everything. He's loving it. Yeah. And he's obviously just got that, that feeling in the momentum now of his body. Just He's used to yeah. going for that grab. He's feeling pretty confident with it. Yeah, I hope to see him um, bring it um, next couple of days as well. 
Yeah, he might have to in his next heat. He's up against Italo. It's going to be an epic show down here. Yeah. But oh, here we go. Oh, have a look at that this. Crazy spin, like the little backside grab. Oop. Oh, that was beautiful. Just came. Oh, he held the grab just too long. That's the trick with that move. You've got to let go of the grab up a bit higher to really like level yourself out. Otherwise, you come on way too steep of an angle when you hold the grab for too long. Yourself, Taj Barrow, John John. Julian. Three guys and Julian. Oh, Julian's Three. executed an absolute mind blower here, a mind melter yep. at Karamas. Yeah, that's the... That, yeah, exactly. We, us four really like that move. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you do. And, and just uh, on TV, I mean, how much did he change the air game? Because he was just attacking it and whipping and throwing fins, and it almost felt like airs weren't even part of it. He was just such a hyperactive little unit on a yeah. wave that he just... Air, airs just were just so in the flow of his natural surf game. Was yeah. that a big influence for you too, Chris? Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding me? That sabotage VHS tape, like, it was just blurring out. I rewound it <laughs> so yeah. many times and tried to frame by frame slow it down and stuff. So that thing was just burnt. And then montage again, same thing. And, yeah, he was definitely a huge inspiration. Different people different people played different roles, didn't they? Christian Fletcher, we mentioned him. He, he sort of was the catalyst for the aerial surfer movement. Uh, then there was a, a lot of guys that brought different moves to the, the party. But Taj Burrow, the thing he probably brought was strike rate. And uh, he just stuck so many of, of those air reverse rotations in particular that it, it started sort of becoming something that kids would work on, just sticking those airs really frequently. And now the strike rate is just unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely. You've seen 12-year-olds with good strike rates that are good air reverse. So it's amazing. And Taj is pretty much is still so relevant the way he did that whip. He brought that whip into the Aeroverse with that agileness that wasn't really seen before. Yeah, tail high, uh, that's kind that of what kick, he became, right? yeah, became famous for. But uh, also just his stance was like, he, he kind of blended both wor worlds, that old school approach, because his back knee dropped, it kind of hid the fact that his legs were so far apart. Mm, and totally. uh, it was just a really clean aerial uh, approach. Yeah. And it's, it's funny, too, because uh, TV was like the first guy waxing up the nose of his board on mm -hmm. the CT. I think uh, he tells a pretty funny story about Richie Lovett and Jake Patterson just sort of laughing at him as he's waxing up the nose of his board. Now everyone does. Yeah. Yep. It's so funny. And, and Snake Leaf's ended up being influenced by Taz as well. I remember him throwing down a few airs and wanting to get a, an air game going <laughs> on after a while. Richie Lovett used to wax his tail pad and there was no wax in front of it. <laughs> he just sat both feet on the tail pad. That was kind of the style at the time. But That's if you had funny. a wide stance, you actually would wax not as far up your board so it kind of forced you to bring your, your stance together yeah that was funny what you said about like Taj's style in there you wouldn't notice how it was only when you saw a photo you're like oh wow like he's like got that spread apart but you just you just disguise it so well that with that back knee down and just creates such a nice aesthetic style in the air too it's like a that karate it the, kick it was the birth of the modern style wasn't it and yes. now it sort of seems that people are kind of sort of loosened up about that you know like when we were kids Vaughn if you had a wide stance and it was kind of boxy you were uh, a poo man here we oh. go Mason Cutty. as we see oh. Mason oh goodness it's <laughs> still enjoyable enjoyable to watch no air but yeah now uh, a boxy stance conducive to aerial surfing like it's a low Gabriel it's sort of celebrated it you know why it's there yeah they're looking for balance they're looking to land fakey and have complete control when in the past guys were considered out of control yeah. and they were heading backwards what a bummer we've got this tide going out and obviously the opportunities are definitely getting a bit slower but you know they've had enough a final i think an hour final so i feel like everyone's almost had a chance if they had to put it down you know the one or two chances they did have were pretty amazing so yeah, we'll see what happens in the last 10 minutes now, I guess. What about the uh, the trough pig back at it, though, Vorno? Jack oh, Freestone's no. had a lot of waves, and he's just got his... <laughs> uh, truffle, truffle pig was my word, Ron. <laughs> 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 truffle pig. Yeah, but, uh, he's just out there sniffing around for the every single thing, gobbling, it, gobbling up every opportunity, not, not letting anyone have a sniff. Uh, he, he's done everything right, Freestone, and I, I feel like... Here we go. He's... Uh oh, oh look this out. is bowling too. Eli Hanneman out oh. onto the flats, and uh, 
Even though he wasn't that high above the lip, there probably would have been a lot of credit there getting out in front of that wave, trying to stomp that thing. Come on, Craney. What's he got here? Yeah. Speed off the bottom. You know he's going to make it. Solid make it. Hanging on. Hanging on. Oh, riding. 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 Bull ride. <laughs> Through the whitewater. Couldn't bring it down. Oh. And he is frustrated with that one. Who we got here? Kalani wants to do something. Oh, he's just getting that. He can't get away from that. Oof. It's I just know. Like... <laughs> ah, a little bow. I think the uh, boys giving him a uh, big shout out. Yeah, to... on the beach com. Do you find that sometimes, Josh? You're out there. You've got a, a, a certain kind of airy mind. You're searching down the line, and you look at the wave and went, "Wow, well, the the, the move I've got in mind, yes, is, is unavailable at the moment. So uh, I'll go to something else." Exactly, and that happens, especially when you get stuck thinking about grabs and things like that. And sometimes you get stuck doing the. You start doing like a slob grab and then you just can't not do the slob grab. Like you can't go back to the front side or the stale, it's funny. All right, well just under eight minutes to go here. Freestone still hanging on to that lead. Do you think that uh, Ian Crane would have got a, a lot of credit for that, uh, that stale fish? Backside reverse, but he just couldn't ride out. Uh, he was fighting that Bronco, wasn't he? Through oh, the foam. He's he like, was, give it to me. He was pretty tail, like tweaked on that one too. The, the grab was just, 100 percent there it was wasn't such a, a solid <laughs> like no 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 tap he had that thing and uh he had it all the way till the whitewash just sort of wrestled him out of it uh oh here we go freestone Light already up. leading this one and loading up has a good section and he launches Went. into a very tidy air to reverse yep Solid stuff there. Let's check in with Chris Binns down in the Red Bull Athlete Zone. Thanks, Ronnie. Down here in the Red Bull Athlete Zone with Kogo Ho, whose uh, favourite surfer is in the final right now, Mason. He is. <laughs> Have you talked to him? Is he psyched to be out there? Of course he is. Yeah, he is. I think he was one of the last ones out. Um, they're all a little um, unprepared, Michelle. <laughs> and <laughs> but yeah, brother. <laughs> no, but uh, they're all a bit scattered and funny, but that's why we love them. <laughs> <laughs> We're under fire here. Uh, <laughs> No. <laughs> All right, tell us a little bit about more about Mason. You just said he's your favourite surfer. He's the first surfer you ever saw. What what kind of a role has he played in your own development as a surfer? Yeah, he was definitely the first surfer I knew because I didn't know my dad was a pro surfer when I was young. And uh, so Mason is my everything, and still to this day, um, he just encourages me, inspires me, and uh, he's very special. It's got to be a lot of ups and downs. Yeah, no, but he's so positive and um, it's not an act. Sometimes I look at him when I'm bummed and I'm like, whoa, I need to be more like him. For a guy who's not on tour, he seems to be at a lot of these championship tour events. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's special and it's happening a lot more now with um, Rip Curl and the Wild Cards and now this air show. So I'm so happy because it was a lot of years that I never had him at a comp and he never even watched me live in the heat until a few years ago. All right, well, it's getting down to crunch time, so good luck to the whole family in this one. Thanks, Vinzi. Always good to uh, chat with Coco. Her brother's out there at the moment. Hasn't had a make yet, but so close. So close with that big Indy. As we uh, see the replay of Ian Crane. Oh, my goodness. That, that was, was the one. That was so cool. <laughs> oh, we, man, come on, Ian. Just maybe hit it a hair early so I didn't wow. project him enough. Talk about getting a grab and not just at a tap. <laughs> well, he, he wanted the make so bad. If it was a free surfing session, he might have just surrendered uh, on top of that wall, but he knew he was onto something special there. Yep. It's pretty classic, isn't it? Um, when we were watching this oop before, this is uh, Kalani's third oop in a row, but the, the second oop, Second and very close it. to yeah. the... You said it'll go close, but probably not quite there, and that's exactly where it landed. Yeah. Well, Freestone found a big, meaty section to hook into out there, and he got rewarded for another big reverse. Yeah, it'll be tough. Just toughened it a little bit. He got that 5.93. It looks like he just bumped his little up. And then Kalani actually better to that one with that last one with that 5.63. They're just obviously very close in time. And, yeah, and Jack just due to the that tail high bone off that um, section was pretty sick. There's been six near misses that would have taken this thing out. Yes. Oh. Uh, and they're just getting better and better. That's the crazy <laughs> thing. But they're just, just not getting the stickiness. They need to land those ones. Oh, Ian, he'll be... What's going through your mind when, you, when you're uh, that close? 
I don't know what he's thinking right now. He's just thinking, why was that one little bounce that pushed me back? Or why didn't I hit it that split bit later to project out a little bit more, you know? And it's the cool tricky. thing about that would have been everyone it would have gone home going, best air one. Yep. Exactly. Best air of the comp. <laughs> yeah. That was probably the best air of the comp if you'd, if you'd ridden out of it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's just bringing that next level in, you know? And this is awesome. I'm stoked to just see the guys... Yeah, I get just excited just seeing these near misses as I do the makes. So, Same. Yeah, you know, it's it's not about the winner. It's about showcasing what you got. And that's what it's all about. Well, time is ticking by for these six competitors. Jack Freestone in a great position here. He podiumed over there at uh, the <laughs> France event. It's going to be tough for him to adhere to the no hassling rule I have between the boys, oh, yeah. isn't it? Here we go. This is the one that we think would have taken the lead for sure. Have a look at it. So inverted, Josh. Oh, my goodness. And he held the grab, like, almost on the way up until all the way down. That was just insane. Yeah, I think he just literally it all came down to hitting it just a hair early and just didn't get that projection. And Look right here, he gets, he like, a bounce right there that just took him away. And so close. That thing just, like, lifted him up and didn't let him, like, get in front of the foam. Even if he bulldogged that through the foam, it still would have been, for sure, the easy, clear winner. Did he get a one for that? <laughs> All right, where we got Eli wow. in the break, trying another flip and just landing off the back. Yeah, the, the wave loses a little bit of power with this outgoing tide, so getting that projection back onto the wave is a little bit trickier, so you need that one that kind of has that more meaty section so you can project, the, yeah. the one that Jack got. That's That's been the, the key, hasn't it? And Jack went to a high percentage play, yep. went for the move that he knew he could stick. It was probably the smart move. You know, it's not the move we're, we're looking <laughs> no, for. we want boned out stuff. But <laughs> yeah. a bit in fairness, Jack's front side revs have at least been really out there. He's, he's pushed them through the lip. They've, uh, the first one was really high, and it yeah. even had a little bit of a poke in it. And then the second one, you know, off a really thumping section and the full body extension into the reverse, completely stomped landing. Yeah. We want to see something a little more creative take it out, but yeah. if that's the make, then... We yep. get all sleep That's on that. That's what we get. <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> but, um, yeah, well, we've got a minute 30 to go. A couple small waves kind of coming in here. Oh. Eli hunting off the end, it looks like. Keep an eye on this kid. He has all the moves. You know, it's cool seeing him, like, try front shoves and stuff like that, which I didn't know he had in his bag of tricks, just to see him trying that kind of stuff. Giving him that kind of platform to try that kind of stuff is just so cool. Crane. Crane. All anticipating uh, something might be exceptional a here. here. Going for the little one. Only a minute remaining here. Time running out. Kalani David, Eli Hanneman, oh. Ian Crane, Eric Gosselman, Mason Ho, all chasing down Jack Freestone. Yep. We just need another hour yep. of that tide push, and it would have been great. I, I love this format, though. One big move. Uh, whether you're in sixth place or whatnot, you, you can't be comboed. You've always got a shot as long as there's a bit of time on the clock. Yeah. Give it to us. Come on. Oh, give us a letting Mason having a look at this one, it looks like. We're we'll getting motoring into this one. Loading up, trying to find a section. Has the speed. What can he do? Judo. Oh. oh. Judo front shove? <laughs> <laughs> what is he trying? I love this comp. I love it. That You will not even see that in a free surf from me. <laughs> no. Waving to uh, the fam. Yeah, that's all he's got. He's like, yeah, that was my shot. There's not many waves kind of coming in right now. Love it. <laughs> oh, I think he just got away from him, that judo. Well, this Great. is it. This is the last wave of the final. And this man has been uh, so strong, whipping the reverse off that end section. He was so close to find the mate. Looks like someone almost maybe made one after the heat too, but Jack is our winner, I guess. Wow. Look at that. High percentage play with the League toughest up. creative guys in the mix and just that not quite enough opportunity going with that outgoing tie, but Wait. that was sick. Are you joking? <laughs> the, the boys are going to be... That's going to put a fire under all these guys. There's, that's the last time they're going to want to yep. see a CT guy <laughs> take home 20 grand of that. <laughs> Just yep. sitting there. Yeah. But, I mean, Freestone, I, I think uh, if you want to legitimise the air reverse taking this out, just go back to his performance in his in his Group 1 heat. It was so sick. He was throwing yeah. staley oops. He, he added so much variety. He brought everything to the airborne, and he's a really worthy winner. His highlight package of this event it's gonna is be one of the best of the whole event. So for him to win it, doesn't matter how he won it, he's still like one of the best out there. Exactly, and he's already performed 
at the other venues on the Rebel Airborne Series. He was on the podium. Second to Yago over in, in France. He got third. third. So Griffin got second, yes. That's right, yeah. So he has been a, a performer when it comes to this event. No surprise. I, I mean, the, the signs were there. You go back through not just his highlight reel in this event, you go back through his highlight reel here at Karamas and what he's done with the jersey on here in the past. Tell you what, I wouldn't want to be a CT guy going up against him knowing the, the deep amount of bag of tricks that he has. It's exactly. insane. Well, that's <laughs> it. And he is, he's just gotten that strike rate up. And, you know, Jack, oh, I think he's been a little more reluctant to go to his airs as a championship tour competitor. He has stomped a few big airs, but that's going to give him the confidence against Italo to launch. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. His strike rate in that this whole event has been probably one of the best, I guess. Yeah, he's put down the most airs maybe of the whole event in like one person's category. He's caught the most waves. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, That's it was a sure. wave-catching contest. He took that yeah. out as well. But uh, Jack Freestone <laughs> is the champ here at Rebel Airborne. We're going to talk to him shortly and wrap things up here with the post show. Stay with us. Welcome back to Red Bull Airborne. Ronnie Blakey with his big bro Vaughn and joined by another one of the brothers, Kaipo Guerra. Great to see you, Kaipo. What a fun event, mate. And uh, I love just hearing your insights with uh, that skate terminology and just getting some more background there. It was like a, a history lesson. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me, Ron. I absolutely love these events. I love the emotion. I love the tempo. I love the fun. I love the performance. There's everything about Red Bull. <laughs> That I love. What well, don't you love? Get, get jacked up because we're going to run through some highlights in, in just a moment. But right now, we're going to hear from the winner, Jack Freestone with Chris Bins. Here we are, all right. And I'm, I'm, on the, I'm on the downslope, so this is no good at all. But Jack Freestone, you just won Red Bull Airborne in Bali. Thank you. I'm so stoked. Uh, that was awesome. Share the final with those guys. It was sick. You've got an incredible history here at um, Karamas. You've yep. won two World Junior titles here as well. Yep. What is it about this wave that's so magic and, and why does it work so well for you? Uh, because I'm a natural footer. <laughs> that's about it. No, nah, there's more to that. It, 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 i got a good, really good relationship with it. I, I love it. It suits me perfectly. And you're in incredible spirits. You've got the family here. You've got your entourage with you. You're looking really good. What do you do now? Do you take this confidence and just smash out the rest of the event? Yes, that's exactly what I plan on doing. Let's get you up to the podium and uh, give you a big trophy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, Jack Freestone, on ya. On ya, Binzi. Yeah, we'll get down to the presentation in just a moment. But uh, a massive okay. result for Jack. And we'll see if he can do what uh, Italo did on the Gold Coast Bourne. Take out the Rebel Airborne yeah. event and potentially take out the event all in the same week. That good content for the vlog as well. <laughs> but uh, look, he's getting cheered up the beach. I think uh, it's fair to say best overall performer uh, through all the group stages and in the final. Uh, Jack was a real standout. He didn't have the, the high scores on the leaderboard, but every time he surfed, he was just bringing something new. And in the end, it was uh, uh, an air rev that won it. You know, a pretty standard air, a pretty high percentage move, as you said, dog. And we did see airs in that final that easily could have smashed that score. But on this occasion, it's not a bad thing that the best overall performer from the airborne did take it out. Not at all. Uh, Jack, I think Jack found the best section out there, Kipes, and the, the competitive mindset came into play, didn't it? But it, there was uh, some great attempts. Great attempts. Those guys were swinging for the fence, the, the Red Bull airborne invitees but the ct surfer jack freestone proven that to win the game you got to play the game sometimes and he played the game out here that was the best that was my favorite era of the final oh. just about. <laughs> jack got the win but mason always the most entertaining but kalani david just kept finding ways that didn't have uh quite the ramp he was looking for so that called for the alley oops he stopped three great ones yeah i think looking back at this like that straight away Slob judo, incredible. You don't see many of those. Uh, Eli Hanneman, this was his best wave of the final. A just full-blown stomper on the inside, but just a smaller wave and not too much height, really. Yeah, for sure. And this is Jack just... He, he had a number of lofty frontside air reverses. Really solid with the, the landings, isn't he, Kipes? Uh, just showing the sure-footedness. I had, you know, my emotional pick is this guy right here, Kalani David. I'm glad to see him in the final. And uh, he's been through quite a journey. So this young man has come up. He's overcome a lot of things. Just a phoenix rising from the fire in Kalani David. So good for that success. So glad you brought that up. Yeah, we're all really worried about him for a while, but overcoming major health issues and getting back 
into a final on the Red Bull yeah. Airborne series, but Jack Freestone, undeniable. Yeah, big turns, massive, massive turns. And like, when you look back over this final, there were near misses. There were so oh. many chances. Ian Crane did a crazy backside stale that just was inches away from making it. It could have been the one to take him there, but you know what? Near misses just aren't good enough. Yeah, we want give, to see him stop. <laughs> you've got to give those honourable mentions too, Mason. You, you had to. the Indy uh, go on the wreck, oh. Ramos left, and that was cool. That was a proper Indy. That was a proper, just owe to Chris Miller, uh, Indy nose bone. And uh, Mason Ho, I mean, that's a really hard air. It's really because you have to pop into it. And it's really ha hard to get that indie grab on the back end. So um, good oh, job. Unbelievable. Just the variation of aerials that we saw today. I think I counted about 14 mm. different successful variations. And then we had a number of near misses. And, you know, we were kind of getting up towards 20 different aerial variations. So that kind of tells you that Red Bull Airborne, it's, it's playing its role. And we even had Julian Wilson in here, Vaughan, just saying that, you know, hopefully it opens the eyes to, to some of the aerialists on tour. For sure. And in my view, uh, this is not... It's it's the premier aerial event. There, there's nothing like it. Uh, we needed it back. We needed to bring these two worlds together. And we also did it in the spirit of actually showcasing that the guys who are free surfing and leading the way are just as capable as inspiring the best surfers in the world on tour. And we saw that. But the CT guys, they just keep on nudging out these wins. That's and it's three gonna, from three. Three for three. It's going to be I want to see Medina skin. here. I want to see the guy who's on the first backflipping competition. I want to see Medina here. I want to see what he can bring. I think an open format like this could bring a lot of progression uh, from a, a Gabe Medina, a John John Florence, if they choose to come and, and do this comp. It would be good to see. Let's uh, go back in time. A couple of days ago, we had the first qualifying round. And it, looking back at that round, I think that's where we saw a couple of the really big airs and a couple of the finalists collected their best numbers in that qualifying round. Uh, Eli Hanneman, just dynamite in that first qualifying round, wasn't he? He was amazing. Uh, I think, you know, uh, having been here and watched his, his free surfs earlier before the events even started, it was just clear right from the word go that he was going to be threatening the top of the leaderboard, that he was probably going to be in the final. And he had a, a couple of flip near misses that could have also given him the win in the final. So, yeah, I mean, on, on day one, though, he was the name everyone was talking about at the end of the day because those limited little opportunities, there was a, a lot of wind that day and the ramps were really close to the pocket of the wave. You weren't sort of getting down the line and using all that extra speed, you had to be right in the pocket to launch, and Eli was doing it better than anyone. I call him the prodigy. Oh yeah, good yeah. name. And let's roll that tape and have a look at the highlights from the first qualifying round. Unbelievable <laughs> airs laid down here. It's uh, just after 10 a.m. local time, and the party's already getting started to kick things off down there at the Commune Pool Bar. It's Chris Pins. Yeah, thanks, Ronnie. Insane couple of days of surfing here at Karamas. And uh, without any further ado, let's cut straight into the uh, placings. Third from Maui, Hawaii, the young gun, Eli Hanneman. Straight up there. 
down to your right, mate. Yee All right, second place from the north shore of Oahu, Hawaii, none other than Kalani David. Goes over your head. And bang that drum to announce the winner of the 2019 Red Bull Airborne Series for Karamas Bali, Jack Freestone. <laughs> it's a gong show up here, Karamas. Oh, whoa. Oh, I can. That's the goal. My hands don't fit. I have to hold it like that. Okay. Oh, All right, loud and proud, Jackie boy. Thank you. Is this the coolest trophy you've ever won? Hands down, yeah, this is pretty cool. Gotta learn how to play it first. <laughs> Mate, uh, what do you do from here? Just a bunch of confidence in the main event? Yeah, straight back into it tomorrow. And you guys are flying the flag. Three Red Bull Airborne Series events, three Championship Tour winners. Well, hopefully I can keep that going. Right, we'll see you in France, mate. Congrats on the win in Bali. Thank you. Jack Freestone, everyone. Back up to you guys in the box. Thank you, Benzi. What a podium. I mean, uh, Eli getting the uh, the mandolin. That's the after party band right there. Yeah. Kalani David, pretty good on the uh, the bongos. You mentioned that he uh, can play the drums, but uh, Freestone, you know, he's good in the air. Needs some work on the gong. <laughs> It was cool to watch that highlights package though, wasn't it? It just reminded you of, of what Jack was bringing to this event. Uh, that one little stale oop was such a cool move. I mean, you don't see a lot of that in the CT, and that's what we want to see him bring when he's up against Italo. Oh, for sure. It's just so interesting to see how these finals are playing out in the Rebel Airborne Series Kipes. Uh, you mentioned it before, three championship tour winners getting the jump. When we looked at the field here, the 18 surfers that were in this field and also had the withdrawal of Italo and Felipe. We thought, wow, the aerialists have got a fantastic chance at this contest, but it wasn't the case. It wasn't the case. I think it comes down to still, it's a game. It's consistency. And, you know, Jack got the completions. We saw some near completes. If those guys did come complete with a more technical air, we would have seen a different winner, but that just wasn't the case. Well, let's dive into the, the best moves of Red Bull Airborne for uh, the Karamas edition here. Stop number two on the series this season. And there was some uh, monsters laid out. And, and definitely in the qualifying rounds, uh, these guys lit up. Mason Ho was scoreless in the first qualifying round, but had this this morning. That was monster. And I just loved how he sort of came in from underneath it. And as he went through the aerial, he got over the top of his board. Rides out Fakie, the classic little mace. You know, almost cheetah five, not quite up on the nose, but uh, a really classic Mason Highway there. Geisaben, skater, surfer, got the pop, got the grab, got oh. the rotation, let's go early. Little wheelie landing right there. Score that for Eric Geiselman. Yeah, six, nine, three for that one. Loved uh, his approach out here today. Another one of those guys that was really close to, to sticking something exceptional in the final. Talk about tech, stale, backhand rotator for Ian Crane. Yeah, Ian that Crane, was cool. he was so committed to sticking that move too, wasn't he? We saw him try a lot of them. Uh, another guy, I think he went from the bottom of the leaderboard straight to the top after this heat, because not only did he land that backside stale, he also did a Gorkin flip and a couple of other variations. The Prodigy, yeah, with some amplitude. Eli Hanneman showing us the future. This is oh, crazy. Man. He is the future. I mean, uh, not just in these events. I, I, I can see him on the championship tour, but Jack Freestone, solid, found the ramps, played the high percentage game born, and uh, also threw uh, some wild alley-oops at us too with that stale fish grab, a difficult move to execute. We were talking about power is. That's what that was. That was just a through the lip extension of almost like a, what would have been a Rio back in the day or a big old close out lip slam. But Jack just extending off the lip, tail high, stomps the landing with authority, which we love. And there you go. How's that? Airborne that little, in the can. That little grab of the fins there, Kites. The board whips around so swiftly, and Jack just in complete control, wasn't he? Yeah, I just anticipated that revert as those fins grab and are pointed towards shore. And now it's time for some bubbly. Oh, there they are, the top three. 
Yeah, like Hanneman just out of shot there, but uh, you know what? One time he's a bit young for that stuff anyway. During one of the uh, the there was a junior event and and Jack, uh, I think he won the World Juniors against uh, Dale Staples, and they were cheesing the bottles on stage, and it smashed in their hands, and <laughs> ended yeah. up with a little injury. You got to be careful. Did he go get stitches? Or he did. It? Yeah, he sliced up his finger. Kid, ducky, if you're out there, mate, love you. <laughs> but uh, mate, I've just really enjoyed this event. That some of the guests that we've been able to chat with here in the booth, but it just has a vibe to it. This contest, doesn't it? It's unreal, mate. I mean, like the the number one thing about this contest is when you're down in that area everyone is pumped like every single person wants to be here they want to win the airborne bragging rights 20 grand and for all of us at home or fans of surfing just getting to see the variety getting to see the future starting to bring itself into the wsl fold under that umbrella and then how that's going to influence i bet you anything we start to see jack bring some of this game to his CT heat. Well, he might have to do it in his next heat because he's coming up against Italo. So the two guys that have taken out the Red Bull Airborne uh, event so far this season, Kyle's meeting in the round of, uh, what is it, 16? Yeah, what, round of 32, 32. will be hitting. excuse and, me. And I can't, Getting ahead of myself. can't wait to see that matchup, like you said, anticipating hopefully an air show in the CT could happen. And uh, Kyle's. I mean, you're going to be there in France. What, are, what What's your call? What do you think we're going to see from those aerialists, those non-championship tour surfers, when we get Red Bull Airborne underway over there? I think they're going to have to bring up their consistency when they have the weight of the jersey on. It's not, vide it's not videoing a clip. It's not that you have multiple tries at it. I think they're going to have to work on consistency. And it might be hard for some of these guys because they always go for it so hard to tone it down just a little bit get those scores but i want to see some innovation at the same time i want to see it go through the roof i want to see some new stuff that we haven't seen before certainly got close to it today boys it's been a lot of fun red bull airborne has gone off here in bali stay tuned to worldsurfleague.com for the official call tomorrow we might be getting the main event back underway This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League.